survive in our environment. And he endures the praise of his people. Everyone was totally covered. Not one person was left behind when they were out on outreach. Not one needed attention that they need to wait for. Everybody was sound and strong because of his presence in their midst. My friend, Jesus, when he's present with you, through the mystery of thanksgiving, praise, and worship, which is his spiritual habitat, then you are free. His presence means a no-go area for the devil. His presence means a no-go area for sickness and disease. Now, grace to harbor his presence. The remaining days of your life, Lift up your two hands and begin to receive that grace. Grace to remain ever thankful, ever praiseful, ever jumping, ever leaping in praise, day and night. Receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it. Everybody, lift up your two hands and connect with it. 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 In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Jesus in Matthew 4, 23 went through their synagogues preaching the kingdom, the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner. When Jesus descends into a mist, the midst of a people, he heals all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. When Jesus descends to the midst of a people, he heals all manner of of sickness and all manner of disease. How do you get him there? Thanksgiving, praise and worship. He steps down. As they began to sing and to praise, God stepped in and turned their fears to testimonies. Turned their concerns to testimonies. You got the key. You got the key. As the Lord liveth, whatever is not of God that hanging around and hanging upon anyone's life under the sound of my voice, whether here on ground or online across the nations of the earth, must lose their grip of you today. <laughs> Let me hear your loudest, amen. They must lose their grip of you today. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. It's called miracle service. That means God has programmed it to turn your obstacles to miracles. To turn your barriers to wonders. To bring down your impregnable wall of Jericho standing between you and your promised land. You shall see it happen today. It shall happen in your life today. It shall happen in your life today. Today must mark a turning point in your life. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest, amen. Let me hear your loudest, amen. We received a prophetic alert this month. Very awesome. Tell them to turn their issues to thanksgiving. And now we turn them to testimonies. Turn your issues to thanksgiving and God will turn them into testimonies. Turn the issues of your life to testimonies, to thanksgiving, and God will turn them into testimonies. <laughs> you will testify. You will testify. 
If you have lost anything, God is easy why you have not lost everything. So give him thanks. Amen. And no matter what you have lost, he's able to bring it back. Any day, any time. Expect your restoration. Expect your restoration. Expect your restoration. In Jesus' precious name. Give the Lord a big hand of praise and please, you may be comfortably seated. Now, we're here in this turnaround special miracle service. And God's word is God's instrument for a turnaround. Arise and shine because your light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee and the glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles will come to your light. I mean, it will be undeniable. And they are kings to the brightness of your rising. And the entrance of his word, it gives light. And gives understanding to the simple. Psalm 119 verse 130. So turn around is triggered by the word. Every turn around testimony is triggered by the word. Every turn around testimony in every area of our life is triggered by the word. Every turn around testimony is triggered by the word. Every turn around testimony in our lives is triggered by the word. Thou shalt take this rod in thy hand, wherewith thou shalt do signs. In case you don't have the theology of it, we saw that every sign was as commanded by the word of the Lord to Moses. And the Lord said to Moses, Moses said to Pharaoh, and the Lord said to Moses. So it was the word from the Lord that triggered those mighty signs and wonders in Egypt. The word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Now, listen to this, and I want you to please listen very carefully, because from now, you'll not be looking for miracles, you'll be commanding them. You'll not be looking for miracles, you'll be commanding them. You will not be looking for miracles from henceforth, you'll be commanding them. You'll not be looking for miracles again, you'll be commanding them. You'll not be looking for miracles again, you'll be commanding them. Five loaves and two fishes. Father, I thank you. There was a sporadic multiplication. Geometric multiplication. And 5,000 men, men of women and children, call it average 10,000 people, were fed and were overfilled and they gather remnant from the feast. By the mystery of thanksgiving, commanding the supernatural by the mystery of thanksgiving, himself knew what he would do and we saw the only thing he did was, Father, I thank you because you have heard me. And the bread and the fish multiplied supernaturally. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will not suffer the plague of insufficiency again. You will not suffer the plague of inadequacy again. My God. And then we saw Abraham waited and waited and then switched over to glorifying God. Was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And then Isaac came. Promise fulfilled. Prophecy fulfilled. Promise delivered. Prophecy fulfilled promise delivered as he began to give glory to God glory to God God stepped in and matter concluded now my God 
There is nothing God has ever said to you from his word that is not real. All we have lacked is the understanding of how to take delivery of it. They are real. They are more real than the day. They are as real as Jehovah God is real. But we lack the understanding of turning them into realities. We lack the understanding of turning them into realities. He was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Somebody lost his job for 14 years unjustly. He plugged into the testimony of the one who got his job back after 21 years. His family people said, Take, look away from that. That matter is closed. He said, no, I refuse to. God, I thank you for opening doors to me, but I want this job back because I was dismissed unjustly. 14 years after, they gave him the job back. Paid him all his due. Paid him everything. My God. Was strong in faith, giving glory to God, giving glory to God, giving glory to God. Every prophetic word will deliver like a dream of the night. When you plug into that frequency of unreserved thanksgiving, delightsome thanksgiving, and you do it always. Now we saw the worst medical situation in history. Lazarus. It's not that he had kidney problem. He had kidney. He had heart. He had lungs. He has blood. He has water. Now he has breath. So, <laughs> everything was shut down. Father, I thank you. Summed everything back. Come on now. Somebody hearing what I'm talking about? No matter what part of your body may have been damaged. Every part of Lazarus's body was gone. My God, there was no more trace of blood flowing inside him. He was already decomposing. He was already stinking, my God. My God, Father, I thank you. And God stepped in. Whenever God steps in, things turn around. Things turn around. So today, today, I want you to say to Jesus, I thank you for keeping my heart beating. I thank you for keeping my lungs working. I thank you for keeping my liver functioning. I thank you for blood flowing in my veins. I thank you for free supply of oxygen. I thank you, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. As you are doing that genuinely, it will be adding what is missing. Amen. Get it. Kidney, perfect. Liver, perfect. Heart, perfect. Blood, perfect. My God. Oba mi magba so ya lara mi u aso ya. Me le fa so ya bo ramo. Oga ogo gba so e se lara mi aso ya so. Me le fa so e so bo ramo. Aso ya so. Wake up, my friend. Thanksgiving will turn any, any stinking situation around for a testimony. The good news today is that whatever part of your body is not working, because your heart is still working. Yes, Amen. That's your most sensitive part. The most sensitive part of your life is your heart. Yes. The one that keeps it working when you appreciate him, he will cause the others to start working. Yes. So every other part of your body that is not working, I command them right now at the instance of high praises to start working. Somebody believe that? Let me hear your loudness. Amen. Yeah. So when somebody said nothing is working, he's blind. Ask him, is your heart working? Oh, that's not what you are saying. So what are you saying? If your heart stops working, you won't even know what is not working anymore. That's the end of it. You won't even know what is not working anymore. That is the center of your life. Somebody kept it working. He said you slept and you awoke because he sustained you. Now, when we do monthly Thanksgiving, listen to me. Everybody is born in one month or another. There's nobody born in two months. So when we say you have something to thank God for everybody whose birthday is on that day, if he has 
spiritual sense to know that somebody kept him alive for another one year. So he should roll out with his brother and dance. And then they say, what is happening, sir? You should know. You should know what is happening. You, you don't need parties, sir. Just give God time. He doesn't reward parties. You're wasting your time. Now, give him what he's looking for. Praise is comely unto God, not party. There's nothing wrong with party, oh, because I've eaten my own birthday party several times. There, there's nothing wrong with it, but it doesn't add up. There is no spiritual value in it. The value is in your thanksgiving. Amen. Can I hear your amen? amen. Um, many people, when it's their bad day month, can you imagine? See where I am. Last year, the same thing. Papa said, give thanks. Okay, I gave thanks last year. Nothing has changed. Is that attitude that you carry that won't let anything change? Nothing changes by just singing and dancing. It must be from your heart. That, Lord, I thank you for coming for another one year. Me? What did I do to merit it? I went on several journeys on the road, some of us on water, some of us in the air, and you went, came back, went, came back, children went to school, came back, everything. One whole year, Christ is free. It's enough to dance. You won't miss it anymore. If you don't thank God for what he has done, you have stopped him from doing the others. But when you thank him for what he has done, you have committed him to do the others. That may not be functioning. So thank him for your heart that is beating. Can I hear your amen? amen. Is your own heart still beating? Yes, it was. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Are you gasping? You are just breathing normally, taking free oxygen. No, you are not paying. You slept and you are snoring, yet you woke up. <laughs> My God, that is how to provoke a turnaround. Can I tell you this? Thanksgivers never get stranded. Somebody's jumping out of sickness now. Amen. Can't you thank God that you're conscious? Yes. There are some people who have not been conscious for one year, yes. some two years, yes. some three years. Yes. Can't you thank God that you are still conscious? Yes. Every time you thank him for what he has done, you remind him of what remains. 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 In the name of Jesus, by the instrumentality of thanksgiving and praise today, your long-awaited miracle will drop on your laps. Somebody believe that? Let me hear your loudest amen. 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 Thank God for being qualified to look for a job. Then you get one. Thank God for establishing a company for you. Yet, you are not getting contracts yet. But when you thank God for giving you the privilege of founding a company and the, the inspiration behind it, you have committed them to open the doors. Thank him for what it is now. Then he will take you to what he has in stock. If you don't thank him for where you are, you won't change level for life. Please understand this. Understand this. You owe God thanks as a lifestyle. In order not to be stranded again, you owe God thanks for a lifestyle. You can't see where. Thank God you can hear where. Thank God for hearing where, then you'll see where. Praise God. You can't hear, but thank God that you can see. And then you begin to hear. Every time you thank God for one thing, you remind him of the next. You thank him genuinely for one thing, you remind him of the next. Now, let me warn you. These people draw near me with their mouth, and with their tongue do they honor me, but their heart is removed far from me. God only accepts thanksgiving from the heart. Isaiah 29 and verse 13. God only accepts thanksgiving that is emanating from the heart. So I want your heart to be pumping 
in appreciation to God for where grace has put you. What put you where you are now? What put you where you are now? What put you where you are now? Are all the young people you knew when you were growing up, are they all alive? How did you get here? The folks you went to school with, maybe you were classmates, are all of them still on the air today? Look, I'm not married yet. Now, if you are in the asylum, is it marriage you are thinking about? When they tie the hands and the feet, we change. Thank God for where grace has brought you, then we take you to the next place. Thank God for what grace has made of you today, then you are ready for the next place. If you don't thank God for where you are, you are not accounted for the next place. But you are getting there. Amen. May you have a shop, but you are not selling. Thank God for giving you a shop. Who are you to have a shop in the first instance? Thank God. Lord, you gave me this shop. Ah, and you feed it with goods. Ah, I thank you, Jesus. Then, customer will start rushing in. They will start rushing in in response to your thanksgiving as acceptable to God. You give him thanks. Every time you return from business and you are grumbling, you are going backward. You are going backward. Every time you return from your office and you are grumbling, you are going backward. You won't go backward anymore. You won't go backward anymore. For anybody with any head challenge today, if you will, like that one leper, who was only cleansed, but his hands were still like this. He went with those clipped hands. Oh Lord, I am very, very grateful for all you have done for me. There was still contours on his face. Oh Lord, I glorify you. He said, You are made whole. Then the hands came out, the cheeks came back. Give him thanks for where you are now. He will take you to the next place. Amen. God is waiting for you for your change of level. Amen. Listen to this before we celebrate God in praise and we call it miracle praise. What do I call it? This great God will show up to you in person. Amen. God runs a little by little agenda for his people. Come say little by little. little by Exodus 23 and verse 30. We saw God's agenda here. He said, by little and little I will drive out those nations before thee until thou be increased and inherit the land. Little by little. So the first little you say, thank you, he will add another little to it. Another little thank you, he add another little to it until you get the fullness of his agenda. Can I hear your amen? amen. So you're not saying thank you as kept you at the same spot. So thank him. You had migraine, it has reduced to headache, thank him. You are running from two notices, you are running only from one now, thank him. Your eyesight was blood, the two eyes. Now, one is saying clearly, the other one is still blood. Thank him. Little by little. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 22. He said, by little and little. Little by, and the Lord will put out those nations before thee by little and little. What moves you from one little to another? Thanksgiving. 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 Jesus could have made them whole at a time. But no, he cleansed them first before he will make them whole. He cleansed them first before he will make them whole. He cleansed them first before he will make them whole. He cleansed them first. He cleansed them first. So we have three stages here. The Bible calls it the good, the acceptable, and the perfect will of God. And the link is thanksgiving. You move from good to acceptable. I mean to plausible, to valuables. He adds value to the good, it becomes acceptable. He adds more and more value to the acceptable, it becomes perfect. So, thanksgiving is what moves you from one level of God's 
agenda to another. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. Romans 12 and verse 2. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, the word says, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So his will is in faces. The good, the acceptable, the perfect. And to move from the good to the acceptable, it is thanksgiving. We saw the man, the one leper, he came and then he moved him from being cleansed to being made whole. Can I hear your amen? To be made whole. Now, every good gift and every perfect gift, so it comes first as good. It will never be perfect until you give thanks. If you don't thank God for the good, you never see the acceptable. You don't thank God for the acceptable, you never see the perfect. That's the way it happens on every count. Whether in business, in ministry, men, in family, in your health, in your spiritual life, it comes through little by little, little by little. And the facilitator of that movement is thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is the, facilitator, is the covenant facilitator of moving from one level of God's will to another. Thanksgiving, intense thanksgiving, heart-born thanksgiving. Thanksgiving has become an addiction. You move without struggle. Can I hear your amen? amen? Now watch. Whosoever we thank God for his breath today, whatever organ in your body is not working, we jump up. Lord, I thank you for my breath. Amen. I thank you. Now, God forbid that you try oxygen. Mechanical oxygen for one week, for two weeks, for three weeks. You will know how valuable it is. When they give you the bill, you wonder why you have to pay so much. You can't take it by yourself. God has been too faithful. We'll give him thanks. We'll give him thanks. We'll give him thanks. We'll give him thanks. Amen. Every turnaround testimony answers to thanksgiving. 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 As they shouted his praise, the wall of Jericho sank. My God, they went straight before them. Children, adults, no climate. He swallowed up the wall of Jericho. They approached the Red Sea. With God in the midst of them, by their art of praise, the sea saw them it fled. Every turn around, every unthinkable testimony answers to thanksgiving. Somebody's story has just changed. Yeah. Can I hear your loudest amen? Yeah. Your story has just changed. Yeah. Your story has just changed. Yeah. Whatever it says to you, do. And then whatever is finished, we'll be back in its colorful form. They say, we had no wine. Oh, I had pains. Give me thanks. And I'll give you a painless life. Not just to be relieved for now, but for life. God is going to surprise you. Let me hear your loudest, amen. God is going to surprise you. 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 Now let's look at this illustration. Matthew 21 and verse 10 to 16. We call it the triumphant entry of Christ to Jerusalem. And when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. And Jesus went to the temple of God and cast out all that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves and said unto them it is written my house shall be called the house of prayer but you have made it a den of thieves and the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them 
what was the matter. When the chief priest and scribe saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying in the temple and saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were so displeased. They provoked his intervention through high praises. We read the story from the beginning. They were casting on their garments and all that stuff. Then he invaded the temple and then chased out everything by and selling. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, the Bible paints this picture for us that we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. 1 Corinthians 3 and then verse 16 and 17. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? Amen. We are the temple of God. So a shout of Hosanna from the heart will invoke divine intervention at will and everything buying and selling in your life will be chased out without any remaining. In the name of Jesus, every planting of the devil that's tormenting anyone's life and destiny at the instance of thanksgiving and praise today, they shall be chased out of your life forever. They shall be chased out of your life forever. Amen. Who is like unto thee, O God? The word says, Who is like thee? You are glorious in holiness. You are fearful in praises, doing wonders. That's what he does in the midst of acceptable praise. He steps in to do fearful wonders. Fearful wonders. Fearful wonders. Fearful wonders. It will do that in your life today. Yeah. Know what you are doing. You are giving thanks to God for where grace has brought you. So grace can take you to where God has planned to move you into next. And you are moving in there. Yeah. Can I hear your loudest amen? Yeah. Somebody wants peace at home. Thank God first that you are married. Lord... <laughs> You want life to be better for me, that's why you brought me to marriage. I thank you for giving me the privilege of marriage. What are you doing? You are invoking this intervention on the issues around you. Turn your issues into thanksgiving, and God said it will turn them into testimonies. That's the way it works. There is no one today who thanks God genuinely for making me a candidate for a job will not get a job this week. There is not one. You see, there is not one. When a word comes from the road, you better catch it. You don't need to know nobody, sir. You don't need to know nobody. You don't need to know nobody. We have had 20 testimonies here that should instruct us. You don't need to know anybody. They just call you. They say they see your CV somewhere. You are the best fit. They have not seen you. And they give you a job. Awesome God. Someone said, my case is stronger than that. Who told you? You don't have a special problem. You have a special ignorance. There is no mountain anywhere, sir. Every man's ignorance is mountain. God can reach out to anywhere at any time on your behalf. He can give your number to anybody who never saw you. You ask them, how did you get my number? He said, I don't know. He doesn't know. An angel texts him. Call this number now. He's the one to get that job. And he calls your number and says, yes. I just want to say, yes. Yeah, you got a job here. I didn't apply, no, we got it. We bought one. He gave your number there. This God is too awesome, sir. He gave the number of a president of a nation to a, a, an ordinary pastor who has no telephone. He said, call that number and tell him this. And they called him up when I was calling their leader. And then what is that came to pass? They started looking for him. He said, yeah, you the one calling him? Yes, I did. How? God gave me the number to call and to give this warning. Say, this God is, you can't stop God. You can't stop God. No policy of man can stop God, sir. Can I tell you something? You must be free today. There is someone here that by intense thanksgiving, you receive your first proposal this year. And it will be your right proposal. 
Somebody's home will be restored after this service. Somebody's runaway child will be returned after this service. Now, I can only prophesy what God said. You are the one to believe it before it can come to pass. I can't believe for you. You have to believe by yourself. The good news is, you have the trigger in your hand. Let's turn it on. 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 Welcome to 2021. Your year of supernatural turnarounds. You are excited to see the first Sunday in the month of June 2021. Give Jesus a big clap and a big shout of praise this morning. Shall we together lift up our voices as we give thanks to God? Let's magnify his name together. Let's celebrate the faithfulness of our God. Lift up your voice everyone this morning. Let's magnify the name of our God. Let's give him all the thanks and let's give him all the praise. What a joy to witness the first Sunday in the month of june in this turnaround year this god has been faithful lift up your voice everyone this morning he deserves our thanks and he deserves our praise let's give it to him this morning from the depth of our hearts our father we give you thanks again this morning for the blessing of another sunday morning for the blessing to be gathered in your house in your tabernacle for an encounter for a lifetime you are truly grateful let god hear your voice of thanksgiving even this morning everyone on ground everyone connected across the nations of the earth ensure your thanksgiving is written out to god this morning from the depth of your heart our father we thank you we give you all the glory and all the praise for the blessing of another new month for the blessing of another sunday morning in your presence a covenant day of healing and deliverance lift up your voice you are truly grateful to god and so you are giving expression to your thanksgiving this morning from the depth of your heart uh, magnify the name of your god this morning celebrate his faithfulness again this god has done all things well uh, he's too faithful he never fails our father we thank you from the depth of our hearts this morning we are here returning all the glory and all the praise to your name uh, what a faithful god you are lift up your voice uh, begin to express your expectation before god this morning remember he has not called the seed of jacob to seek him in vain our father we are set again for an encounter of a lifetime in your presence lift up your voice give expression this morning to your expectation at the altar of god this morning at this covenant day of healing and deliverance where the healing river is flowing where the power of god is available lift up your voice give personal expression you will not return the same way you have come everyone returning changed and returning transformed lift up your hands wave those hands to jesus this morning our father we thank you we give you all the glory blessed be your holy name in jesus mighty name we have prayed let your amen be the loudest we believe you have a testimony to share this morning. Quickly rush to the honor entrance right behind where the pastors are sitting. You document your testimony. Give Jesus the biggest clap you can this morning as we receive the Faith Tabernacle Choir. That is why you are called Jehovah. That is why you are called Jehovah. What you said you will do, that is what you will do. That is why you are called
For Jesus, his water to be praised. Amen. The star of the universe, conqueror and king. The star of the universe, emperor always. You are the head over. You are the head over power. You are the head over rulers. You are the master, master of the universe. Come on, master of the universe. Come on, master of the universe. Emperor. for Jesus and please you may be seated welcome to 2021 
your year of supernatural turnaround. We shall be taking our call to worship this morning from the book of Psalms, chapter 124. Psalm 1 to 4. We shall be reading responsively. I take verse 1 and you take the next verse. Verse 1. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, verse 2. Then they had swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. Verse 4. Then the waters had overwhelmed us and the streams had gone over our soul. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. Verse 6. Blessed be the Lord who had not given us as a prey to their teeth. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we are escaped. Verse 8 together. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. You are welcome. Put those hands together for Jesus. Praise the Lord. Please listen to faith tabernacle announcement in this first service. Number one, good news. Word of Faith Bible Institute Wolf B June edition holds between 14th and 25th June 2021. Give the Lord praise. This is a two week intensive course and shall hold in Kenyan and at all our Wolf B training centers in Lagos and Ottawa. Note that BCC holds in all training centers, YLDC holds at Kenyan and at other selected training centers. For registration and other information, visit the website as shown on the screen. Number two, good news. Our June edition of our free day specialized certificate course comes up from Monday 28 to Wednesday 30th June 2021. It shall feature breaking marital siege. Give the Lord praise. Everyone on the line for miracle marriage and everyone desiring an each free marriage should keep this divine appointment with God. God shall be breaking every marital siege and releasing wisdom for marital bliss. Kindly note that both registration and payment for this course is online. For registration and other information, visit the website as shown on the screen. Number three, praise the Lord. Be reminded that our global call center is open for counseling needs, program schedules, appointments, inquiries on matters regarding the ongoing rural church building, etc. Contact the cell center on 0708-063-8000 between 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., Mondays to Fridays. Please note that payment details will not be collected by the call center, so beware of scammers. Number four, believers and John class, all this Monday for all new converts. Please note that you are to attend for two Mondays only. Every new convert concerned will be contacted by SMS on the location close to where they live. The time is 6 to 7.30 p.m. Number five, covenant hour prayer oath tomorrow, Monday to Saturday, both here in Kenalan and in all our covenant hour prayer locations across Lagos and Ottawa. The time is 5.30 to 6.30 a.m. Number six, praise the Lord. Our midweek communion service all this Wednesday, 9th June 2021, both here in Kenalan and at all our Zona fellowship centers in Lagos, Ottawa, and Enveron. Remember, we shall be waiting on the Lord in the fast and break with the communion. The time is 6 p.m. Number seven, Winner Satellite Fellowship. Our house to house fellowship holds this Saturday at our WSF centers across Lagos and Ottawa. The time is 5 to 6 p.m. Remember, our cell growth and replication agenda is still on. Ensure you are part of this by bringing people into your cell. If you desire to host a WSF location in your house, please indicate through your cell minister. And as you host the ark of testimony in your home, expect continuous inflow of testimonies into your life. Amen. And number eight, praise the Lord. Next Sunday at Faith Tabernacle, 13th June 2021, shall be our covenant day of restoration. Give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. It shall also double 
as our special monthly communion service it shall be a service to be much remembered therefore come expecting encounters by the word and the mystery of the communion table service schedule is as usual jesus is lord in this covenant day of healing and deliverance it is testimony time let's give jesus a baby hand of praise please listen attentively to these documented testimonies and in this service you will have yours number one heal or brain damage via prophetic declaration in 2007 I had an accident as a result I had a broken skull and the doctor was not aware of it years later I started having a severe and constant headache especially whenever I stayed in a noisy place for a long time or tried to study for hours I kept taking all manner of pain relief tablets and treating malaria but all proved abortive this kept reoccurring and after I had my first child, I was diagnosed with a seizure, partial memory loss and brain damage. The doctor told my husband I had just three months to live, but we rejected the report and kept serving God. Meanwhile, I served in the choir and as a teen class teacher, despite the warning not to engage in any activity, that will require me to shout or stress my brain then on a certain day in 2017 during the service bishop david Oedipo made declarations he declared jesus is gone forever i jumped up and shouted amen that night when i got home i threw away all drugs since i threw i threw away all drugs since then I have not experienced a scissor and severe headache. My memory has been fully restored. Celebrate Jesus the more. Now I can do the things I could not do before. I return all the glory to God. The testifier is Mrs. In the maker, believe. You can do better for Jesus. Number two healed of art invention via anointing oil <laughs> hallelujah in march 2021 i had my tooth removed and since then i've been very healed i decided to go for a checkup the results showed that i had art invention i've been on drugs and injections however on a certain sunday morning my injection was not available so i had no choice but to come to church the anointing oil was administered and lo and behold the lord touched me give jesus a big hand of praise <laughs> and i received my healing all the symptoms has disappeared i am healed and i return all the glory to god give jesus a big hand of praise the testifier is Adegoyega blessing. In this service, your own testimony will drop down for you. You are clapping for Jesus. Make it bigger and better. Amen. Please listen to this epistle from the Apostle over this commission, Bishop David Oyedebo. The subject is declaring oppression by all means. Let's give Jesus a big hand of praise. Turn around greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. As we all know, the midst of the year is, a, is prophetically ordained a revival season. As it is written, O Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known thy power. The midst of the year is therefore a season for the raw demonstration of the power of God in quickening the spirit of men to serve God and the interests of his kingdom, thereby clearing off all everlasting mountains and perpetual hills that may be standing in the way of any of his people. 
This is why we must all come awake and engage with the demands of a revival in this prophetic season so as to return with our turnaround testimonies. Remember, every child of God is chosen and ordained to bring forth fruits, that is, win souls and to have our fruits abide. We are also called to make kingdom advancement prayer the priority of our prayer life. Therefore, every one of us is admonished to renew our passion for souls by being faithful and fervent in praying kingdom advancement prayers, witnessing to the unsaved around us, following up our new converts, and offering compelling invitation to everyone around us to be in church for their salvation and breakthroughs. As it is written, to the weak became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. To this end, we shall be embarking on operation by all means, from June the 7th to July 31st, 2021. In the name of Jesus Christ, let somebody's amen turn things around. My prayer is that every week of this season shall be a most fruitful one for every winner. On the prayer altar, in pursuit after souls, and in helping the needy both among the members and our new converts. As it is written, do good to all men, especially to them who are of the household of faith. Remain ever blessed. Jesus is Lord. Let's celebrate him this morning with a big hand of praise. This morning is my privilege to welcome a number of us who are here today, worshiping for the first time here at the Faith Tabernacle on Sunday morning like this. If today is your first time on a Sunday at the Faith Tabernacle, would you please rise on your feet wherever you are. Give Jesus a big hand, everybody. As they begin to rise everywhere, our God is worthy of praise and of glory. Please remain standing. Remain standing in God's presence. Our officials are put into your hand the welcome pack along with it you'll be given a slip that you need to fill and as soon as you receive your copy of both the pack and the slip please take your seat and begin filling that slip in the course of this welcome make sure you receive your copy before you are seated and immediately begin filling that slip in the course of this welcome i want to welcome you this morning on behalf of jesus christ the head of the church and on behalf of his servant the apostle of this commission bishop david oedipo i want you to know you have come today to a mountain of god and to a city of refuge and that means every siege against your life and destiny comes to an end today in the name of jesus christ please note that every believer has an appointed place for the fulfillment of his or her glorious destiny god's word declares that you shall not offer your burnt offerings upon every mountain that you see but upon the one that the lord your god shall choose in the same vein every believer has a god appointed shepherd over his or her life God's word declares that I will give you pastors after my own heart who will feed you with knowledge and wisdom and you will increase and multiply. There is no coincidence in the adventure of a believer. Therefore, a number of us are here today because God wants to show you that this is the place that he has chosen for you. Without any doubt, this is one of God's ordained cities of refuge on the earth today where the avenger of blood cannot access us. All that is required is that you get planted here and commit in obedience to every word that proceeds from this altar. Therefore, I welcome you today to this mountain of signs and wonders. Expect divine visitations in every department of your life as you settle down here in the name of Jesus Christ. To all of our first time worshipers, therefore, this morning, I say to you, welcome home. Give Jesus a big hand. one more time all of our first time worshipers please rise on your feet for a word of prayer and blessing rise on your feet for a word of prayer and blessing now bow your head as we pray our father in the name of jesus we thank you today for each of these precious ones that you have drawn by your mighty hand you brought them to bless them therefore by your authority today we decree each one of them blessed in the name of jesus christ whatever they have left behind as a concern to come to your presence let it be converted to an open testimony and anyone that is yet to be saved among them today is declared the day of their salvation thank you father for it 
in jesus precious name we have prayed amen and amen please be seated make sure that your forms are completed and submitted to the official closest to you again you're welcome and god bless you give jesus a big big hand everybody right now in this service this morning it's offering time so shall it be for us in jesus name if you haven't done so yet please properly package your worship seat for this service and label it properly remember if you are writing checks you are writing in favor of faith tabernacle canaan land you can give in cash and you can also take advantage of any of the electronic giving channels that you can see on the screen right now praise god i said praise god in exodus chapter 25 and verse 2 exodus chapter 25 and verse 2 the bible says speak unto the children of israel that they bring me an offering of every man that giveth it willingly with his heart with his heart ye shall take my offering so this offering you are giving today is the lord's offering and as you give it with your heart you shall not miss your harvest in jesus name with this understanding please rise up on your feet and take all your financial commitments to god for this service lift it up unto the lord remember you are giving it from your heart it is the lord's offering therefore present it unto god by yourself and thank him praise him bless him and let him know you are doing lord let there be a damper of financial rain this hand shall never lack anymore this hand shall remain given hands so shall it be in jesus mighty name we have prayed loud and believe amen Please, you may be seated comfortably, cast a seat joyfully, and the Feta Banaku Choir will minister. Yeah. 
the Lord a big hand of praise this morning. Amen. We are in for the best of time this season. God is rewriting the story of many in this house. 
It shall be a mist of the year no one will forget in a hurry. It shall be a mist of the year you never, never forget in a hurry. It shall be a season of divine visitations indeed. It will come along with massive dimensions of manifestation. God will be launching many here into their high places. God will be launching many here into their high places. Jesus wept over Jerusalem because they knew not the time of their visitation. Revival is ordained a time of divine visitation among God's people. It's ordained to terminate all forms of frustration, all forms of failures, stagnation, defeat. Open up new chapters to God's people. Now, that shall be your experience in this midst of the year. You never experience a setback anymore in your life. His word lives and abides forever, and so, if he revives his work in the midst of the year, that's what he does. He did yesterday, will do today, will do tomorrow. Is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So in this midst of the year, I see your spiritual life revived. Amen. Your prayer life revived. Amen. The quality of your work with God enhanced. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, here am I in another midst of the year. Revive me, spirit, soul, and body. Go ahead and pray. Revive me, spirit, soul, and body. Revive my spiritual life. Revive my prayer life. Revive my passion for souls. Revive me, spirit, soul, and body. Redo di bara de sangeo. Embra balo tarreto zi arepara. Shagelero tenebrialo. Revive me, O God. Restore my redemptive dignity. Deliver him from everything that wants to destroy me. Revive my spiritual life. Revive my prayer life. Revive my passion for soul. Revive my giving life. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Lord, we are here at your feet. Jesus, we are here at your feet waiting to receive from you let no one return without an encounter with you today Amen. in jesus precious name Amen. welcome again to 2021 your year of supernatural turnaround and so shall it be Amen. give the lord a big hand of praise and please you may be comfortably seated Thank you, Jesus. The midst of the year is ordained a revival season in God's agenda. Habakkuk chapter 2, chapter 3 and verse 2. Revive thy work, O Lord, in the midst of the years, 
in the midst of the years, make known, you put on the die power. In wrath, remember mercy. In the midst of the year, revive thy work, O God. Make bare your power from his hands. There was horns which are the hiding place of his power. Make bare your power. And by his power, he levels out all everlasting mountains and all perpetual hills. As you keep engaging with the demand of that revival, rejoicing he becomes your strength and launches you to your high places now that's God's agenda that's the content of his revival is to rewrite the story of his people just like the valley of the dry bones the bones were very dry all hope gone then came the spirit of God began to move in that valley and then they arose from that valley of worthlessness a mighty host unto God. Ezekiel 37, 1 to 14. A revival is the move of the spirit that caused the giants in God's people to rise. My prayer is that no one will miss out of this awesome season in God's agenda. Amen. The midst of the year is simple. June and July, five months on either side of the divide. Five year, five year, midst of the year. Simple. June and July, the midst of the year. Praise God. Amen. Something unusual will break forth Amen. in your own life Amen. that will keep your life shining from glory to glory all the days of your life. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. Our teaching series for the month is captioned Sunday services commanding signs and wonders from the platform of a revival. We are empowered to be witnesses not empowered for decoration and we saw this empowerment demonstrated matthew chapter 10 verse 1 he called his two disciples and gave them power against unclean spirits and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease and said to them go and preach heal the sick as you go Cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, freely you are given, freely give. Verse 8. So empowerment for science is the exclusive preserve of men and women on the go for Christ. It's not for sit down, title, carrying, <laughs> applaud, receiving. We are empowered to command signs as we get on the go for Jesus. Amen. So only those on the go for Jesus are empowered to command the supernatural. Mm. Now Mark chapter 16, verse 15, go to all the world and preach the gospel. Whosoever believes and is baptized shall be saved. Whosoever believes not shall be damned. And this sign shall be at the command of those on the go. <laughs> so we are in command as we remain on the go. Either on the prayer altar or impassionately reaching out for the lost. We are empowered to command signs being on the go for the expansion, the advancement of the kingdom of God. 
Now, you don't need no title. You don't need no calling. It's every believer's calling. I only had a calling to ministry in 1981. I've been on the crusade ground since 1976. Since 76. You are in command of the supernatural, young or old, being on the go for Christ. You are in command of the supernatural, being on the go for Christ. Young or old, middle-aged, schooled or unschooled. If you take any deadly person, it shall not hurt you. You are on the go. You turn upon service and scorpion over all the past of the enemy. You are on the go. Now, so it holds personal security, personal defense, personal color, personal beauty for you. You move on that wavelength to a point where you just become a sign. You are not looking for sign. You are, your presence is a sign. Your presence in any circumstance is a sign. You step into a place. Things happen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Remember, I and the children whom the Lord has given me, they are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts who dwells in Mount Zion. Commanding signs and wonders from the platform of a revival. Getting committed to the demands of a revival puts you in command of signs and wonders. Luke chapter 9, verse 1. He called the 12 disciples and gave them power and authority over all devils and to kill diseases and verse 6 and so they went and they departed and went through the towns preaching the gospel and healing everywhere same same just get passionately on the go for Jesus and you flow in signs and wonders naturally. Naturally, sir. Naturally. Now watch. I have never begged for one thing since 76. And I've not lived without food one day. I've never borrowed a cloth to wear. That's been a sign. And that's where you belong. That's where every child of God belongs. And the children whom the Lord has given me, they are for signs and wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts who dwells in Mount Zion. You know, signs and wonders are not new. There is no sign in the New Testament that, that there was not there in the Old Testament, including raising of the dead. Including the dry bones of Elijah, Hallelujah. quickly the dead back to life. Yes. My friend, Hallelujah. what was it? Their passion for God hmm. puts them in command of the supernatural. Hmm. Their passion for God, sir. There is more to it than the Holy Ghost, sir. Hmm. The Holy Ghost only provides the help to sustain your passion for God. But you need a passion for God to qualify to be in command of the supernatural. Oh, this guy, 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 give me bread, give me water, give me. That's not the way there. Oh Lord, I need a house. Be shouting. I'd never pray for one. But what is a house to me now, for God's sake? What is a house to me? So, 
Something will break loose in your life. Amen. Now, just watch. This church has been pursuing kingdom affairs in 40 years. Our prayer format has not changed. Yet, we have not stopped advancing. Understand it. Passion for God. Passion for the affairs of his kingdom. Abraham, oh Lord, don't destroy Zoroma and Gomorrah. Don't destroy. If you see 50, we will destroy. Passion for God. Joseph, how can I do this? I sin against God. God, God, God. God, I'm a slave today, but my God is still there. Yes. Nehemiah could not sleep. He was in the fast. For people who are suffering, he wasn't suffering, he was in the palace. That's the way it works. Give your son and say, Oh God, where are you? Will they be tormenting us like this forever? Passion for God's people. That's the way to it. Elijah said, Elijah said, I've been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. I've been very jealous. They have thrown down the altar. Man, that man went by spacecraft to heaven. Hallelujah. Man. Raised the dead. Elijah raised the dead. There was nothing that mattered to the mother God. Think of Daniel. Den of lion, he opened his window. Oh no, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's only you I will serve. I can't serve any king. Only you. He went to the den of lion. He came out unscratched. Passion for God. We put any believer in command of the supernatural. Passion, genuine passion for God. God hates this. I hate it. God loves this. I love it. Whatever God loves, I love. Whatever I hate, I hate with perfect hatred. God, I love you. No wonder the word says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. That's the entire heart of any man. What God has prepared for them that love him. They are just signs and wonders on the earth. Every genuine lover of God is ordained a sign and wonder to his world. Amen. Every. You know what they said about Paul? The gods have come down to us in the likeness of men. Just like Jesus, he died and came back by himself. Nobody prayed for him to come back. We need to reposition in this midst of the year. So we can get command of the things we have been crying for. To get things from God is great. To gain command over things is greater. You have it at will. You gain command, you have it at will. You gain command, you have it at will. You gain command, you have it at will. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Don't miss this awesome time for any reason. Ensure to keep a genuine appointment with God in this midst of the year. And watch sweatless advancement and expansion and favor that be coming your way. It works. Praise God. <laughs> Let me also say this. We need to get a great start. Now, every revival is a spiritually demanding season. Spiritually demanding season. Now, let me tell you this. <laughs> when you sow your seed, one sack of grains will plant several acres of land. But when it's time for harvest, you have sacks upon sacks to carry. You are contending with the boss of the air who wants to eat off your harvest. So it's a laborious time. Revival time is harvest time. Harvest time is a laborious time. My God. You can put a bag in your hand, get into your car, and you plant five acres with a seed in your bag. But that's not what you carry, the only harvest. Mm. Amen. You don't carry, the boss of the air will eat it all for you. That means you have farm for them. 
It's laborious time. It's work time. Now, man, I can't work for you. No, you have to work for yourself. I'll be paid for my work. You'll be paid for your work. They don't pay salaries in groups. They pay one by one. He that reapeth, receiveth wages, as he gathers fruits unto life eternal. Second Chronicles chapter 15 and verse 3 to 7. There was devastation. There was no peace during the winter. Great vexation upon all people. Then a word came. A prophetic word came. And then he said, strengthen your hands for this work. Verse 7. And he took courage and dived into it. And then verse 12 to 15, enter into a covenant, the whole nation, and God gave them rest round about. Now look at that, verse 7 precisely. Verse 7 talks about work. He said, be ye strong therefore. Let not your hands be weak for your work. So revive a time is work time. Shall be rewarded. Haggai chapter 2 and verse 3. Who among you saw the glory of this house in his first estate? How do you see it now? It's like nothing. <laughs> Amen. But he said in verse 4. Yet now I'll be strong, O Zerubbabel, said the Lord. And be strong, O Joshua, the son of Joseph, the, the high priest. And be strong, all ye people of the land, said the Lord. And walk. For I'm with you, said the Lord. You walk. Revival time is war. For yet it was, I will shake the heavens and the earth. Revival time is work time. It's work time. So get ready. It's work time. Get ready. It's work time. You work it today, it will show tomorrow. You look at it and despise it today, it will also show tomorrow. Then shall we know, if we follow on, to know the Lord. It's no respect of persons. Then shall ye return and disarm between the righteous and the wicked, between those who serve God and those who are not serving him. Then shall ye return. It's not now. Then you know. May this mist of the year never leave you behind. Amen. May you invest your time, your energy, and your in taking your own position in it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Many, many global citizens will rise from this church. Jesus said, I've come to set fire on the earth. Luke 12, 49 and 50. And what will I be already kindled? I've come to set fire on the earth. And what will I if it be already kindled? But I have a baptism. Baptism of labor. And now am I straighten until it be accomplished. <laughs> it takes that to impart on your world. It takes that. Laboring fervently on the prayer altar, which applies to everybody. Everybody, everyone of all ages. Everybody of all ages. My God. The man Abraham could say, let's go up to the mountain and worship at 114. At 114. Anna was praying hard at 84. Anybody who can eat can pray. Epaphras was laboring, traveling in prayers. And my God will reward everyone going to his labor. So the prayer altar is an open-ended altar for all classes of believers. Old and young, sir. So no one is left out. Give us this day our daily bread. Anyone who can pray that, sir. Must pray. Thy kingdom come. <laughs> it's all in one package. Thy kingdom come first. Then give us this our daily bread. Anyone who can pray, deliver me from evil. Can pray thy kingdom come. So it is all in one package. So nobody is a doubt without excuse, oh man, whosoever you be. Nobody has an excuse to let this ever time pass without your investment of labor. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Investment of labor. You see, our office is quite so busy. 
but you are quite so it. <laughs> you see it. Your office is very busy, but you saw it. You see, as a chairman and executive chairman, you see, but you see executively it. <laughs> you stay asleep. My God. And when there is any issue, like a risk, a danger, my God. But you are very busy, you are executive. Where is your God? People don't have a heart for God. They are spreading that away. Without a heart for God, you can't make a mark on the earth. You need a heart for God to make your fullness of mark on the earth. You need a heart for God. Stop explaining away your, your complacency. You know, by my present position um, in the organization, is a global one. You know, we have interest in Japan. Okay, you can have interest anywhere. When you need God, you shout. All those that call themselves atheists is a lie. When they are in the face of accident, oh God! You say, where is God? You say, there is no God. You say, oh, there is God! <laughs> you don't have to get to the point of risk to recognize God as God. Amen. 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 Everybody has equal opportunity for a change of story in a revival. You are either engaging on the prayer altar or engaging in going out after souls. Through various diverse technologies available to us today, you can reach anybody at any time. You can pray down strategies for better approach, for better results at any time. You can create appointment at very odd times. I'd like to share something with you, but it's better outside of business time. So I'll be calling you at 11. Very important. I just felt an unusual passion to share this with you. He's waiting. You have prayed. Well, something. Jesus touched my life and gave me rest. I used to be restless and Clouded with anxieties, apprehensions, uncertainties. But one day I met Jesus. And you are telling the truth from the depth of your heart. It won't bluff you. Okay, I think about it. Then you call him tomorrow. Thank you for the audience last night. Amen. So it's just a pleasure, but let, I want to let you know I'm praying for you. He will call you on Sunday and say, I'm going to church with you. It's all strategy. Strategy. Godly strategy. No gimmicks. Lord, I'm in this village. I don't speak their language. Now, I must have your name planted here. He gave me insight on what to do, sir. If I'm speaking to them about Jesus, they will be arguing. So close your eyes. I want to pray for you. So I led them to Christ through prayers. One by one. Church was built in 40 days. You know, you, you, where your heart is there, sir. You, you will find a way forward. You will find a way forward. Praise God. You can pray anybody to the kingdoms. Just identify him. And begin to take him to God in prayer. My God. That's how to do it. I can tell you this with all my heart. I've been in it in 76. Consciously. I've been doing it before. Consciously. As a business. A kingdom business. The only business that God has on the earth. And it's working. Today by grace. By grace. I say by grace. Not by effort. Not by strength. By grace. There is no place on the planet earth where this short man's name does not ring a bell. There is no place. Just clear the name. It will come out. <laughs> Hallelujah. By the grace of God. If you write my name on an envelope without address, it will get here. Yeah. Without any address, don't put Kenan, don't put uh, Ota, don't put Lagos. Just say, David, Nigeria, it will get here. Hallelujah. Nobody can give himself a name. Mm. Nobody. He said to Abraham, I will make thy name great. Nobody can, there is no child who named himself. Mm. That the eighth day came and then the pastor got there. The child said, my name. The pastor will wrong. The parents will wrong. My name is Joshua Daniel Zechariah. <laughs> <You're wrong. laughs> the 
the Gentiles shall see their glory. Hmm. That shall be called by a new name. With the mouth of the Lord shall name. God will name a name on you this time. Yeah. Demons will hear your name and scream. Yeah. Witches will see you and bow. Yeah. Somebody's story is changing. Yeah. His work. Now remember Jesus was anointed without measure john 3 34. remember jesus is the living word of god not that he has revelation is the revelation we are looking at amen amen john chapter 1 and verse 1 to 5. now yet he said my father walketh either two and i walk walk is a principal component of every revival walk 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 if it's not happening, you are not in a revival. It's work. Now, I must walk the work of the that, you know, that sent me where it is day, the night coming when no man can walk. John 9 4, John 5 17. It's work. Now, watch. They, he walked and walked. Mark chapter 3, that there was no time to eat bread. <laughs> 21 and 22. His friends came. They thought he was off his mind to take him away for treatment. Walk. Walk. John chapter 4 verse 32 to 34. I have a food to eat that you don't know about. My mate is to do the will of it that sent me and to finish his work. To finish his work. Walk. No, revival only thrives on the wheels of work. Walk. Walk. If you are not ready to walk, you are, can't be in a revival. You can't partake of the blessings of the revival. So it's walk time. Oh my God. And it's open to everybody. Walking on the prayer altar, walking on the streets of your territory to see people saved in your offices, in the marketplaces, to see the need for Jesus in the life of people all around you. That's walk. My prayer is that no one will be left behind in this midst of the year. Amen. You will not be left behind in this wave of glory. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. We'll be giving you um operation by all means bulletin to help you get properly positioned in this midst of the year and then we have a special blessing for you operation by all means covenant so winning target now we are told and the tree bears 12 manner of fruits and brings what is fruits every month this one commits every member of this church to minimum two established souls and then for that reason we gave you a paper here that has eight targets that you will pray into the kingdom Amen. you will love into the kingdom Amen. you passionately pursue for the kingdom and according to matthew chapter 8 the parable of the sower at least 25 percent we bow and surrender to Jesus. Hallelujah. And watch what happens in your life. Amen. This thing is easy. It's easy. It's easy. It's easy. So, they'll be giving you this at the end of this. Let, let nobody scorn this, you know, Papa again. My God. Operation my own means. I'm not going to do anything. That's what problem. People thought some of us were mad. They thought we were mad. Now you see how mad we are now? That's how to be mad. <laughs> you see how mad we are today? Some of those who thought we were mad come to Copenhagen guest house today. 
to wait on the Lord. <laughs> That's how mad we are. Their children are worse, are now in Covenant University. Some have graduated. We were mad. Very mad. Join this madness train with me. Is the missing behind your destiny in Christ? Join. Join. Amen. And then, and for signs and for wonders, was not available last Sunday. They will make that available to you in the course of this service before we close. Jesus is Lord. Amen. Amen. Somebody blessed? Amen. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Something is breaking forth in someone's life. Amen. Well, told the glory of God, and I'm here to share with you what will help motivate your life. My team has brought 65,000 119 souls into the kingdom this year. Amen. That's how greedy of God we are. Praise God. That's how greedy of God we are. I don't know what my wife's team is like, but, but uh, this is our own. It's given me yesterday. Praise God. I was checking records and I saw from Mission House the number of rural churches that my wife is building. I saw it on their record. We are just on the move. We don't steal, oh. God does not bless thieves, He causes them. That's right. The cause of the Lord is in the house of the thief. We are not stealing. We are just being blessed. Being blessed pursuing God with everything inside of us. This will help you. <laughs> My second batch of rural church planting or building is 100 number. 100 number. We don't steal. We don't beg. We don't borrow. We don't take government money. And they are hearing me. Mm -hmm. yes. Amen. Life. This thing works. Works. Thank you, Jesus. works every day. Thank you, Jesus. One woman came yesterday and said, he insulted me or cursed me. And they were slapping him. They said, what? Well, they said, I can't see them. <laughs> Jesus. So they were slapping him. You could see she was, she was dying. Jesus. How dare you? No. There are people here, sir. Anyone touching you, he's, he's finishing himself. Yes, <laughs> and another woman. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. They ask him, who is the one between? He said, I can't see them. But they just slap him, slap him, slap him, slap him, slap him. Hey, please, Papa, help me. <laughs> Somebody's story is changing. Amen. Somebody's story is changing. You will not miss your place. Amen. You will not miss your place. Amen. When it's time, just tell me I stop. All I'm doing here is to help you connect with the reality of this moment. That's all I'm doing. If you like, you can join it. Is it for church to grow? No. It's for church to be rescued. Somebody was on his way to money making ritualist. I met with our team. This man said, I'm ready to go to hell, but I must get money. I'm ready to sell my soul, but I must get money. And then Jesus touched him on the spot. He said, can I have some of the flyers? He went out on the spot and brought seven souls and brought them to the soul when I said, look, please help me follow up these seven souls. Same day, just on the way to hell, 
and Jesus caught up with them. We are on a rescue mission, sir. I yeah, know it's not from fair. It's not uh, let's grow church. It's let's let's rescue lives. You get to attend. You hear all kinds of humbling testimony. I've never had rest in my life. As soon as I enter this gate, peace just came. My God. How you respond to prophetic instructions. Be careful, be careful, be very careful. There's a mighty move of God in the land. And in the future, this is the least hit nation on the earth on coronavirus. The move of God. It wipes away shame and reproach. My God. It opens the graves of people. Amen. With this massive population, many living in squalor, they want more water to wash hands, yet coronavirus can't touch them. That's how being on God's side can exempt you from all the horrors of the world. Your life, your family shall be totally exempted from every evil on this earth by being on God's side. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Finally, many of us have experienced God in some unique ways in the past, but we don't seem to see that anymore. Let me tell you why. After every rainfall, the cloud comes clear. Until another cloud is formed, the next rainfall is not in view. I mean, you understand what I'm talking about? If the cloud be full of rain, they empty themselves on the earth. After they have emptied themselves, the cloud becomes clear. <laughs> and until another cloud is formed, the next rainfall is not in place. You stopped. That's why the amazing wonder stopped. The source of blessing stopped where your obedience stopped. We have been praying this kind of prayer in this church as a church for 40 years. We are not tired. We have been pursuing laughter souls. I told them, I said, make 500,000 tracts of every track title that we have. And that you make that every week. Every week. That's more important than building a house for us as a church. That's why our rainy season has never stopped. <laughs> Why the rain is falling, we are feeling the cloud again. And the rain is falling, we are feeling the cloud again. So as the rain falls, we feel the cloud. Another rain falls, we feel the cloud. Another rain falls. That's why many believers' rainy season has stopped. The cloud has become empty. Elijah prayed and told this servant, Check the sky. He said there is nothing. Ah, there must be something. That's after that prophetic world. I can hear the sound of abundance of rain. That's okay. But you must form the cloud before the rain will fall. You must fill up the cloud before you can have the rain. You must fill up the cloud before you can have the rain. So it's another season to fill up your cloud for your next showers of blessings. And may you receive grace to keep filling the cloud as a new lifestyle from this time on. So you can pray to form your cloud. You can go after souls to form the cloud. You can run after new converts to form the cloud, whichever way. You form the cloud with your passionate still worship. Passionate still worship. Passionate still worship. Passionate still worship. 
That's what happens. We have been in the revival as a church for long, my friend. We've been there for long. You remember Operation 22, 23, Operation 146, Operation 678. Operation, look, this is a theater. <laughs> we are always in the operating room. And that's why God keeps changing our level from time to time. Now, can you imagine a system of this size never borrowed, never bad? Never indebted. God wants to decorate your life. Yeah. In case you don't believe my testimonies, don't you believe the one for your church? That your church is building that kind of thing without any pressure on anybody, sir. On anybody, any, any. I see your life become totally pressure free. Yeah. Seeking for the kingdom of God and such and and all these things that others are dying to get shall be added to you. May this season mark the dawn of a new day in your life. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Have you ever imagined that none of the twelve was reported sick while they were with Jesus? They were Jesus' errand boys. <laughs> Arise and let us go. There's nobody saying, okay, I am feeling something. Always. Always on the go. Thou shalt serve. <laughs> and he shall bless. And I, God, will take something away from you. This season will mark the end of every torment of sickness and disease in your life. You know why it does that? The laborers are few. So it has to keep fit. The few that are there. Yes, he that beareth fruit, I will prune. Yes. So he can bear more fruit. Yes. He takes over the care of your system. Thank you, Jesus. So you can keep bearing more fruit. So it's your legal right as a fruit bearing Christian to live a super healthy life. My God. My God. So everything that is out of order in anyone's life here, today marks the end of it. Today marks the end of it. Yeah. And as you are anointed from the altar with a heart ready to serve God, the end has come to every torment of sickness and disease. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. I will keep fit. When God keeps you fit, who can make you unfit? When God makes you whole, who can get you sick? A faithful ambassador is entitled to healthy living. Who is an ambassador? One that says reconciling the world back to God. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 to 20. So, so every child of God has the opportunity to be an ambassador of Christ. He is called to be. And so when he accepts to be and engages in being one, my God is entitled to healthy living. Proverbs 13 verse 17. Healthy living. Therefore from today, sickness and disease shall not be mentioned in your household anymore. <laughs> you have any child that is challenged in his or her health, that child is declared whole right now. <laughs> Whatever will affect your quality of stewardship and cause you distraction, is put back to order right now in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Somebody believe that? Let me hear your loudest amen. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Thank you. Revival is on. Come and give the Lord a big hand of praise. <laughs> Revival is on. Thank you, Jesus. 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 If anyone was not in the spiritual week of emphasis time or week, uh, this week we just concluded, try to grab the messages. I mean, get on the YouTube if you need to, or get your CD wherever, and get connected and have a very grand deal take off into this season. Now from tomorrow, 
we have morning and evening raid at our various area facilities and other facilities. It's there for our senior citizens, our nursing mothers who are home, and then um, uh, everyone that is open can be part of it, morning and evening. And for our young men, I pray to you young men because you are strong. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Everyone from my age downward is a young man. Yes. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> so, man, you are all young men. <laughs> Your young men shall see vision. Abraham saw vision at 75. So if you are under 75, you are a young man. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We'll be embarking on morning and evening raid on our way to work, on our way back from work with people that come our way. Just see Jesus looking for them. Just minister life to them with smiles. You don't need the message. Just test your testimony. Has Jesus touched your life in any way? Tell somebody yes. Is enough to drive them to Christ. Can I hear your amen? amen. You will not miss out of this. Amen. Now, God heals us through four main channels, all by His word. One, God's word kills. He sent them to preach and to kill diseases. That this God's word is medicinal. Speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. And his servant was made whole the same same hour. Matthew 8 8 to 10 and slash 13. Attend to my word, give ear to my sins, let them not depart from your heart. With your eyes keep them in the midst of your heart, they shall be life to them. That find it and health to all their flesh. But that translation say a medicine to all their flesh. Proverbs 4 20 22. He sent his word and it healed them. Luke 5 17. He was teaching and the power of God was present to heal. God's power always accompanies his word to heal his people. Jesus went through their synagogues preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Matthew 4, 23. The word kills. The word heals. Number two. The word repairs any damaged part of our body. That means the word is surgical. The word is surgical. We saw God put Adam to sleep, Genesis 2, 21 to 22, and took a rib out of him, and with that rib he formed a woman. He closed up the flesh, there was no sign. There was no anesthesia jumped back and began to sing. And I am the Lord. I chain up. And the beginning was the word. The word was God and the word was God. So God is still carrying out surgical operations today by his word. I did this teaching in London, one of our conventions. And a woman there that had a fall many years ago and had this waste challenge. Cut the ward, went to bed, and then three fellows, like doctors, appeared in the night and began to draw some strands from our waist, yellowish spaghetti kind of stuff, and got up in the morning for the first time in many years. The chains were over. The master physician stepped in. The master surgeon stepped in. 
I preached that in Kampala, Uganda, one of those days, and a woman that had a ghastly motor accident and was packaged like an image. You can't move. All the lips were broken, so they fixed her. She had that word, and in the night, someone showed up, dressed in white, and took her chest. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Got up in the morning, free for life. The word is surgical. It's sharper than to any two-edged sword. It's able to pierce through wherever anything is wrong and put it right. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. God's word has power to repair any damaged part of our body. Can I hear you, amen? amen. That's why how blocked tubes are opened. Opens it up, open my friend, and then you are free. Praise God. God's word replaces any irreparable part. It has been over damaged. So it steps in to replace. It steps in to replace. Over damaged blood, it steps in to replace. So it says, turn a Amen. Man. To replace means to create. God's word is creative. We saw that in Genesis chapter 1. God said, and it was happened. God said, and it happened. God's word is creative. One of our daughters here was, they removed our two ovaries. And so, you can have a child. Biologically closed. He stepped in. The two sons graduated from Covenant University. No over. The testimony from Japan, you remember? The man that lost 18 kgs in three days because of a damaged heart. And then God stepped in. Everything turned. Everything it's not this is a brand new heart how replaced replaced whatever has been over damaged in anyone's life my god will replace it right now thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus now the next level, which is very vital, is that God's word delivers. That is the law, the world liberates from all oppressions of the devil. There are quite many health conditions that are not physiological. They are just demonic oppression. Doctors search and search can't find it. They can find it. They don't know the name of it. It's just something from the grooves. <laughs> that is where Jesus steps in. There is no other source under heaven where anybody can be free from an oppression of the devil. There is no other source under heaven where anybody can be free from the oppression of the devil. Oh, Jesus. At his name, every name bows. Jesus. He gave me the mouth above every other name. Every other name. All principalities and powers, rulers of darkness of this world, they bow to that name. Jesus. Amen. Evil death, the most stubborn demon, bows to that name. Go, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead. Freely you are given, freely give. Okay, all they saw was brain tumor. And then there was this mystery that was planted into that 
innocent person. You know, some bones, some bullet kind, and ah, and then the brain tumor disappear. That's no brain tumor. That's satanic oppression. There is no kind of surgery that can remove it. Never. Only the power of God. In the name of Jesus, child, leave. Mm. And then we went to the airport. Before we got to the airport, a shout. Mm. The child had come back to life. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. That's what happens. Every testimony of the dead being raised back to life is a rescue from the grave. Uh, what do I call it? A rescue from the grave. I will open up your graves and bring you out of your graves. Mm. It's part of the package in the Bible. Yes, sir. Therefore, everyone appointed to that. Did you hear the testimony of that woman? They gave her three months to live. How many? Three months to live. Jesus stepped in and rescued her from the grave. Rescue her from the grave. So, if your case is not curable, it must be repairable. If it's not repairable, it must be replaceable. And if it's not replaceable, it must be rescuable. You are coming out today by all means. You are coming out of that condition today by all means. You are coming out of that situation today by all means. Yeah. Somebody believe that, let me hear your loudest, amen. Yeah. You believe that, let me hear your loudest, amen. Yeah. Now, here is the good news. Every everlasting mountain, every perpetual hill that's been staring you in the face over the years must clear off today. Lift up your right hand, everybody, and give God thanks. Give God thanks. Give God thanks. And give God thanks. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, help me to be a bona fide partaker of this midst of the year wave of glory. Help me to be a bona fide partaker of this midst of the year wave of glory. Help me to be a bona fide partaker of this year's midst of the year waves of glory. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Give the Lord the biggest clap of praise. Hallelujah. Very quickly, you are here in the service this morning and you are not born again yet. I'd like to pray with you. We are in a revival. God is turning multitudes back to himself. Amen. You can take your position in it. The price is fully paid. Just simply accept it. And then ask for him to forgive your sins. Then you become a member of his family. Hallelujah. That is something to look for. Wherever you are this morning, you'd like me to pray with you to be born again, to have Jesus forgive your sins, give you the free gift of eternal life, secure your place in eternity. Please stand to your feet and I'll pray with you. God bless you. God bless you. Stand to your feet and remain standing, please. Stand to your feet and remain standing. We are in the golden age of the church. Please stand. Amen. While we're praying for these precious souls, please, ushers, we do go around and make available the clearing operation by all means. And then, um, uh, and for signs and for wonders. And then, operation by all means, covenant soul winning targets. And then, uh, covenant day of restoration for next Sunday. Amen. Remain standing, please. Now, there are also people here tonight, I mean, this morning, that need to rededicate their life to Christ. They want to reconnect back to your Heavenly Father. 
You want to say bye bye to everything that is push, pulling you away from God. Wherever you are, please stand to your feet. I pray with you at the same time. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus? Stand to your feet. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus? Stand to your feet. You want to dedicate your life to Jesus? Stand to your feet. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus? Stand to your feet. Amen. Now, everyone standing, please bow your heads in a moment. And pray this prayer of faith after me. Lift up your right hand to heaven. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Say it loud, Lord Jesus. I surrender my life to you today. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day you rose again that I may be justified. Right now, I believe my sins are now forgiven. I'm justified by your blood. I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm now a child of God. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Thank you, Jesus, for restoring me back to the faith. I will serve you by your help all the days of my life. Amen. Be blessed of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Amen. I cover each and every one of you today with the blood of Jesus. The grace that brought you in today will preserve you for life. You'll never step backward anymore. you never step back into darkness anymore. You have escaped today and you have escaped for life. In the name of Jesus. So shall it be in Jesus name. Give the Lord a big hand of praise everybody. Congratulations. Congratulations. Please complete those forms and ensure you submit them to those church officials around with you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you Lord. Please stand to your feet everybody. Let the stewards now come over and let's serve this mystery for the rescue of everyone here. Amen. Is any sick among you? Let them come upon the other soldier. Let them pray over him. Anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. You are rising up from that sickness today. Yeah. Now check up with those doctors this week. They will tell you those things are no longer there. Yeah. Somebody was told it's too late. We can't help your case anymore. And then suddenly, God stepped in and ripped off the cancer of the mouth from the mouth. Woke up in the morning, can't find it anymore. Now, as you have decided to follow Jesus, to serve him, no sickness is permitted to hold you down. In America, too late. In Europe, too late. Jesus said, that's my specialty. Just commit yourself to me. I'm committed to your well-being. For everyone whose heart is set to serve his or her God with all your heart, with all your soul, every chain of sickness and disease is broken off your life today. <laughs> now, this the content of these verses is hereby declared the holy anointing oil Amen. to destroy every yoke of sickness and disease Amen. and every oppression of the devil. Amen. Divers instant rescue now. Amen. Cancer is caused from the roots. Loss of memory is fully restored. <laughs> the plague of high blood pressure, hypertension, diabetes is caused from the roots. 
sickle cell anemia is destroyed from the root. Every form of seizure is finally over today. Autism is caused from the roots. Every conception hindering diseases and situations is overturned from the roots. Impotency is caused from the roots. In the name of Jesus, nightmares are declared over. The torment of spirit husband, spirit wife is over forever. And so shall it be. Every manner of sickness, every manner of disease, migraine, stiffness of neck, heart problems, liver problems, kidney problems, back pain, waist pain, knee pain, paralysis, strokes, in the name of Jesus, you are all declared destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. Deafness, blindness, darkness, stammering, I call them all destroyed in the name of Jesus. It's done. Thank you, Lord. Please get seated. I'm very simple. One, under one second. A finger touch to your forehead and begin to celebrate God for your triumph. 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 For your triumph. Anyone here, just take a seal of that on your forehead. Sickness will run away from you. Disease will run away from you. You'll not only be free, you'll be shielded against all forms of arrows of the wicked. In the name of Jesus. Touch not my anointed. That will be your new identity. And do my prophets no harm. That will be your new calling. In the name of Jesus Christ. So shall it be. Do that in faith. Let's move fast. Let's move fast, please. Move fast. Move fast. Move fast. Move fast. Now, while you are there, begin to call anything you want to happen in your system. Begin to call it. Tell that sickness you have expired. Today marks your end. You can't go any further. By this anointing, you are destroyed. You will never hear your head anymore in my life. Now go ahead. Go ahead. Call it. Call it forth. Call it forth. It's only what you call that we answer. Call it forth. It's only what you call that we answer. Call it forth. It's only what you call that we answer. Call it forth. It's only what you call that we answer. Call it forth. Call it forth. It's only what you call that we answer. Call it forth. It's only what you call that we answer. Call it forth. Call it forth. Call it forth. Call it forth. Your freedom is now. Your victory is now. Your triumph is now. Call it forth, call it forth, call it forth, call it forth. It's the dawn of a new day for you. It's the dawn of a new day for you. It's the dawn of a new day for you. Every mark of the devil on your life is wiped off today by this anointing. It's from the altar, the altar of fire, the altar of fire, the altar of fire. Now take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Asthma is gone. Hard breathing is gone in the name of Jesus. Short breath is gone in the name of Jesus. You are shielded today. You are covered today. You are liberated today. You are set free today. Everybody, everybody, take it, 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 take it. You are set to serve him. He will not let you serve sickness or disease anymore. He will not let you serve sickness or disease anymore. The battle over your head is over today. 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 It will keep you fit supernaturally, 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 supernaturally. Everybody, take it, 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 take it. If you have received your touch, stand to your feet. You have received your touch. Stand to your feet. Now, let the choir lead us in celebrating him. Hallelujah.
we sing this prophetic song Jesus set me free I cannot be bound Jesus set me free I cannot be bound I cannot be bound from henceforth sickness shall have no more hold or sway on your life Jesus said harvest of undeniable testimonies this week. Yeah. The siege over your health is finally over. Yeah. Every appointment with death is finally scuttled. Yeah. The chains are broken. And you have finally escaped. Yeah. That hereditary disease is finally over. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Now, here is the strategy. We have our morning and evening read, 8 to 10 in the morning for uh, classes of people earlier mentioned, the aged, the senior citizens. In our videos, facilities, just pray. And we have our prayer bulletins to pray with. And we pray God's manifest power for massive influx of souls into the kingdom. Can I hear your amen? amen. All those things answer to prayers. And then five to six in the evening. Hallelujah. And the same goes for us in the morning. Everyone called unemployed. Let Jesus employ you. And no employer under heaven will reject you. In the course of it, Many will have international jobs calling. Yes. <laughs> Many damn businesses will just take a new turn. <laughs> As you let Jesus engage you. Amen. And all of us who are going to work, we go on our way to work, on our way back from work. You give somebody a lift, that's an opportunity. Drag him into the kingdom. Jesus loves you. I just saw you and I, I believe God has something for me to share with you. Are you a believer? Mm, no, I know that's why I waited. Then you, get, you inoculate him with it. And then um, that becomes a catch. Amen. Amen. I've been quite some time in this business. So I know what it is. I can get to at any time, at any point, because everybody needs life. Nobody ever rejects life. Have you ever seen anybody reject blessing? No way. God just asked me to bless you. And then I bless you to retain that blessing. You need to come out of darkness. Yes, Otherwise, darkness will overrun you again and you may not see the blessing anymore. Ah, is that so? That's so. Bow down, let me pray for you. I, I don't have to ask you. You don't want to lose your blessing, do you? Bow down your head. Say, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. <laughs> and then you're free. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Now, how well you start will determine how well you finish. So, this is the start of week. So give it a great start. 
and say, God will honor you in all respects. Can I hear your loudest amen? Yeah. I'm sure the office will let you know which other locations are there outside the area offices so it can be close to all of the categories of people we mentioned. So whether you are a nursing mother, you are an over-pregnant woman, you can also pray. As long as you can eat, you can pray. Can I hear your amen? Yeah. Praise God. And if you deliver in church, praise God. That's the best way to deliver. Praise the Lord. Well, good news. By the help of God, we have reached 11,978 new cells this year. Come on, give the Lord praise. And that's how they'll be clapping for you this year. Everybody involved in one way or another, as a house provider, as a minister, as assistant, that's how you'll be receiving ovation this year. In your business, ovation. Over your life of your children, ovation. Over your career, ovation. You'll be hearing congratulations every step of your journey. In the name of Jesus Christ. Next strategy, just make sure you get them into the cell. Every of your new convert, get them to the cell. We pray for the needs of people in our cell fellowship. Get them there. And from there, get them to the zone. Get them to the zone. It's nearer to where they live. Get them to the zone. Get them to the zone. So every cell here has a mandate of minimum 10 people added to the zone in this seven weeks period. Minimum. How many? 10. Added to the zone. Added to the zone. Market women, young girls, young boys, every soul is precious in the sight of God. Get them into the cells and get them into the zones from where we are in their movement into church. His strategy, everything works by insight. We will not let go. Can I hear your amen? Well, in case the church is far, the cell is not far, it's on your street. Amen. The zone is not far, it's in your area. Can I hear your amen? amen? I've not heard anything back from you, sir, that I have found of grace. Do what you please with it. Lift up your two hands. Because you have decided to serve him, you will not serve the devil. You will not serve failure. You will not know stagnation. You never be stranded again. And so shall it be. Go in peace. Return with abundance of testimony. Lift up those materials you just got. Amen. Lift them up before the Lord. Lord, breathe upon these materials in my life. Grant me understanding of what you are saying and make me a bona fide partaker of the blessings of this season. Say that in one word to oh God. Say that in one word. Also, breathe upon the flyer in my hand. Anyone I give this to must respond. In Jesus precious name we are praying this target card I like you to prayerfully identify individuals that you love to see into the kingdom among your friends your neighbors your colleagues your customers your clients your village people anyone you desire to see and prayerfully identify them and commit yourself to praying for them for their salvation and forgot to give you insight on the best approach to getting them into the kingdom and they will do it you know why he wants all men to be saved all men oh he said it's a very bad man he wants him to be saved 
He can't be worse than Paul the Apostle. He wants him to be saved. So please take this material serious and then watch how God will begin to decorate your life with wonders from heaven in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, the good news is by the close of this season, this church has jumped to double where we are today. Amen. Has jumped to minimum double where we are today. Amen. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest. Amen. amen. Lift up your two hands and let's close in this service. Jesus is Lord. Give him thanks, everybody. Together, let's share the goodness of the Lord and fellowship. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Peace. Welcome to 2021, your year of supernatural turnaround. Then expect turnaround to become your new identity from henceforth. Amen and amen. You are blessed. Congratulate somebody as you go. If you came in after the worship offering was received, there are officials around the altar and various exits carrying late offering tags. Do well to drop your offering as you go and be blessed as you do. If you want to share your testimony in the second service, take your bag, take your Bible and anything you came to church with and rush to the honor entrance that is the entrance behind where the pastors are seated and share your testimony to the glory of God. Again, if you want to share your testimony, rush to the honor entrance and share it to the glory of God. Choir.
clap your hands all ye people and shout to the Lord with a voice of triumph amen please be seated in God's presence listen to the faith tabernacle announcement for this second service in our covenant day of healing and deliverance today number one good news the word of faith bible institute will be june edition holds between 14th and 25th june 2021 this is a two-week intensive course and shall hold in Kenan land and at all our will be training centers in lagos and Ottawa. note that bcc holds in all training centers while sec holds at Kenan land and other selected centers for registration and other information visit the link as displayed on the screen number two good news our june edition of our three days specialized certificate course comes up from monday the 28th to wednesday the 30th of june 2021 it shall future breaking marital siege everyone on the line for miracle marriage and everyone designed a hit free marriage should keep this divine appointment with God. God shall be breaking every marital siege and releasing wisdom for marital bliss. Kindly note that both registration and payment for this course is online. For registration and other information, visit the link that is displayed on the screen. Number three, Believers Foundation class holds this Monday for all new converts. Please note that you are to attend for two Mondays only. Every new convert concerned will be contacted by sms on the location close to where they live and the time is 6 to 7 30 p.m number four covenant hour of prayer host tomorrow monday to saturday both here in Kenan land and in all our covenant hour of prayer locations across lagos and Ottawa. time is 5 30 to 6 30 a.m number five praise the lord our midweek communion service host this wednesday 9th june 2021 both here in Kenan land and at all zonal fellowship centers in Lagos, Ottawa, and Environ. Remember, we shall be waiting on the Lord in a, in a fast and break with the communion. The time is 6 p.m. Number six, Winner Satellite Fellowship, a house to house fellowship, holds this Saturday at our WSF centers across Lagos and Ottawa. The time is 5 to 6 p.m. Remember, our cell growth and replication agenda is still on. Ensure you are part of this by bringing people into your cell. If you desire to host a WSF location in your house, please indicate through your cell minister. And as you host the ark of testimony in your home, expect continuous inflow of testimonies into your life. Amen. Finally, number seven, praise the Lord. Next Sunday at Faith Tabernacle, the 13th of June 2021, shall be our covenant day of restoration it shall double as a special monthly communion service it shall be a service to be much remembered therefore come expecting encounters by the word and the mystery of the communion table the service schedule is as usual jesus is lord in this service it is testimony time let's welcome brother Miguel Atagamen to come for his testimony. Brother Miguel, please come straight to the altar for your testimony. Let's give Jesus a big hand of praise. Well, if you are clapping for Jesus, it can be bigger and better this morning. Please step forward quickly to share your testimony with the saints of God. Keep clapping as they come, please. Good morning, church. My name is Theodore Atagamen. This is my son, Miguel Atagamen. We came here 2018, beaten and battered. Um, on that very day, we were able to see Papa. And he's, I told him that my son is suffering from asthma, epilepsy, brain seizure, and just for things like that so he said to me that from genesis to revelation there is no place that is recorded in the bible that jesus christ suffered asthma 
that from today, Ashma sees. Today, my son is talking. Ashma gone, seizure gone, every other thing that was diagnosed of. Praise God. Hallelujah. Her son was healed of brain seizure, epilepsy, asthma, and autism, all cleared out by the power of God. That hand can be bigger for Jesus this morning. Now, please listen to this documented testimony. Healed of chronic blood disease via Kingdom Advancement Endeavors. In February 2021, I felt strange in my body and I went to the hospital for a checkup where I was diagnosed with a chronic blood disease. When I received the result, I was shocked and literally died because I was engrossed with fear. For two weeks, I could not sleep. However, during a certain service, I received the word from James 5, 11 to 16, Exodus 23, 25 to 26, and Matthew 6, 33, and my hope was ignited. If you are clapping, better for Jesus. <laughs> Thereafter, I keyed into the testimony of the person healed of HIV that was read at the covenant hour of prayer. I decided to keep engaging in kingdom advancement endeavors. I went out for soul winning and prayed kingdom advancement prayers every midnight. Then God showed up at the prophetic feast. On the fourth day, Bishop David Oyeriko made declarations. He said, somebody will go to sleep and wake up tomorrow to find out that the sickness is no more. I shouted, Amen. As if I was the only one he was talking to. On the fifth day, he repeated the same declaration. So on the sixth day, I decided to go for another checkup. Lo and behold, without taking any medication, the result came back negative. Now I am healed and I am free. I give God all the glory. And the testifier is Victoria D.D. Your testimony is coming in this service. Bigger hand for Jesus. This morning is my privilege to welcome a number of us who are here today, worshiping for the first time on Sunday like this at the Faith Tabernacle. If today is your first time at the Faith Tabernacle on Sunday morning, would you please rise on your feet wherever you are. Give Jesus a big hand every morning as they begin to rise everywhere. is worthy of all the praise and of all the glory. Please remain standing in God's presence. Remain standing in God's presence. Our officials will put into your hand a welcome pack. Along with it, you'll be given a slip that you need to fill. And as soon as you receive your copy, please be seated and begin filling that slip in the course of this welcome. Make sure you receive your copy before you are seated and immediately begin filling the slip in the course of this welcome. Once you have received your copy, please take your seat and begin filling it. I want to welcome you on behalf of Jesus Christ, the head of the church, and on behalf of his servant, the apostle over this commission, Bishop David Oedipo. I want you to know you have come today to a mountain of God and to a city of refuge. Please note that every believer has an appointed place for the fulfillment of his or her glorious destiny. God's word declares that those who are planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the court of our God. In the same vein, every believer has a God-appointed shepherd over his or her life. His word says that your teachers will not be removed into a corner, but your eyes will see your teachers and your ears will hear a word saying, this is the way, walk in it. It is when you are in your appointed place and under your God-ordained shepherd that your glorious destiny begins to find practical expression. I believe that a number of us are here today because God has brought us to show us our appointed place and our God-ordained shepherd. Just as Obedidom in the scriptures tabernacled with the ark of God for three months and had a dramatic change of story, no one settles down with God here engaging with divine instructions without experiencing a change of story therefore get planted here and expect diverse visitations that will result in life-changing testimonies as you engage with every word that proceeds from this altar in the name of jesus christ therefore to all of our first-time worshipers 
I say to you, welcome home. Give Jesus a big hand. One more time, all of our first time worshipers, please rise on your feet for a word of prayer and blessing. All our first time worshipers, rise on your feet for a word of prayer and blessing. Now bow your head as we pray. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today for these precious ones that you have drawn by your mighty hand. You brought them to bless them. And therefore, by your authority today, we decree to one of them blessed in the name of Jesus. Whatever they have left behind as a source of concern to come to your presence, let it be converted to an open testimony. And any one of these, your precious people that is yet to be saved, let today be the day of their salvation. Thank you, Father, for it. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Please be seated. Ensure that your forms are completed and submitted to the official closest to you. Again, you're welcome and God bless you. Give Jesus a big, big hand, everybody. In this second service right now today, it's offering time. Can I hear louder? Amen. Please properly package your worship seat for this service if you haven't done so. All of your financial commitments, if you also have your tithe here today as well, 10% of God's increase upon your life, and you have purpose to worship God with it, please package everything honorably, label them properly as we get set to worship God with our seed. Remember, you can take advantage of the electronic giving channels you see that on the screen right now. And if you are writing checks, you are writing in favor of Faith Tabernacle, Canaan Land. You can also give in cash. Praise God. I said, Praise God. Zechariah chapter 8 and verse 12. As we worship God with our seed today, this shall become your testimony. The Bible here says, For the seed shall be prosperous, the vine shall give her fruit. And the ground shall give her increase. And the heaven shall give their due. And God will cause the remnant of these people to possess all these things. As you sow your seed today, this becomes your testimony. Please rise up on your feet with joy and gratitude to God in your heart. Take your seed, lift it up to God. Present it to him yourself as you bless him. As you thank him for putting seed in your hand. Thank him for giving you the power to lay it down. Thank him for causing your seed to prosper. Give him praise and glory and magnify his name. Father, we thank you today and always. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Please keep your seed lifted. Lord, we have come today with financial seed in our hands because we love you. Let our seed be acceptable. To every title, Lord, according to your word, cause the devourers and let the windows of heaven remain permanently open. To every giver, no more lack. Amen. Welcome to your season of financial abundance. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Please open your eyes, take your seat comfortably, cast your seat joyfully as you welcome the Faith Tabernacle Choir to minister.
the Lord Jesus a big hand of praise this morning hallelujah please lift up your two hands to heaven everyone and give God thanks for bringing you into his presence this morning celebrate him for his good hand upon your life all through the past week
Lord, grant me an encounter this morning. Open up a new chapter to my life by your word today. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Among the blessings that come our way in a revival is outbreak of revelation. Because it's a season where we demonstrate our love for God. And when you are in love with God, you gain access to the deep things of God. It's a time we demonstrate our passion for God and for the interest of his kingdom. And with passion for God, you have unusual access to the deep things of the kingdom. If I call you no more friends, I'm no more servants, but friends, because all that I have heard of my father I have made known unto you. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. What God has in store for them that love him, but God has revealed it to us that love him by his spirit. For the Spirit of God searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. May each one return with a definite encounter with the world today. Yeah. There are some encounters that stay with you for life. May the encounter with the world today stay with you for life. I've come that you may have life and have life more abundantly. Now, so God has ordained that we enjoy life like a watered garden and like springs of water whose waters fail not. I've come that you may have life and have it at its best all the times. Now, grace to connect with what will make that a reality in each one's life receive an encounter with such world today yeah. give the lord a big hand of praise and please you may be comfortably seated amen by the prompting of the holy spirit And by the word of God, we have entered into another season of revival. Amen. Amen. Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 2. Oh Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known thy power. In wrath, remember mercy. The midst of the year is June and July, with five months on one side of the divide, five months on the other side of the divide. The midst of the year. Remember, I said in the midst of the years, so it's on annual basis. He makes it happen on annual basis. God's revival agenda is packaged for the midst of the years. And the revival is packaged with treasures for every engaging believer. 
which includes the clearing off of all everlasting mountains and not perpetual his on our path. The insurmountable mountains built by the devil against our destiny. It's also ordained to launch us to our high places. Habakkuk chapter 3, 17 to 18. As we keep engaging, rejoicing. My God. I shall rejoice in the Lord. I shall joy in the God of my salvation. Then he will come in. I'm not doing it mournfully. I'm doing it rejoicingly. God only responds to cheerful believers in their engagement. So you have to be cheerful to be among the people that will belong to their high places. Amen. Ever smiling in season and out of season. Hallelujah. My God. Amen. <laughs> Somebody asked me many years ago, Brother David, do you ever have a problem? See, maybe it came, I didn't know. <laughs> maybe it came, I didn't know. Thy words were found and I did eat them. And they became the joy and rejoicing of my heart. Every genuine encounter with the words tears joy. Loaded with amazing treasures. Now, watch. One of the blessings in redemption is God going forth for the salvation of his people. Verse 13. Thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people. So it's a season of harvesting souls into the kingdom. Verse 13 of it. Praise God. Now, um, verse 13 is before verse 17 and 18. Now, how much you engage with this harvest time agenda is what determines how high he will launch you into. My God. The word says, They that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. Daniel 12, 3. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever. That's the connection. He came forth for the salvation of his people. And revival is a move of the Spirit of God among his people. Can I hear your amen? amen. Which pours signs and wonders. Joel chapter 2, verse 28 to 30. In the last days, I have poured my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Young men shall see, shall see visions, and then um, it shall come to pass after, I mean, and upon thy servants and upon thy handmaidens in those days will I pour out my spirit. So it covers all classes of people of all ages, all ages, all classes. A revival does not stop at the altar, it goes down to the pews, covers everybody. There were 120 in the upper room, including women and perhaps children. The Holy Ghost fell upon each of them like cloven tongues of fire on each of them, each of them not only the 11 apostles that remain on every one of them so a revival is a move of the spirit among God's people that covers all classes and all ages of believers old, young, boys girls, adolescents my God now in the house of Cornelius in Acts 10, 24, he gathered all his kinsmen and all his near friends. Now, chapter 44, I mean, verse 44 of the same chapter, and the Holy Ghost fell on all of them. All, all of them, all of them. A revival is the move of God among God's people, covering all ages, all classes, literate and illiterate. It doesn't matter who. Glory to God. Thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people. My God. Now, that was in the last days. Now, in the last days, it shall come to pass that the mountain of the Lord shall be established upon above all mountains. <laughs> Amen. And all nations shall flow into it. So, a revival is ordained to lead to influx of masses of people into the house of God. Isaiah chapter 2 and verse 2 and 3. Micah chapter 4 and verse 1 and 2. So, we must understand the purpose of a revival so as to maximize our place in it. Thank you. 
Thank you, Jesus. So it's not a revival if there is no massive salvation of souls. It's not speaking big grammars and great teachings and people applauding and clapping. That, that's not revival. Revival manifests itself in signs and wonders and a massive salvation and ingathering of souls into the kingdom. My God. We are in the midst of the year in another wave of a revival, a move of the Spirit among God's people that hosts an enviable future for every engaging believer. You will not be left behind. Yeah. You shall 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 not be left behind. Yeah. Our teaching series for the month is captioned Commanding Signs and Wonders from the platform of a revival. We are on part one of it today. A revival. Is ordained the platform to put believers in command of signs and wonders. And how? As they engage in the demand of a revival to see souls saved and brought into the kingdom. He empowers us to gain command of the supernatural. Matthew 10 verse 1. He called his two disciples and gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. We are empowered to go forth and be in command of signs and wonders as we go. He gave them power to go. And so they went and preached. He says, as you go preach and heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead. Freely you are given, freely give. Verses 7 and 8. So, it, 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 we are empowered to command the supernatural by going. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall be my witnesses. You will be on the go for me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the uttermost part of the world. We are empowered to be on the go for the salvation of men in a revival. And how much we return with the time is our placement. In the ultimate. How much will it come with? It does not reward effort. It rewards results. You gain 10 more, my God. Now have the authority over 10 cities. You gain 5 more, have the authority over 5, five, 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 five cities. No explanation is tenable for promotion. No explanation is tenable for promotion. God does not reward efforts made. He rewards results obtained. Mark 16, verse 15 and 16. I mean, to 17, the Bible said, Go to all the world and preach the gospel. Whosoever believes and the baptized shall be saved. Whosoever believes and shall be damned. And this sign shall follow. This sign shall be at the command of those who are on the go. This sign shall be at the command of those who are on the go. In my name, they shall cast out devils. Amen. They shall lay their hands upon the sick. If they take a deadly person, they shall not hurt them. And they went forth and preached everywhere. God also walked with them, confirming their command with signs and wonders. That's how to be in command. It's not in sitting down and being a regularized, chartered member of a church. Who comes to the church before the pastor comes? It doesn't matter. You are not on the go. You are not a candidate for command. You are not a candidate to command signs and wonders. Interestingly, we can get on the go 
on the prayer altar. That applies to our senior citizens over pregnant women, nursing mothers. You can get on the go. Pray down the salvation of men. Pray for those foot soldiers who are on the field to have effect and impact as they go. God who sees your labor in secret, he will reward you openly. So every class of people in the body of Christ has an opportunity to engage with the demands of a revival for their own dramatic change of story. Everybody. Everybody. No one here shall be left behind. <laughs> Only those who are in, on the go for Jesus in advancing his kingdom and promoting his kingdom are entitled to command the supernatural. It's not for decoration, it's for manifestation. It's not for decoration, it's for contribution. We are empowered to command the supernatural as we, we, we get committed to God and the interests of his kingdom in practical terms. In practical terms. In practical terms. Thank you, Jesus. So we expect massive salvation of souls in this midst of the year. As we get on the prayer altar on daily basis, as we get on the go for Jesus, to our neighbors, our colleagues at work, our customers, our clients, our colleagues in business, just anybody, everywhere, And then we see God launching us into our high places. Can I hear your loudest amen? amen? So when Peter referred to that Joy chapter 2 in Acts uh, chapter 2 verse 14 to 17, he was talking about the last days, the appointment of the Spirit. And the first manifestation is 3,000 souls came into the kingdom. So every revival has massive salvation of souls as its primary validation. Primary validation. And then we saw signs and wonders brought 5,000 to Christ. As chapter 4 and verse 4, the healing of the man at the beautiful gate add 5,000 souls to the church. Signs and wonders went on the rampage. And then, more of men and women were added to the church. Acts chapter 5, verse 12 to 14. And then, again, the number of disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem by the word of God. Acts chapter 6 and verse 7. And then suddenly, almost the whole city came together. Now that tells you the primary purpose and mission of a revival. It is massive in gathering of souls into the kingdom and into church for their preservation. So we are not being ambitious. We are just connecting with the purpose of God for a revival. Thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people. <laughs> Thou wentest forth for the salvation of their people. So he goes forth in the revival for the salvation of people. Amen. For the salvation of people. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's our mission for this month of June and July. And we have christianed it operation by all means. For he's gone forth for the salvation of his people. Yes. Go forth for the salvation of his people.
for the Jews I became a Jew that I may win the Jews to those without the law as without the law or do not without the law to Christ praise God that I may win them that are without the law I became all things to obey to obey all means I may win some salvation of souls yes, is God's primary mission in the revival my God restoration of those who have gone away is God's primary purpose bring them back to light for a revival so we are not being ambitious talk less of being over ambitious it's the mission and God wants to not, not to move us from growth to flow and all nations shall flow Flow, 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 flow. Before this season is over, we are going to be in a flow. We are going to be in a flow. Mark it. Some will come to you and say, I must go to church with you today. I must. Whether you put me in the boot or not, I must go with you to church today. I, I slept in the night and I saw me in that church. And I know you are going there. So I must go with you yes. today. Yes. You wake up one morning and ten men will be waiting at your door. Amen. You will go to hire a boss. Amen. And put them inside. Amen. That's it away. So it's not about going there. Look, we are being in a revival in this church. But June and July, special revival time in heaven's agenda. We are going to give it all it takes. Amen. 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 Now, don't misunderstand me. I'm not a church growth crazy pastor. I'm a kingdom advancement addict. I've been in it long before I became a pastor. So it's not about being a pastor. And then, uh, I wanted to give Jesus a trek of 140 kilometers. 170. Was for follow up, 170 kilometers. We were going to go and there was no resources to go. I said, man, it's not a problem. Anybody, normal person, can trek 10 kilometers and rest. Another 10 kilometers and rest. We stop only 17 times, we'll be there. In truth, sir, then somebody came and knocked the door and brought a seed. I wasn't too happy. I wanted a walk with Jesus. I was not a pastor. Look, it is where your heart is that defines where your investment is. I don't have anything to hide from Jesus. My strength, my vigor, the little sense he gave me. I put everything together to buy my way into his heart. Things are working for me. My God, every day, every day. 70, 60 days, I've never been. I've never borrowed. I've never stolen anybody's item. And I'm blessed. There are many in this church on that wavelength today. Many in this commission at home and abroad that are operating on that wavelength today. May you join this club this time. <laughs> I've never borrowed yet I've never lacked. My God. Since he vaccinated me with Matthew 63, you know what I call it? Vaccination. Not uh, the fake coronavirus vaccination. <laughs> People that took it are under stress. I mean the vaccination of the truth. Yes, sir. Since he put that thing on my shoulder. I've been rolling. I'm rolling. I'm rolling. Today, may you receive your vaccination of revival. May you receive your vaccination of revival. It will keep you bouncing for Jesus all the days of your life. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Therefore, from June 7, which is tomorrow, to July 34, which is Saturday, we shall be all out by all means to see so saved in their multitudes. Can I hear your loudest amen? amen. Our senior citizens will be out there on the prayer altar in their own time, in their own places. And those who are able to gather, 
where we are gathering at the various locations around the city. You pray for one hour and you go back home and enjoy your life. All the young men like me, we hit the street. We pray in the morning, we hit the street in the afternoon, we get people into the kingdom and we return rejoicing. Glory to God. I said, who morosely? Anybody. Under 75 is a young man. Because Abraham saw a vision at 75. And your young men shall see vision. God never lies. So you're a young man. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. You know why I'm still on the go? I'm a young man. Hallelujah. I'm a young man. Praise God. I'm a young man. So get ready. Don't look 80 when you are 30. Don't look 90 when you are 40. I say the Lord bless you. Lord bless you. Because you'll be here till 120. Let God have a reason to keep you here. By being a value adding member of his family. A value adding member of his family. That's what the Lord will make of you. Amen. Give the Lord the biggest hand of praise. Amen. Operation by all means begins tomorrow, and that includes you. Can I hear your loudest amen? amen? We also have a by all means covenant soul winning targets with a list of eight names that you will prayerfully locate that you want to see step into the kingdom because God wants all men to be saved. The most unreachable, the most incommunicado person around you is a candidate for salvation. So put their names on. We'll give you a card of this, each one, and then begin to pray over them and asking God, for the wisdom required to harvest such souls into the kingdom. This apart from a general go to the field, through the sea, get people to receive the word. Can I hear your amen? amen? Because by all means, every winner is under a covenant obligation for two minimum established souls by the end of this operation. Two souls who we dance to the front with. August 1. 2021. We will do Harvest Thanksgiving. Hallelujah. What do I call it? Harvest, harvest Thanksgiving. The, your two minimum will join you. Amen. Your eight will join you. Amen. Your ten will join you. Amen. No usher can tell you to go back. Amen. You are just coming Amen. with your harvest. Amen. We will line the harvest up on all the eyes. Yes. Can I hear your amen? Hallelujah. Your harvest will be there. Amen. Praise the Lord. Listen to this. There is no one that engages with God without proofs. When your cloud is full, your rain will fall. But to sustain your rainy season, you must keep filling the cloud. After every rainfall, the cloud clears. Another cloud must form before the next rainfall comes. It's a mystery. Ecclesiastes 11 verse 3. When your cloud is full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. Amen. Amen. And it's talking of stewardship. Cast your bread upon the waters. Can I hear your amen? amen? After many days to find them again. When your cloud is full, your rain must fall. After every rainfall, the cloud becomes clear. And another cloud must have to be formed before the next rainfall comes. That's why many people who were once in a rainy season have entered into drought because they stopped filling their cloud. You know why we have been in a rainy season in this church over the years? The same thing. Oh Lord, save the soul. Save souls. Oh Lord, establish them in the faith. Oh Lord, rescue them from perishing. Oh Lord, we've been doing that same 40 years. So there is no dry season. We keep forming the cloud and the rain has no trouble to, to keep falling. So you need to know it's not a once and for all engagement. It's a once and again engagement. 
It's a once and again what? It's a once and again engagement. 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 The rainy season will end where your engagement ends. So keep at it. This illustration may help. There's a man called J.C. Penny. J.C. Penny was an addicted tighter. At a point, God was blessing and blessing and blessing. So he began to rationalize his tight. And then suddenly, the rainfall began to dry up and dry up until he entered into a drought. And the business went bankrupt. Oh God, oh God, I bind the devil. Wait, wait, wait. He said, no, remember where you have fallen. And get back. And he got back. And the rainfall began. The rain season began. Where once beaten, twice shy. That's what it is with your engagement with God. You keep engaging and engaging to sustain your rainy season. You keep engaging and engaging to sustain your rainy season. Can I tell brethren here, saints of God, we have never had a dry season in our ministry. Same thing. Same thing. Same thing. Same thing. I sent to the press to print 500,000 copies of every title of tracks that we have. A week. A week. Now, you know the millions. It is his money. It's for his purpose. And we are everybody. You say you have got one. Get another one. You will get and get until you get to the kingdom. <laughs> you will get and get until you get to the kingdom. That's it. And we've been doing that since 84. Consciously. Consciously. You don't have to suffer a drought. Take responsibility. Take responsibility. Now, I can tell you this. Your engagement this time will level out all those seemingly insurmountable mountains in your life. Yeah. They will clear off as if they never existed. Yeah. You will sing a new song. Yeah. You will sing a new song. Yeah. And what more? As you get greedy in your pursuit of soul, it will take you from far behind to the far in front. It will launch you to your high places. It will launch you to your high places. It will launch you to your high places. You remember it that winner souls is wise and the wise shall inherit glory. This season must end the trace of every trace of shame and reproach in everyone's life. Nobody will dare to reproach you again. But they that torment to righteousness shall be that shall, as this forever. God will cause the giant in you to rise this time. So a revival season is ordained for the rise of giants in the body of Christ. By engaging with God's primary agenda for a revival, massive salvation and ingathering of souls. That's God's purpose. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lift up your right hand to heaven and ask God for grace. For maximum commitment to the demands of a revival in this awesome season. Ask God for commitment. Grace to stay committed. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Now, what's a revival? Among others, a revival is a celebration of divine visitation among God's people ordained for our supernatural change of story. A revival is a celebration of divine visitation among God's people ordained for our supernatural change of story. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. What will he do, sir? He will save. He will save. Again, the primary purpose of every divine visitation is the salvation of his people. He will save. Uh, who are his people? All souls are mine. He will save. All the unsaved by his visitation. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. 
he will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his law. He will joy over thee with singing. He will turn you to a celebrity. That's the meaning. But he will say, as you engage with that agenda of salvation, then he turns you to a celebrity. The giant in you comes alive. He will say, he will say. Now watch. Verse 19. Watch what he said. He said in verse 19 of that, he said, Behold, at that time, <laughs> so there's a shadow. At that time, as you engage with me, I will undo all that afflict thee. <laughs> and I will save her that whole time. And gather her that was living out. And I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. That's what a divine visitation offers. Eradicates shame and reproach and turn them to fame and praise. My God, I will undo all that afflict thee, all everlasting mountains, all perpetual hills that won't let you go. I will undo them. And get you fame and praise in every land where you have been put to shame. Now, look at verse 20. Amen. At that time, I will bring you again. So if you have lost anything, I will restore it. Yeah. Even in the time that I gather you, for I will make you a name. You can't make yourself a name. I will make you a name and a praise among all people of the earth. <laughs> That's an army of global phenomena. That's people rising from behind the background of life. Coming to the limelight of life. Like a dream of the night. At that time. At that time. At that time. I will launch you to your high places. That's the meaning. Now it's at the time of a revival. Merush Kanaba. Pradi and Nekoriano to. That's what it is. That's how it works. A celebration of divine visitation. What's a revival? A revival also can be defined as a spiritual awakening that causes the giant in us to rise. That's what we are saying. Ezekiel 37 and verse 1 to 14, the valley of dry bones, and there arose out of that valley a mighty host unto God. Every move of the spirit will always lead to the rise of giants. How do I know? How do we know when we're in a revival? A revival is set to occur when the heart of men begin to pant after God and the interest of his kingdom as a way of life. Panting after God and the interest of his kingdom as a way of life. David said, my heart panted after the O God as the heart panted after the streams of water. Amen. When shall I see you? My heart is longing for you. I want you more than I want anything else. Thank you, Jesus. My soul thirsted for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before thee? The heart of men panting after God and the interest of his kingdom. And they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. That's the blessing of it. So it's not for free. Seeking God is not at a loss. You shall not want any good thing. Thank you, Jesus. Seek you for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Number two, when walking the fear of God becomes our new way of life. You are, you, you are not living anyhow. You have just decided to change your approach. In the fear of God. Whatever God hates, you hate with passion. Whatever God loves, you love only savagely. The fear of God. They, Joseph said, but I fear God. See how much his life counted for the fear of God. That's what the revival does. It renews your spiritual life and my spiritual life. May this season fulfill this mission in everyone's life. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. 
Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. In a revival, in the move of the spirit, I will restore the years that the locust has eaten. The canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm, my great, my, which, my great army which I sent among you. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord. Your God that has dealt wonderfully with you and my people shall never be ashamed. Now verse 27, and you shall know that I am in the midst of thee, God in the midst of us, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. Now, God is saying, I will restore whatever the enemy has stolen. So in this revival season, everything you may have lost, whether in your health, anything you may have lost, in your business, your career, God is saying, I will restore. <laughs> to prove that I am in your midst. I will restore. I will restore. I will restore. Get ready. Your reign of restoration is falling this time. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. And what more we enjoy express answers to prayers. John 15, 16. You have not chosen me, but I've chosen you. That you should go forth and bring forth fruit. That your fruit shall abide. That whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, my God, he will give it to you. You get involved. In this agenda, whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, He will give it to you. You are on with me in this move. Whatever you ask of the Father, He will give it to you. Speedy answers to prayers. Can I hear your loudest amen? amen. Can I hear your loudest amen? amen? As mentioned before, you are on the go, you are in command of signs and wonders. You are set on the go in truth and in deed. He puts you in command of the supernatural because he knows many will never believe except they see signs and wonders. So as you go forth with confidence, say, Jesus sent me to you to proclaim a blessing on you and to show you how to sustain the blessing. And then you lead him to Christ in prayers. Do you want to be blessed? Oh yes, that's the answer. Oh yes, that's the answer. Some two fellows went to a place to witness, I mean, to, to share the gospel in Abuja. And they said, go away, go away, go away, go away. He said, you are blessed, you are blessed. Okay, come, come. Nobody in his right mind rejects blessing. Nobody, nobody. We got to a place in our outreach and nobody was gathering. It was a fallow place. And I began to proclaim the blessing. They started jumping out. Like chicken from the pen. They started jumping up. Amen. They were shouting amen from where everybody were coming. Amen. My God. Amen. The blessing was gathering them. Amen. Yes. We got 62 people saved. Amen. In that spot. God sent Christ to bless us. Not to condemn us. To bless us. That was the secret that led me in our outreaches and I saw 97,000 people saved within that period proclaiming the blessing and showing them how to retain the blessing by stepping out of darkness into the kingdom of light and they don't want the blessing to be lost so they want to be saved glory to God one man here has been in drugs for 25 years how many years? His two sons were with him in that business. Home was hell on earth. And he saw me under the bridge, proclaiming a blessing. He stood there. Amen. 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 He got home and told his wife, it was a Saturday. We are going to church tomorrow. The wife was surprised. He has never been in church for 25 years. We are going to church tomorrow. Because I met Bishop. He said we should come to church tomorrow. <laughs> he got here himself. The sons, everybody, they are members of this church today. Amen. By the power of the blessing of the gospel. Now, look at Romans 15, 29. So don't be a hardliner, you go to hell. Many of them are still, they are in hell already. So what's the harassment for? Now, Romans 15, 29. Now, hear what Paul said. I'm very sure that when I come unto you, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel 
of Christ. Go in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel is a dragnet of souls into the kingdom. Amen. Amen. The number of my sons and daughters that we got on the feed are here in this church today. I mean, having a nice time with Jesus by the gospel of blessing. By the gospel of blessing. By the gospel of blessing. But my friend, just, Jesus sent me to you to proclaim a blessing on your life. Amen. Okay, son. Be blessed. Amen. You and all that pertains to you. Amen. I command your head blessed. Amen. The work of your hand blessed. Amen. But listen. To retain the blessings, you need to step out of the kingdom of darkness mm. to the kingdom of light. Mm. And Jesus is the only way there. You want to be saved? Oh yeah. Bow your heads. That's a soul for Christ. That's what? A soul for Christ. Somebody's soul is changing. Amen. You don't need to quote Joshua. He doesn't know that. When you say Joshua, I think it's somebody by his house. And if that man is a very bad man, he won't listen to you again. <laughs> He's talking about Joshua. Is that not Joshua? He's a bad man, man. <laughs> he has never seen a Bible. So what is Joshua? He remembers why in his village. He was a notorious man. <laughs> hey, so this man knows Joshua. <laughs> God forbid. I can't listen to him. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Give the Lord a big clap of praise. Very quickly to our covenant day of healing and deliverance. And I like us to please recognize that Jesus is the ultimate of man's search on any health matters. Doctors will tell you only God can do this. And the Father judges no man is committed all judgment to the Son. They are simply saying, only Jesus can do this. Only Jesus can do this. And how is that so? There are many issues of health that are direct oppressions of the devil. And only Jesus has the answer. He went about doing good and healing all them that were oppressed of the devil. Only him has the capacity to set free anyone oppressed of the devil. No medical equipment under heaven can locate an oppression of the devil in a human body. No MRI, no scan, no latest development of technology can locate it. Only Jesus. Who is seated far above all principles and powers and dominion. And every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And it's made him to be the head of all principles and powers. For the church. To secure the dignity of the church. That's why he did it. Ephesians 1, 21 to 22. For the church. Only Jesus has the answer to oppressions of the devil. That relates to man's health and well-being. Only Jesus. Somebody said to have brain tumor. And only to bring out four terrible things from his mouth. And the brain tumor ceased. It's an oppression of the devil. You can do that brain surgery. It won't make a difference. Because there is something behind the saying. That no medical eye can find. Somebody's under stress and vomited a padlock with three keys. There is no MRI that can catch that. You can do it forever. You won't find it. So, you have come to your final bus stop as far as restoration of your health is concerned. Amen. Jesus is the final bus stop. Amen. Now, Mysteriously, he hears us principally by his word. 
He sent his word and what? He healed them. Psalm 102, 107, verse 20. And delivered them from all their destructions. He heals us and delivers us by his word. I said to that woman, you can't find anywhere where Jesus is said to have asthma, you know, uh, Caesar, autism. You don't have it. And he stopped. By his word. By his word. By his word. I said, I should take this communion. Is the white blood corpuscle that fights against strangers in your body. And then the Lushwa girls in India getting set for bone marrow cancer treat, bone marrow transplant, paying 200,000 naira every month for treatment. Now looking for money for bone marrow cancer. And Jesus from this altar healed him in India. Checked up on Tuesday morning, can't find it anymore. He heals by his word. A young man sat down here from Cameroon eating up by HIV AIDS. His body was growing fungi, green, like a tree. As the world was going forth, the spirit was vibrating, vibrating, vibrating. Went for a recheck. HIV free. I met him two years later in Cameroon. Now a minister of the gospel. Rescued from the dead. He heals us by his word. Now, the word heals us in four, through four main channels. One, the word of God is medicinal, so it kills. It's the bomb in Gilead. It's able to handle all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 22. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people restored? The world is God's balm in Gilead that's able to deal with all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Jesus went through their synagogues preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Matthew 5, I mean 4, 23. So the word heals all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. What's in the world? Himself took to infirmity. So it's a forgotten matter. It's already paid for. It's your right to live a healthy life. If you are saved, healing is your bread. Amen. Amen. And your heavenly father owes you that bread. If a man does not provide for his house, for the poor of his own house, he has denied the faith and it was an infidel. So God is obligated to keep you healthy. Can I hear your amen? amen. Number two, in case any part of anyone's body has been damaged, God's word repairs. I mean, God's word is surgical. It can repair every damaged part of our body. Woman, thou art loosed. And she came out of it and stood upright. Luke chapter 13, verse 12 and 13, and then verse 16 and 17. By the word, God repaired the spinal issue and she stood upright. Can I hear your amen? amen? By the word, God gave strength to the ankles and the knees of that crippled man at the beautiful gate. That's orthopedic surgery. He did it for free. Remember Genesis 2, 21 and 22? He opened up Adam, removed a rib, closed it back, and with that rib formed the woman. It's the master surgeon. He can repair any damaged part of anyone's body. Therefore, whatever has been damaged around anyone's life, whether through accident, through whatever, whatever is deformed, whatever is not in shape, 
in the name of the Lord Jesus that situation of stroke and paralysis in the name of Jesus whatever has been damaged that poor hearing that partial deafness that total deafness that partial blindness that total blindness whatever has been damaged I declare them repaired by the surgical power of the world this morning <laughs> remember in the beginning was the world and that world was the God and that world was God and God opened up Adam I'm the Lord I tell not. He's still opening up people today to repair whatever has gone damaged in their body. Therefore, every damaged part of your system is declared repaired today. The word of God is quick and powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It's able to pierce between the spirit and the soul. And it's a designer of the intents of the heart. It's able to get through to any part of anyone's body. God's word is surgical. It's able to refix you. Today, my God, by his word, is refixing every damaged part of your life. Yeah. We met a woman in Kampala in our meeting. And I was talking to them about the surgical part of the war. And so she went home. This woman was a victim of an accident where all the people in the bed could die. Only herself survived. But all her ribs were broken. So they put her in a kind of casket to keep the ribs together so that the pain would not be excruciated. Now, in the night, the master surgeon showed up. Because every word you believe, you have committed God to confirm it. Every word you truly receive and believe, you have committed God to confirm it. Yes, the master surgeon showed up and then took her by the chest. Woke up in the morning, free forever. That's a specialist orthopedic surgery. Fix the ribs. Life restored. Whatever has been stolen from your body, whatever has been damaged in your system, my God will fix it. I ministered along this line in one of our London conventions, and there was a lady there who had had a major problem on her waist. In the night, three fellows showed up, like in a the theater, and began to pull out some strands like spaghetti, yellowish, from our waist. Drawing them out, drawing them out, drawing them out. And they said, what time is it? 5.30. She woke up, and the time was exactly 5.30. Gone forever. The master surgeon will visit someone here. In case that damaged part is irreparable, amen. amen, because it's not there anymore. Like one of us here had our two ovaries removed in a surgery to save her life, and she wasn't married yet. Now, that was the end of giving birth medically. So there's not to repair. But it can be replaced. So if it's not repairable, it must be replaceable. If it's not there for repair, it will replace it. Well, call long story short. She was in one impartation service like this. Got pregnant immediately after. No ovaries. No ovaries. No ovaries. First son. No ovary. Second son. No ovary. Before she had her second son, we were in a meeting. And I said, hey, come on here. When are you expecting your second son? She looked at me. I said, now. And she became pregnant. Praise God. Amen. God who did the first one is not tired. He will do the second one. 
The two of them are graduates of Covenant University today. That is ovaryless sons. They are sons that were born without ovaries. You know why? He replaced the ovaries. Whatever has been lost in your life, my God will replace them. All those cases of SS turn A, he replaced their blood. He did what? Thank you, Jesus. Why? Because the word of God is creative. It's able to create what does not exist. It's able to what? Create what does not exist. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and he created them by his word. He's still a creator God. He's still creating things today. Whatever is not repairable in your life because it does not exist, my God, we create it. Yeah. And finally, God's word delivers. You know how? All our oppressions on earth are by the powers of darkness. And the word of God is light. And that light shines in darkness, and darkness cannot handle it. John chapter 1 verse 5. So when the word comes alive, darkness clears the way. That's how God delivers. Did you see how that man was delivered in Job 33 verse 21 to 25? His flesh was consumed in a way that could not be saved. And his bones that were not saved, they stick out. His soul drawn nigh to the grave. And his soul to the destroyer. But if there be a, an, an interpreter with him, a messenger, one among the thousand, who will show unto man the revelation of the world. My God. God will say, we must say unto him, say, deliver him from going down to the pit and find a ransom. So God's word delivers. It delivers because it's light. And the one holding you bound is darkness. So when light comes, darkness gives way. Can I hear your loudest amen? amen? So today in the name of Jesus, I decree your rescue from every oppression of the devil. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. I decree your rescue from every oppression of the devil. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Shortly, we shall be looking at um, we partaking of the mystery of the anointing from the altar. Fire from the altar. Watch. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. So every yoke of sickness and disease tormenting anyone's life right now, as this oil comes on your head, I declare them all destroyed. For anyone without any sickness in his life, with this mark, no arrow of the wicked will hit at you anymore in your life. The decree of heaven over your life will remain, touch not my anointed. Everyone that planned your evil we go into it themselves. In the name of Jesus Christ. And so shall it be. Thank you, Father. Lift up your right hand and give God thanks and praise. Give God thanks and praise for his word. Give him thanks and praise for his word. In Jesus' precious name we are praying. Amen. Very quickly this morning, there are people here that need to just say, Jesus, save my soul. Jesus, forgive my sins. Jesus, make me a member of your household. Jesus, rescue me from the path of darkness. You want to be free, you want to be saved, you want to be born again. Wherever you are this morning, please stand to your feet. I'd like to pray with you. God bless you. God bless you. Jesus, save my soul. Stand to your feet. Until a man is saved, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Stand to your feet. Wherever you are, you want Jesus to save your soul. Stand to your feet.
God bless you. God bless you. Many more are standing up. Wherever you are, get up on your feet right now. It's your chance for a change of story. Don't miss it for anything. God bless you. Some people are standing up to join us. Join us quickly right now. I pray for you right there where you are. I pray for you right there where you are. So stand to your feet and step out of darkness into light. Now, at the same time, there are other people that need to rededicate their life to Christ. They are like a broken up branch. I mean, it's, it's dead. It's only a matter of time. You want to reconnect back quickly to your source, to your Father in heaven. Wherever you are, you want to rededicate your life to Christ, please stand to your feet. You want to rededicate your life to Christ, please stand to your feet. You want to rededicate your life to Christ, please stand to your feet. You want to rededicate your life to Christ, please stand to your feet. You want to rededicate your life to Christ, please stand to your feet. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus, please stand to your feet. And God bless us to do. Now, everyone standing, both for the first call and the second, please bow your heads for prayers, wherever you are, and then lift up your right hand to heaven. You can stop filling those forms for now. And pray this prayer of faith after me. Say after me, Lord Jesus, forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day you rose again that I may be justified. Right now, I proclaim you as my Lord and my Savior. And I believe my sins are now forgiven. By your help, I will serve you all the days of my life. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Thank you, Jesus, for restoring me back to the faith. Thank you, Lord. I'll never go back by your help. Keep your hands up. Father, Lord, your grace has brought these precious people in. Let the same grace preserve them. I cover each of you right now with the blood of Jesus. Remain covered to the day of his appearing. You never step back into darkness anymore. Amen. Grace to keep following Jesus all the days of your life. From triumph to triumph unto eternity. Receive it right now. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Congratulations. 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 Please complete those slips and pass them on to those church officials around with you. Um, very importantly, we have Believers Foundation class every Monday in over 740 locations across Lagos and Nota. Please avail yourself the opportunity and be one of them. It holds every Monday, 6 to 7.30 p.m. And you go for only two Mondays, then you're empowered to live a triumphant Christian life. You'll never miss it forever in Jesus' name. Good news. 590 people were baptized in water yesterday. 590 people went through water baptism yesterday. Another good news. God has planted. We got an update right here. 11,980 new home sales in this church this year. Come and give the Lord a big hand of praise. In the same vein, you'll be receiving great ovations every step of your life this year. You'll be hearing congratulations everywhere you turn this year. For all those who have opened their doors to accommodate the ark of God, your life will never run dry of testimony. For all those precious people who are now serving ministers and assistants and secretaries, the oil on your head will never run dry. And the proof of your stewardship shall no longer be hidden. God shall be rewarding everyone here openly. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please let the stewards uh, get out to, the all, to their locations of stewardship. And then, please know, revival time is work time. It's an ever-demanding time. So lift up the hands and hang down. 
and the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet lest that which is lame be turned out of the way but rather it be healed it's work time but the work is worth it for the demand of the present cannot be compared with the weight of glory that's in store for you therefore we are going to be embarking this week to give it a great start in both morning raid and evening raid give the lord a big hand of praise So behind him, having morning prayer raids and time 8 to 10 a.m. And that is a forum for all of our senior citizens, all nursing mothers, and all those on the line for miracle jobs and for all members on their way to work and from work. And then we have also morning and evening gospel ray for young men like me to get out on the street and share Jesus with others and with confidence in God to command signs and wonders in their behalf. Praise the Lord. Those going to work will be doing that as they go to work and when they're coming back, they'll be doing that when they're coming back. If they have break time in their environment, they reach out to one or two people out there. All souls are mine who will get them on. And evening raid is 5 to 6 p.m. for the prayer time. And evening raid for all of us in our respective places is all the time. Can I hear your amen? amen. You will laugh. Amen. My God will make you to laugh. Amen. Shame and reproach will be far from your dwelling. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, you know the good news? Every fruit bearing branch. Is ordained to remain fit because the laborers are few. Therefore, by this your engagement, throughout the days of your life, which are very many, if Jesus tallies, you will not know the meaning of sickness and disease. <laughs> Thou shalt serve, I shall bless, and I shall take sickness away from you. Because I need more people to serve me and there are very few. I'm committed to keep you fit. Every brand that bears fruit, he purges that it may bring forth more fruit. It keeps fit. It keeps fit. You shall remain physically, emotionally, materially fit for his assignment. Therefore, the content of this vessel is declared the holy anointing oil Amen. and is sent forth to destroy every yoke of sickness and disease Amen. and every oppression of the devil on anyone's life. Amen. It's happening today. Amen. So it shall come to pass in that day. In that day. Today is that day for you. Amen. Whatever is not curable will be repairable. Whatever is not repairable will be replaceable. Yeah. And whatever defies all those measures will be rescuable. Yeah. My God will bear you out of every oppression of the devil today. Yeah. And so shall it be. Yeah. Lift up your right hand and begin to say enough is enough. Tear that challenge. Pick it up. Tear that challenge. You aspire today. Today's your expiry date. High blood pressure, hypertension, cancer. Today's your expiry date. Heart problem, liver problem. Today's your expiry date. Today's your expiry date. Migraine, waste pain. The root of barrenness, impotency. Today is your expiry day. Heart palpitation, growth in the body. Today is your expiry day. Jesus precious name 
we have prayed. Please engage your heart with faith and walk in your liberty. Today marks the end of that plague in your life. Your testimony is established this week. Your next checkup will show that you are free at last. A touch in the bowl and on your forehead and pass it under one second. Quickly, 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 quickly. And do that with fervency of faith. Do that with violent faith. I'm free. It shall come to pass in that day. Today is that day in my life. I'm free at last. I'm free forever. I'm free at last. I'm free forever. Call that thing by name and free yourself from his harassment. Call that thing by name and free yourself from his harassment. Call that thing by name and free yourself from his harassment. Your miracle is instant. It's taking place now. It's already happening. 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 You are free at last. You are free forever. You are free at last. You are free forever. You are free at last. You are free forever. The violent take it by faith. 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 But if you use God's side, but by faith. Take it by faith. Take it by faith. The violent take it by force. That political man got his own by force. Take it by force. The force of faith. Take it by force. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody take it. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. It's your turn. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. If you are partaking of that ministry, just stand to your feet while the choir leads us in praise. It's done. It's done. It's done. I hear the sound of the hammer of the Lord. I hear the sound of the hammer of the Lord. The sound of praise, the sound of war. The hammer of the Lord, the hammer of the Lord, the hammer of the Lord is marching on. I hear the sound of the hammer of the Lord. I hear the sound of the hammer of the Lord. The sound of
to your high places. Everything is answering in your favor from now. As you remain committed to favoring the matters of his kingdom, you will never run out of favor in your life. Please, if you got your copies of the material circulator, leave them up right now and ask God to make you a bona fide partaker of this awesome wave of glory that's taking place between June and July. Hallelujah. Ask God to make you an awesome partaker of the wave of glory taking place in this midst of the year. Come on now, take it. Take it. Take it. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen. I decree the breath of the Holy Ghost upon these materials to grant every one of us insight and revelation. To make a full proof of this season, Amen. operation by all means will deliver in your life. Amen. Now, all that believe and care to say it, why not? What you don't declare, God cannot confirm. Lord, I believe you for minimum two established souls into your kingdom and this church in this prophetic season. If you want to, say it. Lord, I believe you for minimum two established souls in this church, in this prophetic season of June and July. Minimum two that will stand by me on August 1 Thanksgiving, Harvest Thanksgiving, to celebrate your faithfulness. Lord, I believe you for it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, if you believe him for it, we have this a card by all means covenant so many targets you have to fill out eight names here that you trust God to, to bring into the kingdom and establish in the faith through you and according to the parable of the sower minimum two of them shall stand many of you will have eight of them with you you not only have eight they will also have their own they will all come to you their own they, they will be your children those ones they are bringing will be your grandchildren now your grandchildren in the city will also bring their children Amen. and so you have great grandchildren Amen. that's what the Lord will make this season to be in your life Amen. many wake up in the morning and say we will go with you today yes. we must go with you today by all means Amen. that shall be your experience Amen. it's done Amen. no breakdown Amen. all through this season Amen. and all through the days of your life let us share the goodness of the Lord in fellowship, everybody. God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Welcome to 2021, your year of supernatural turnaround. Therefore, expect turnaround to become your new identity from henceforth. Amen and amen. Keep rejoicing. It's harvest season. Carry the joy of harvest along with you. Thank you, Jesus. Congratulations. If you came in after the worship offering was received in the second service, there are officials around the altar and various exits carrying late offering tags. Do well to drop your offering as you go and be blessed as you do. If you want to share your testimony in the third service, take your Bible, take your bag, and anything you came to church with, and rush to the honor entrance, that is the entrance behind where the pastor is seated, and share your testimony to the glory of God. Again, if you want to share your testimony, rush to the honor entrance, and share your testimony to the glory of God. Choir. Of the 
Let the saints of God give Jesus a big, big hand of praise. 
And um, please, you may be seated. Please listen attentively to the following faith tabernacle announcement for this third service. Number one, good news. World of Faith Bible Institute will be June edition holds between the 14th and 25th of June 2021. You can do better for Jesus. This is a two-week intensive course and shall hold in Kenaland and at all our Wobi training centers in Lagos and Ota. Know that BCC holds in all training centers, while LCC holds at Kenaland and other selected training centers. For registration and other information, please visit the link display on the screen. Number two, good news. Our June edition of our three-day specialized certificate course comes off from Monday the 28th to Wednesday 30th June 2021. It shall be featured feature breaking marital siege. Everyone on the line for miracle marriage and everyone desiring a, each free marriage should keep this divine appointment with God. God shall be breaking every marital siege and releasing wisdom for marital bliss. Kindly note, that both registration and payment for this course is online. For registration and other information, please visit the link displayed on the screen. Number three, Believers Foundation class holds this Monday for all new converts. Please note that you are to attend for two Mondays only. Every new convert concerned will be contacted by SMS on the location close to where they live. Time is 6 to 7.30 p.m. Number four, Covenant Hour of Prayer hosts tomorrow, Monday to Saturday, both here in Kenaland and in all our Covenant Hour of Prayer locations across Lagos and Ota. Time is 5.30 to 6.30 a.m. Number five, praise the Lord. Our midweek communion service hosts this Wednesday, 9th June 2021, both here in Kenaland and at all Sonar Fellowship Centers in Lagos, Ota, and Environ. Remember, we shall be waiting on the Lord in the fast and break with the communion. Time is 6 p.m. Number six, winners, satellite fellowship. Our house to house fellowship holds this Saturday at our WSF centers across Lagos and Nota. Time is 5 to 6 p.m. Remember, our cell growth and replication agenda is still on. Ensure you are part of this by bringing people into your cell. If you desire to host a WSF location in your house, Please indicate through your same minister, and as you host the act of testimony in your home, expect continuous inflows of testimonies into your life in Jesus' name. And finally, number seven, praise the Lord. Next Sunday at Faith Tabernacle, 13th June 2021, shall be our covenant day of restoration. It shall also double as our special monthly communion service. It shall be a service to be much remembered. Therefore, come expecting encounters by the word and the mystery of the communion table. Service schedule is as usual. Jesus is Lord. Give Jesus a big hand of praise. In this third service, it is testimony time. Declare loud and clear my breakthrough time. Please let's listen to the following documented testimonies and you shall be the next to testify. This first one is captioned, Healed of Earache and Dripping. My one-year-old baby had an earache and it was dripping. We came for the miracle service. It occurred to me that I could drop the blessed oil into her ears. As I tried to, the devil reminded me that the doctor said nothing should be put in her ear. However, I shut down the devil and applied it. Lo and behold, immediately the dripping stopped. I return all the glory to God. And the testifier is Emmanuel Daniel. This second one is captioned, Siege of Death destroyed via prophetic declaration. For three years, my family was plagued with the spirit of death. 
within this time i had lost my father an elder brother when the year began my mother fell ill and i told her she was not going to die i took her to the zonal center and told her to lie down on the ground while i went for outreach when i returned she was fine are you clapping for jesus the following sunday i brought her to church for the miracle service while bishop david Oedeko made declarations he pointed in her direction and said that person that thinks he can shoot an arrow against your life will go for your sake this week lo and behold that same day the person died now my mother is hale and hearty i return all the glory to god and the testifier is onye dikachi rejoice put those hands together for the lord because you are next in line for your testimony it's my privilege this morning to welcome some people who are worshiping with us for the very first time on a sunday service like this here at the faith tabernacle if today is your first time worshiping here at the faith tabernacle on sunday please could you kindly rise up to your feet church put those hands together for the lord as they rise up everywhere please remain standing as our officials put into your hands a welcome pack and a slip for you to feel remain standing as they put into your hands a welcome pack and a slip for you to feel once you have received both the welcome pack and the slip you may be seated and commence feeling that slip in the course of this welcome once you get it please be seated and begin feeling the slip in the course of this welcome please note that every believer has an appointed place for the fulfillment of his or her glorious destiny scripture makes us to understand that we are to take heed to ourselves that we offer not our bond offerings in every place which we see but in the place which the lord our god has chosen in the same vein every believer has a god appointed shepherd over his or her life god's word says and i will give you pastors after my heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding therefore it is no confidence in the adventure of any believer that a number of us are here today because god wants to show you that this is the place that he has chosen for you without any doubt this is what god's one of god's ordained cities of refuge on the earth today where the avenger of blood cannot access us all that is required is that you get planted here and commit to obedience to every word that proceeds from this altar therefore i welcome you today to this mountain of signs and wonders can someone celebrate jesus expect divine visitations in every department of your life as you settle down here in the name of jesus welcome home church put those hands together again for jesus please all our first time worshipers could you just rise up to your feet for a word of prayer and blessing just pause filling those slips and rise up to your feet for a word of prayer and blessing please bow down your heads father lord i thank you for these precious ones that you have gathered here today we thank you O lord because you have never called the seed of jacob to seek you in vain therefore for each and every single one here the blessing of this house shall answer in their lives and if anyone has left any challenge back at home by the time they get back home that challenge shall be transformed into a testimony and if there is anyone here yet to be saved today the grace that bringeth salvation shall appear to each and every one 
in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Please, our first time watch pass, you can be seated. Ensure you complete filling those slips and hand them over to the officials closest to you. You are welcome. Church, celebrate Jesus. Right now in this service, it is offering time. So shall it be for us in Jesus' name. Say louder, amen. amen. Please properly package all your financial commitments right now and label it properly. If you have your tithes here today as well, 10% of God's increase upon your life, this is the right time to put it together. Label it very well and let's get set to worship God with our seed. Remember, if you are writing checks, you are writing in favor of faith, Tabernacle, Canaan land. You can take advantage of any of the electronic giving channels. You see that on the screen. And you can also give in checks. Praise God. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. The word of God says very clearly, Honor the Lord with thy substance. And with the first fruit of all thine increase. As you do that, it says, Your bands shall be filled with plenty, and your presses shall burst out with new wine. New open financial doors from this day forward will become someone's testimony. If you are the one, let your amen show it. Save me, I receive it. Please rise up on your feet joyfully gladly take your seed in your hand lift it up unto god personally present it to him bless his name magnify him worship him with your seed lifted up let your voice go forth as you present your seed unto him father we give you praise and glory in jesus mighty name we pray please lift your seed unto god father we have come today with financial seed to honor you let our seed be acceptable. To every tithe, cause the devourer to be rebuked and the windows of heaven open permanently for us. To every giver, no more financial dry season. Even this week, God will surprise you. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Say loud and believe in Amen. Please take your seat comfortably, cast your seat with joy as you welcome the Faith Tabernacle Choir to minister. turns to play Lord by your word nations will rebuild Lord by your word five Lord fair five thousand Lord by your word Sarah could conceive Lord, by your word, mountains turn to play. Lord, by your word, nations will repeat. Lord, by your word, five love, five thousand. 
hallelujah shall we lift our hands to heaven this morning and let's give glory to god and appreciate him the one whose word heals delivers and sets free will you lift your hand and your voice unto him this morning and just give the glory unto him give the honor unto him give the adoration unto him this morning is worthy of all the praise are you giving him quality thanks right now let your voice of thanksgiving be heard on high as you give glory unto god lord we thank you we bless you we glorify you we honor you we give thanks unto you we give praise unto you we give glory honor and adoration unto you blessed be your name and blessed be your name and blessed be your name and now right now begin to ask of the lord to speak to you this morning i've come here for an encounter with you lord speak to me today speak to me today speak to me today thank you mighty god and blessed be your holy name in jesus precious name we have prayed Amen. our father this morning we have come with voices of gratitude to give glory unto you thank you for all that you have done thank you for the blessing of being in your presence according to your word blesses the one you choose and cause to approach unto you that you may fill him with the goodness of your house we thank you O lord for bringing us again by your word change each one of us you have called today a covenant day of healing and deliverance therefore every sickness every disease every pain every discomfort every satanic oppression we declare that today marks an end forever in the name of jesus christ thank you father for it in jesus precious name we have prayed if somebody believe say loud amen. amen give jesus a big hand of praise and please you may be seated in his presence welcome to 2021 your year of supernatural turnaround that shall be your experience in the name of jesus christ for our sunday services this month we are looking at this series of teachings that is captioned commanding signs and wonders from the platform of a revival commanding signs and wonders from the platform of a revival and by way of introduction a revival is a celebration of divine visitation among god's people it is a celebration of divine visitation among god's people zephaniah chapter 3 verse 17 the lord in the midst of his people is mighty that's a revival the celebration of divine visitation in the midst of the people of god so every time we talk about the revival we are simply talking about the manifestation of god's arrival in the midst of his people god showing up in the midst of his people god manifesting his presence in the midst of his people that shall be your experience in this season god will manifest his presence towards you you believe it say loud amen i say you believe it say loud amen and in the calendar of god the midst of the year is ordained as a revival in god's agenda it is ordained as a revival season in god's agenda in habakkuk chapter 3 verse 2 god's word declares there it says revive thy work in the midst of the years in the midst of the years make known in wrath remember mercy so god's word makes it very clear that the midst of the year is the season of revival that means the months of june and july with five months on each side of the divine so we are in our season of revival which means the season of divine visitation and i believe that for each one of us in this prophetic season as we plug in appropriately god will surely visit you if you believe that that is you say louder amen. amen i say god will surely visit you amen. you believe that is you say louder amen. amen 
But furthermore, we discover from scripture that a revival is a platform for signs, wonders, and diverse miracles, among others. It is a platform for signs, wonders, and diverse miracles. You recall in the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, how that suddenly the Holy Ghost came down. God manifested in the midst of his people. And immediately we began to see the manifestation of signs and wonders. By chapter 3, verse 1 to 6, we saw the lame man at the gate called, called Beautiful jump up on his feet and was set free. By chapter 5 of the book of Acts of the Apostles, verse 12 to 16, we are told there how that mighty signs and, signs and wonders were done by the hands of the apostles and by verse 16 we are told that the sick were laid on the street so that the shadow of peter could pass over them and every one of them that came they were healed instantly in other words the season of revival is the season of signs wonders and miracles and for each one of us that shall be our experience in the name of jesus amen. you believe it say louder amen. amen i say you believe it say louder amen therefore you and i must ensure that we stay awake spiritually so as to make the most of this prophetic season don't watch the season come and go we must plug in being awake spiritually strengthening our hands to the plow in order to see the blessings of the season come in our direction for you by the time this season is concluding the hand of god would have decorated every department of your life now let us begin to define in more detail what really a revival is so let's ask the question what is a revival and we are going to look at two very important definitions number one a revival is a platform for divine visitation ordained for our supernatural change of position it is a divine a platform for divine visitation ordained for our supernatural change of position we saw earlier in the book of habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 2 he said revive thy work in the midst of the year and in the midst of the years make known and by verse 17 to verse 19 of the same habakkuk chapter 3 we saw the effect of the revival on those that engage in it he says although the fig tree shall not blossom it says and neither shall there be fruit in the vines and the labor of the olive shall fail and the field shall yield no meat and the flock shall be cut off from the fold and there shall be no herd in the stores he said all he says yet i will rejoice and i will join the god of my salvation he will the lord is will strengthen me and he will make my feet like hinds feet and i will begin to walk upon my high places so god made it clear that for those who are engaged in the revival there is a change of position that he has ordained for them for you in this prophetic season as you put your hand to the plow i see your own position changing supernaturally amen. you believe it say louder amen. amen i said i see your own position changing supernaturally amen. if you believe that is you say louder amen. amen i see your position changing supernaturally that means that where you were under before you shall be going over yeah. where you are at the bottom before you shall be at the top yeah. where you be, were forgotten before you shall be remembered yeah. that shall be your experience in the name of jesus christ yeah. whatever the story was before negatively concerning you it will be turning positively in this season yeah. if you believe it say loud amen yeah. number two a revival is a spiritual awakening that causes the giant in us to rise a revival is a spiritual awakening that causes the giant in us to rise according to scriptures we are made to understand in ezekiel chapter 37 verse 1 down to verse 14 how that there was this valley full of dry bones the bible said the bones were very dry and then suddenly the lord began to give instruction to ezekiel and he prophesied bones came to the bones flesh covered the bones and then skin covered the flesh and breath entered into them and the bible says that they arose an exceeding great army by verse 10 an exceeding great army and we are told that this entire valley of dry bones was the house of israel he said they said for we have no hope we are cut off for all of our parts there is no way that there is a turnaround available but he said now tell them 
I will cause them to come out of their graves. I will cause them to come out of their graves and bring them into their place of prominence. So according to scriptures, we are made to see that out of nothingness, God brings greatness in the season of revival. Out of nothingness, God brings greatness in the season of revival. So the revival season is a season that God has ordained for the giant in you and in me to come alive. And I pray that for each one, that shall be your testimony in this prophetic season. I said, that shall be your testimony in this prophetic season. Now in the book of Micah chapter 4, verse 1 and verse 2, the Bible tells us there, the picture of a revival. It said, the, Lord's, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be exalted above the mountains, and all people will flow into it. Out of Zion will come the Lord. The word of the Lord will come from, from Jerusalem. And what will happen in that season of revival? Verse 6 down to verse 8. Look at what the Bible says. It says there, it says, in that day, say with me, this is that day. Say it louder, this is that day. He said, will I assemble her that halted, and I will gather her that is driven out, and her that has been afflicted. He said in verse 7, and I will make her that halted a remnant, and her that was cast out far off a strong nation. And the Lord will reign over them in Mount Zion from henceforth even forevermore. They were, they were afflicted, buffeted, forgotten. But because they have engaged in the season of revival, he said, I will make her that was driven out a remnant. And then she that was cast far off, I will make her a strong nation. By reason of their engagement. For somebody here, I see the giant in you. Imagine in this prophetic season. You believe me, say loud, amen. I said you believe it say loud amen. amen you believe it say the loudest amen. amen that's what occurs so in the midst of every revival god awakens his people in their pursuit of him and as a result of that the giant in them begins to begins to arise now a revival is said to occur when the following takes place a revival is said to occur when the heart of man begins to pant after God and the interest of his kingdom. That's how you know whether you are in it or not. It is one thing for the season to come. It's another thing for you to be a partaker of the season. A man or woman that is a partaker of the season of revival will have their hearts panting towards God and the interest of his kingdom. In Psalm chapter 42 and verse 1, the Bible tells us there, Psalm 42 and verse 1. It says, As the heart panted after the water brooks, so panted my soul after thee, O God. And verse 2, it says, My soul thirsted for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My soul thirsted. So a man that is in a revival is a man or woman that has their heart panting after God and the interest of his kingdom. They are panting. They are continuously in pursuit. They are pressing after God. They are not people who need to be encouraged. They are in pursuit of him. Their hearts are continuously testing after him. Shout hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. That's a man in a revival. So if, to, to, if you are in a revival, it will show by your heart for God and the interest of his kingdom. Matthew 6 33 it said seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things like we have been told that others are dying to get shall be added unto you when you are in a revival you are in pursuit of God and the interest of his kingdom you are in pursuit of God you are sold out to it that's what made Paul to say for me to live is Christ that is my entire life is sold out to him for me to live is Christ. That's what made him say, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. And the life that I now live, I'm not living it by myself, but by the power of the Son of God who died and gave himself for me. I'm a sacrifice that is simply in pursuit of the heart of the, of the master. That is how you can tell a man or woman that is revived. When you are revived, your heart is panting after God. And the interest of his kingdom i pray today that by the encounter you are having upon this mountain 
your heart will be awakened to pursue after God like never before. Amen. Somebody believe it, say a loud amen. amen. Number two, a revival is set to occur when walking in the fear of God becomes our new way of life. When walking in the fear of God becomes our new way of life. God's word declares in the book of Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 39 and verse 40. Look at this very closely. It's a picture of what occurs in the midst of revival. And I will give them one heart and one way that they may fear me forever. For the good of them and of their children after them. And verse 40, it says, And I will make an everlasting covenant with them that I will not turn away from them to do them good, but I will put my fear in their hearts that they may not depart from me. A revival is said to occur when the fear of God becomes a way of life. And as a result of that, God said, I will not turn away from them to do them good. That is, good will be permanent for them as long as their heart is in pursuit after me by fearing me. That's why the Bible tells us in the book of Psalm chapter 112, verse 1 to 3, it said, Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, and that delighted greatly in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endureth forever. In other words, every time you see a man or woman that is in a, in, in a revival, they will always have a testimony of righteousness. There are men and women that hate what God hates and love what God loves. They hate what God hates and they love what God loves. Everything that is detestable to God is detestable to them. That's a man or woman that is in a revival. That's why the Bible makes it very clear to us. Come out from among them and be ye separate. And touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you. So those who are associated with God cannot be associated with sin. Every time you see a man or woman that is revived, you are seeing a man or woman that has the fear of God continuously guiding the steps of their lives. And I pray today that by the encounter you are having upon this mountain, the spirit spirit of the fear of the lord will begin to manifest in a new way upon you amen. somebody believe you say loud amen. amen i said somebody believe you say loud amen. amen very quickly this morning what is in a revival for us what is in a revival for us what does a revival have to offer you and me what is in a revival for us number one is that every revival is a spiritual launching pad for our high places every revival is a spiritual launching pad for our high places again in the book of jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 19 to 21 and i'll just take verse 19 and 21 for emphasis sake and out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry and i will multiply them they shall not be few and i will glorify them and they shall not be small and what is the effect upon their lives and their nobles shall be of themselves and their governors shall proceed from the midst of them and i will cause him to draw near you see, God makes it very clear that in the midst of a revival, there is the ushering of those that engage into their high places. We saw earlier in the book of Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse, 9, verse 17 to 19, that although the fig tree does not blossom and there is the labor of the holy fails and all of that takes place, he said, yet I will rejoice, I will joy in the God of my salvation. He said, the Lord is my strength. He will make my feet as hinds feet and make me to walk upon my high places. So he turns hard places to high places as we engage in a revival. So the revival season presents to us a platform, a launching pad for us to rise into our high places. That's why I know that in this season, there are many that are hearing my voice today. You will be launched to your high places. Amen. Somebody believe you say loud amen. amen. I said somebody believe you say loud amen. amen. Somebody believe you say the loudest amen. 
I said you will be launched to your high places in the name of Jesus Christ. That's what it is. It is a launching pad. It is a launching pad for you and I to ascend our high places. There is no aircraft, no plane that takes off without a wrong way. And in the wrong way, there is a lot of labor. If you have been on a flight before, you will discover the runway is where you see a lot of effort on that aircraft. The, the plane is, is, is generating a lot of effort. And then as soon as it takes off the ground, you begin to see ease. The ease starts as it takes flight. But before it can take flight, there must be a wrong way. A revival is your wrong way to take flight. You labor in the wrong way. But when you take flight, you begin to enjoy the ease of the flight. You are changing level without sweating. That's going to be somebody's experience here. If you are the one saying louder, amen. Number two, every revival culminates in supernatural restoration of the redemptive dignity of the believers. Every revival culminates in supernatural restoration of the redemptive dignity of the believer in zechariah chapter 3 we saw earlier in verse 17 the lord in the midst of thee is mighty what happens when he begins to demonstrate in the midst of his people in the season of revival as they engage with him verse 19 down to verse 20 Look at what God's word says. And behold, at that time, say with me, this is that time. Say it louder, this is that time. I will undo all that afflict thee. Somebody say it loud, amen. Yeah. And I will save her that halted and gather her that was driven out. And I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. Yeah. Somebody believe it, say it loud, amen. And at that time, say so again, this is that time. Will I bring you even again in that time? Say this is that time. That I gather you. For I will make you a name and a praise among all the people of the earth when I turn back your captivity before your eyes, said the Lord. What is God saying? In the season of revival, there is a restoration of dignity restoration of glory restoration of beauty restoration of honor i see that becoming somebody's experience in this season you believe it say louder amen i said you believe it say louder amen you believe it say louder amen, believe, say, louder, amen. that's what happens in the season of revival we had a testimony here some time ago as that man stood upon this altar and said he was going everywhere going wild for jesus and a man looked at him and called him a jobless one trouser preacher and he took it and kept engaging serving the lord and suddenly he stood there with two of his partners many of us may remember that testimony having you know this explosive breakthrough in terms of renewable energy not only for nigeria but across several nations of africa today the blessing of god speaking loud and clear from the one who was mocked because a revival is for the restoration of dignity and beauty can you imagine the one who mocked him what you'll be thinking now the story has changed because those who are engaged in the revival are not permitted to remain the same for you in this season of revival your story will change positively if you believe it say louder amen i said your story will change positively in joel chapter 2 verse 25 and verse 26 god's word declares there it says i will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army that I sent 
unto you. He said, and you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that I dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed. Restoration of glory by the hand of God. That shall be somebody's experience here. You believe it, say louder, amen. It doesn't matter what has been lost. The God that restores will decorate you openly. You believe it, say louder, man. Number three. Number three. We enjoy express answers to prayer in a revival. Express answers. John 15, 16. He said there, you have not chosen me. I've chosen you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. And whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Whatsoever. So in revival, you become a priority for answers. God responds to you. It gets to a point that he, as you are engaging, particularly in advancing the kingdom, he begins to answer things that you have not even asked. That will be somebody's experience here. Have you not heard that God's word declares saying God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think? There are things that even when you have taught it, He will answer it because you are already engaging in the pursuit of His agenda. Have you not heard people say, I left my problems alone and I began to pray kingdom advancement prayers and God began to take up the matter that concerns me? For somebody here, the matter concerning you, God will take it up on your behalf. You believe me? Say loud, amen. We just had a testimony here this morning that was read to us. That individual said, she, the, 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 the father had, had pa passed on, brother died, and this siege of death was being instigated in the family. And then suddenly the mother took ill. He took the mother to the zonal center. He said, mommy, lay down here on the altar. And then took tracks and ran out to go and begin to win souls. By the time he came back, mother was already well. The siege broken. Why? You can't take up the matter of God and God not take up your matter. You can't take it up and God not take up your matter. Instead of struggling on that matter, took up the matter of God. That's what happens when you engage in a revival. You are advancing the kingdom of God right there on the harvest field and on the altar of prayer. And as you are doing so, God is answering what you are praying and even answering what you are thinking. The desires of your heart granted to you without effort. That shall be somebody's experience here. I said that shall be somebody's experience here. We have heard the testimony of God's servant and father. He said, he said to the Lord, Lord, will you not even wait for someone to ask before you begin to, 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 to respond? He said, there's a company of those that even before they ask, I will answer. Before they ask, somebody will be registered among that company here. If you are the one saying louder, amen. I said, if you are the one saying louder, amen. Number four every revival empowers believers to command the supernatural every revival empowers believers to command the supernatural in the book of luke chapter 9 in verse 1 the bible tells us that jesus sent his disciples forth and gave them power and authority and in verse 6 the bible tells us look at this very closely in verse 6 and they departed and went through the towns preaching the gospel and healing everywhere those who are committed to preaching become instruments of signs and wonders they become instruments of signs and wonders they become tools in the hand of god for the manifestation of signs and wonders in the book of mark chapter 16 verse, verse 15 it said go into all the world and preach the gospel and the bible says in verse 20 they went everywhere preaching god the, the lord also walking with them confirming the word with signs following they were preaching and god began manifesting through them so everyone that is committed to the advancement of the kingdom becomes an instrument of signs wonders and diverse miracles and that's what i see becoming each one's experience from now in the name of jesus and you can't be a channel of wonders and not be a partaker of wonders. There is no pipe that is passing water that can suffer test. If you are an instrument of the wonders of God, then you yourself become a partaker of the wonders of God. That's God's ordination. 
so you and i must understand that our engagement is what positions us to be commanders of signs and wonders he said these signs verse 17 of mark chapter 16 these signs shall follow them that believe so the signs don't follow people that are seated they follow those that are in motion when we are in motion for god in action for god when we are advancing the kingdom of god then we become commanders of signs and wonders i see that becoming our experience in the name of the lord jesus christ amen. you believe it say loud amen. amen i say you believe it say loud amen. amen therefore as you engage in this season expect to become a wonder to behold those who see you will see the wonders of god around you in the name of the lord jesus christ you believe you say loud amen. amen now today is our covenant day of healing and deliverance and everything that represents any sickness disease satanic oppression today marks the end of it forever amen. you believe you say loud amen. amen it's important for us to understand that the word of god is the balm in Gilead. It is the fundamental instrument through which God effects our healing and our liberty. In Jeremiah chapter 8 and verse 22, God's word declares, Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? The balm in Gilead is the word of God. In Psalm chapter 107 and verse 20, he sent his word and it healed them and delivered them from all their destruction. So the word of God is an instrument of healing and an instrument of deliverance. That is why I know that today as God's word is coming your way, liberty shall be permanently established. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I said liberty shall be permanently established Amen. but how does the world bring about our comprehensive freedom from sickness disease and satanic oppression what is in the world what does the world have to offer as it concerns our healing rights we look at four things here four characteristics four dimensions in which god's word operates to establish our healing and our deliverance number one is the word of god chaos the word of god chaos it is medicinal in proverbs chapter 4 verse 20 to 22 the word of god declares he says my son attend to my words incline thine ear unto my sayings let them not depart from thine eyes keep them in the midst of thine heart why for they are life to those that find them and they are health to all their flesh they are life to those that find them and they are health to all their flesh what that word health means is medicine so what physical medication is to those in the world is what the word is to those in the kingdom the word of god is our medication when we partake of god's word it penetrates our flesh you know you partake of medicine it enters into your stomach and then suddenly it begins to break down inside your stomach and biologically we are told that it begins to enter into your bloodstream and goes to the place where there were sicknesses and diseases and begins to render cure that's what happens when the word of god enters your spirit man it enters your spirit man and the spirit is the real man and begins to address the source of the sickness the source of the disease begins to make corrective you know corrective um you know touches in the various areas where they have been all kinds of assaults that is why a man can sit down hearing the word and walk out of affliction because the word of god is medicine shout hallelujah i said shout hallelujah the word of god is medicine we are told in the book of acts chapter 14 about a man from verse 8 down to verse 10 
the bible said that this man sat down a man in lystra and the bible says that he was impotent in his feet the word impotent means that there was no strength in his feet his feet were limp and the bible says that he began to listen and hear paul preaching and when paul saw that he had faith to be healed he shouted with a loud voice he said arise and immediately the one whose feet were limp whose feet had no power to carry him he had been hearing the word the word had been entering him the bible says he says stand up upright on your feet and the bible says he leaped up and walked why the medicine has been entering into his body administering strength into his legs he did not know what was happening but something was happening there are those who are hearing me this morning you don't know what is happening but i'm telling you something is happening the medicine of the world is entering into your system now and it's addressing that source of sickness now you believe it say louder amen suddenly he leaped up on his feet because the medicine had entered and inoculated him today by the word of the lord everything that may have afflicted you by this word today your liberty is completely established somebody believe you say louder amen i said your liberty is completely established in the name of jesus number two the word repairs the word repairs and that's because the word of god is surgical it is surgical it repairs it repairs we are told in the book of genesis chapter 2 verse 21 and 22 the bible tells us there it says and god caused a deep sleep to fall upon adam and he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed the flesh and with that rib the lord god had taken from him he made a woman and brought her unto him he removed a rib he made adam to sleep and he removed the rib and the bible says he made a woman somebody may be wondering how did god do this and most of us would think that god opened adam with his hand and removed the rib with his hand but that's not what god's word says john chapter 1 verse 1 to 3 in the beginning was the word the word was with god the word was god the same was in the beginning with god and all things including eve were made by him who is him the word so the opening of the flesh was by the word the removing of the rib was by the word the making of the woman was by the word so the word is god's spiritual scalpel it opens you without injury there is nothing to recover there is no there is no stitch that is left the word is quick it is powerful it is sharper than any 20th sword dividing between the soul and the spirit and it's a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of man the word of god is surgical it is surgical it is surgical and i have good news for you you don't have to be asleep for the operation to take place do you know that in the day and age we live in they carry out some operation with what they call local anesthesia where the person is awake and the operation is still taking place if man can do that god can do better than that god can do better than that right now as we are hearing the word i see divine surgeries taking place in the name of jesus some years ago we we're teaching along this line and then there was a man who was in the congregation and this man had an accident 10 years prior to that and by this accident he had some injuries on the neck and because of that injury he could not sit down without neck support because of the injuries that took place in the neck and he had been under that affliction for 10 years but he heard that the word of god is surgical and right there as he heard it the word penetrated his neck and corrected the damage instantly I don't know what may have been damaged in you but the surgical word of god is correcting it right now somebody believe you say loud amen i said the surgical word of god is correcting it right now in the
the name of Jesus. The word is surgical in nature. Number three, the word of God replaces. In other words, it is creative. It replaces. It is creative. It is creative. So that whatever is missing, the word has the ability to recreate. It has the ability to recreate by reason of the potency within it. Shout hallelujah. In Genesis chapter 1, we know the story of creation from verse 3 all the way down to verse 31. How did God create all things? By the word by the word and god said and god said and god said and god said and god saw that all that god said was good he created by the word so the word of god has the ability to recreate maybe they have taken something out of your body it has the ability to recreate shout hallelujah it has the ability to recreate it recreates that individual that which was that which is beyond repair it recreates somebody has perhaps a part of the body that has been removed like we've heard the testimony of the one who had the ovaries taken out and yet god gave two sons back to back without ovaries because god has the ability by his word to recreate we have heard about sickle cell being healed over and over again. And doctors will tell you from the medical standpoint that it's impossible for that to happen. Because the body itself is the one that is producing those sickle cells that make up the blood. So it means that for there to be a change of product, they have to be a change of factory. And the body is what they will call the factory of the blood. So it means that the word of God had to have recreated that body in order for it to begin to produce normal blood. It recreates. I don't know what may have been taken out of your body. I don't know what may have been completely malfunctioning beyond repair in your body. But I know that the word of the Lord is what you are hearing this morning. And because of that word, I see supernatural recreation. You believe it? Say louder, amen. amen. I see supernatural recreation. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And number four, the word delivers. The word does what? Yes, it's an agent of rescue itself. It delivers. It delivers. Remember what we saw in Psalm 107 and verse 20? He said he sent his word and it healed them and it delivered them out of all their destruction. The word of God delivers. It delivers. Now it's important for us to understand that today many of the things that we see as afflictions are not biological in nature. There are many things that are pure oppressions of the devil. Hello? Pure oppressions of the devil. You go to the doctor, they do every scan that they can scan. They do as many blood tests that exist and they cannot find anything. Why? Satanic oppression. In the book of Luke chapter 13, we come across a woman there. The Bible tells us, Luke 13, verse 11 and verse 12, about this woman. It says that the woman was in a particular condition. But Jesus diagnosed it correctly he said this woman had a spirit of infirmity for 18 years and she was bowed down together and in could no wise lift up herself that word in could no wise means that she there was no way for her to be straight and jesus saw and called him to herself and said woman thou art loose of this thine infirmity now doctors will look at it and say no 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 i diagnosed this as scoliosis no it's not scoliosis there was a demon holding her in that position there was a demon holding her. He said she had a spirit of infirmity. It held her bow down. And look at verse 16. We find Jesus giving us the description there. It tells us, it says, And not not this woman being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound. So what she had was not a condition of the spine. 
it was a rope from hell that tied her bound satan bound her these 18 years be loosed from the band this day so jesus was making it clear that what she was suffering from was not a medical condition it was a spiritual affliction that had its source in the devil there are cases like that but the word of god brings liberty it sets free it checks out the hold of the devil and brings you into total liberty that's got me somebody's experience here in the name of the lord jesus christ in job chapter 33 verse 21 to 25 he said there job 33 21 to 20 to 25 he said his flesh is consumed away that it cannot be seen his bones that were not seen stick out he said yea his soul drawing near to the grave and his life to the destroyers if there be an interpreter a messenger one among a thousand to show unto man his uprightness he said then god is gracious unto him and said deliver him from going down to the pit i have found a ransom and now his flesh becomes fresher than a child. He shall return to the days of his youth. By the word of the Lord, the shackles are broken. For somebody here today, by the word you are hearing, every shackle upon your life is broken in the name of Jesus. I said every shackle upon your life is broken in the name of Jesus so shall it be i said so shall it be so god's word coming your way today is his instrument through which your liberty is comprehensively delivered from this day onward sickness disease pain discomfort will never be associated with you again <laughs> lift your hand to heaven and give thanks to god for his word give glory to his name appreciate him and glorify him father thank you and blessed be your holy name in jesus precious name we have prayed somebody believe say loud amen. amen before we go any further this morning if you are here in god's presence and you have not yet surrendered your life to jesus that is the start of enjoying true liberty god's word declares that how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation it is salvation that begins the journey towards a man enjoying true liberty until you are saved you are not safe whatever you are you want to give your life to jesus and you want to become a child of god quickly rise on your feet now i want to pray with you all over this place quickly on your feet you want to surrender to jesus you want to become a child of god don't let anything hold you back quickly on your feet right now i want to pray with you also there are those who are here who need to rededicate their lives to jesus something has gone wrong along the way you know it and you need to have a new beginning you need to start afresh you want to return to jesus so you can be restored by him perhaps you are just in church but you are not truly in touch you are not even sure where you stand with god if you are not sure then you are not saved wherever you are you want to surrender to jesus and return to him so that you can be restored by him and have a brand new walk with the lord quickly rise on your feet right now you want to rededicate your life to jesus quickly all over this place on your feet give jesus a big hand as they rise everywhere it's worthy of praise and worthy of glory thank you jesus now for those who have responded to that call the first and the second please suspend filling your form for a moment suspend filling your form keep standing and lift up your right hand before god and just pray this prayer after me say after me lord jesus loud and clear lord jesus i come to you today i am a sinner i cannot help myself but i know you died for me on the third day you rose again just to save me jesus come into my life as my lord and savior take control of me from this day forward i will follow you no turning back I will serve you no turning back thank you jesus for saving me in jesus name amen keep your hand lifted father i thank you today for these precious ones they have responded to your call now give them grace to keep following you all the days of their lives thank you for doing it in jesus precious name amen and amen praise the lord congratulations it's a new day please complete your forms and submit it to the officials 
also be reminded we have a foundation class it takes place every monday you just attend two mondays tomorrow monday and the upper monday and you have a glorious foundation for a wonderful walk with the lord once again congratulations shall we rise on our feet everybody and give jesus a big big hand of praise as we receive our father Lord, a big revival rooted clap of praise amen thank you jesus thank you jesus if you have had an encounter in that message that word that came lift up your two hands and give god thanks lift up your two hands and give god thanks lift up your two hands and give god thanks in jesus precious name we have given thanks in the name of jesus christ we have given thanks without a vision the people perish we always need clear direction to make true progress. Now the midst of the year is ordained a revival time. And this revival time is to uh, have its expression a massive salvation of souls. Massive salvation of souls. Thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people. Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 13. So it's going forth is primarily for the salvation of his people. Get seated, please. And that's what happens in the midst of the year when he brings on board his revival agenda is primarily for the salvation of his people. So the Bible is not about preaching great messages. It's primarily about drafting multitudes into the kingdom. A revival is a move of the spirit among God's people. And that move, we saw it in the day of Pentecost. Its first expression was in drafting 3,000 people into the kingdom. Second, by signs and wonders, 5,000 were added to the church. Acts chapter 4 verse 4. And by manifestation of the supernatural, we saw multitudes of men and women added to the church. Acts 5, verse 14. And then in Acts chapter 6, verse 7, the number of disciples multiplied greatly. Acts 13, 44, almost the whole city gathered together to hear the word of God. That is the primary purpose of God in a revival. To draft multitudes into the kingdom. To bring the church into a realm of cities without wars. That's the purpose. And when purpose is not known, abuse, they say, it's inevitable. So a revival holds amazing benefit for us as believers. But God's primary purpose is the massive influx of souls into the kingdom. Massive influx of souls into the kingdom. Isaiah chapter 2 and verse 2 to 3. It shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be established above the hills and all nations shall flow. So we are moving from the realm of growth to the realm of inflow, inflow shall flow into the kingdom. Remember, in the last days, apartments was upon all flesh. So the purpose is massive inflow of people into the kingdom of God and into church. Very important. So every true revival 
is validated by a massive influx of souls into church. It's a platform for the rise of giants, but how would they rise? They that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. As the stars forever and ever. So, the giants will rise with their undying passion, through their undying passion to see souls saved and established in the kingdom. That's the platform for the rise of giants in the kingdom. And this makes so simple in the sense that every class of person can engage with it. The old and the young, the boys and the girls. Amen. Just anybody can pray. Anybody who can eat can pray. Anybody who can speak can pray. And so, Abraham could say, let's go and worship at the age of 114. And I was strong in prayers at 84. Moses prayed this way into heaven at 120. So anybody can pray. And he said, your labor shall be rewarded. So our labor in prayer is as vital as our labor on the field. So anybody can be involved. Pregnant women can be involved. Nursing mothers can be involved. Everybody. Boys and girls can be involved in inviting people to church. One nine year old Pharaoh said to the um, father, the bishop said I should come with my family and brought them. The mother said, and the small baby uh, directing us. He brought the father, brought the grandmother, and brought four of the siblings. Small boy. Small boy. So anybody can be involved. And you don't need my choice to invite anybody. That's why small babies in KHMS invite <laughs> their, their friends. Tomorrow is my birthday. Don't forget. Don't forget. You don't need maturity for that. So anybody, any level, don't let this midst of the year revival leave you behind. Don't despise it. Don't scorn it. Don't ignore it. You never know what you are missing. If you ever do. If you ever did. Get involved. Get engrossed. Get addicted. It always creates a future. It's on that note that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the next seven weeks is hereby declared our operation by all means. First Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 21 and 22 is the anchor scripture for that. To them, let's start from 20 if you can. First Corinthians 9. And unto the Jews I became as a Jew that I might gain the Jews to them that are under the law as under the law that I might gain them that are under the law. And to them that are without law as without law, being not without law to God, but under the law of Christ that I might gain them that are without law. Now, to the weak became I as weak that I might gain the weak. I made all things to all men that I might by all means save some. So it's a by all means operation. I'd like you to buy fully into this. Why? It's going to be your launching pad into your higher places. It's going to be your launching pad into your higher places. That is God's sole interest on the earth. God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. There was our belief in him should not be but have everlasting life. That is God's core business on the earth. That is the only work that God is doing on the earth today. Is working salvation in the midst of the earth. That's what he does. And we are his hands and his feet in getting the job done. So endeavor to make this season a time indeed with God. 
and watch how God will put you on the path of continuous and unending progress, glory, and color in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Well, please note that revival time is a spiritually demanding time. It's a spiritually demanding time. Second Chronicles chapter 15, verse 3 to 7. We saw how a revival broke out by a prophetic interjection. Now, for a long season, Israel had been without the true God and without a teaching priest and without law. But when they in their trouble did turn to the Lord God of Israel and sought him, he was found of them. Now, in those days, there was no peace to him that went out unto him that came in, but great vexation upon all the inhabitants of the earth. Nation was destroyed of nation, city of city, for God did vex them with all adversity. Now, be strong. Be ye strong, therefore, and let not your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. Your work, your work. Then they enter into covenant to seek the Lord God of their father with all their heart. Verse 12 to 15. And God gave them rest round about. Now the end result of this midst of the year will be round about rest for you and your household. Agai chapter 2 verse 3. Who among you saw the saw this house in our first glory and how do you see it now is it not in your eyes in comparison of it as nothing yet now be strong go Zerubbabel, said the lord and be strong go joshua the son of joseph the high priest and be strong all ye people of the land said the lord and walk it's revival time and i'm for i'm with you said the lord of hosts now for yet a little while and may come to the word that i covenanted with your fathers when they came out of Egypt, so my spirit remained among you. Fear ye not. Now, for thus said the Lord, yet once, it's a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth, and the sea, and the dry land. It's a mighty move of the spirit, but get up and walk out your own place in this glorious wave of glory. Wake up. Walk out your own salvation. Don't watch it. Get engrossed by it. Get caught up by it. Move with it. Why? Because it's the launching pad to your higher places. It's the launching pad to your higher places. And they that turn men to righteousness as the stars forever and ever and ever. So, step into this with a sense of mission as your launching pad to your higher places. As the season where God will level out all everlasting mountains on your path, all perpetual He's harassing your destiny as if they never existed. Wake up and work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For everyone shall be rewarded according to his own labor. And when God rewards, He rewards openly, openly. Your labor shall be rewarded openly. That's what He said. Therefore, in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, welcome to your launching pad that is leading you to your high places. Yeah. Your crown, another man will not take. Yeah. Your place will not be lost to another man. You will never forget this season in a hurry. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. If you got your copy of declaring operation by all means, lift it up where you're seated. You got your copy, lift it up. And as a lot to grant you grace to maximize this divine opportunity like never before in your life. Come on now, pray that prayer. Lord, grant me grace to maximize this divine opportunity like never before in my life. Grant me grace to maximize this opportunity like never before in my life. Grant me grace to maximize this opportunity like never before in my life. Thank you, Father. 
blessed be your name in jesus precious name you know how important that prayer is but i labored more abundantly than them all paul said yet not i but the grace of god that was with me i'm still amazed that i'm not tired i'm not weary i'm having really great fun following jesus and seeing people being led en masse to christ it turns me on like it was in the beginning and more or worse call it worse because we are very bad people call it worse <laughs> than ever ever panting to see more people saved my team has since over 65,000 people saved this year we invest hundreds of thousands in making calls to be sure we keep tap with those saved not from church money sir from my own god given blessing joyfully i told my personal accountant don't ask me when it's about souls don't ask my approval it's approved it's approved i said don't ask me that's what i'm living for church has never known a setback because we have been pursuing one thing the kingdom the kingdom souls souls the kingdom the kingdom the prayer point has not changed the kingdom the kingdom the kingdom the drive has not changed the kingdom the kingdom i told them to tell the press yesterday 500,000 copies of each tract per week go and make it 500,000 you know how many tracts we have 500,000 per week. We're going to do it for seven weeks. Everybody, everywhere. 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 That is more valuable to God than building any skyscraper. That's the key. That's why the church has been perpetually under rainy season. We are under heaven's rainfall consistently for 40 years. No break. No break. No break. No break. Please plug in. This is the highway of life. Plug in there. Plug in there. Let's conclude this morning before we administer the mystery. Please note that after every rainfall, the cloud becomes empty. The next rainfall will never come until the cloud is filled again. That's the reason why some people have some amazing testimonies, some yesteryears, but can't see it again. They have entered into a drought. They have entered into a dry season. The cloud has become empty. And until the cloud is formed, rainfall is not in view. The cloud has to be formed before you have the next rainfall. Now, you know what happens to us in the church? As the rain is falling, we are feeling the cloud. We are feeling the cloud. So the rain just like, hey, she, and then it starts falling again, falling again. Why? Because the cloud is being fed perpetually, 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 perpetually. We have been jumping around on the street since 1984 March. Come and see, come and see, come and see, come and see, come and see. No break, no jam. Come and see every day. Come and see in prayers, in fasting. Come and see, come and see. So we have been under perpetual rainfall perpetual rainfall a church that never borrowed a church that never begged a church that never lacked we have been perpetually under rainfall that's where god is bringing your life yeah. your life today comes under a perpetual rainfall yeah. you will never know drought anymore in your life in season and out of season you will keep feeling your cloud you will keep feeling your cloud and your rainfall will never stop. Your rainfall will never stop. In the name of Jesus Christ. Therefore, in the name of Jesus Christ, this operation by all means will deliver maximally in your life. And by all means, it will launch you to your high places. By all means, my God, who is also your God, will launch you to your high places. 
you are coming out of that valley right now. You are on your way to your higher places in the name of Jesus Christ. You are on your way to your higher places in the name of Jesus Christ. You are on your way to your higher places in the name of Jesus Christ. Stand to your feet, everybody. Amen. Now, I'd like you to believe God for minimum two standing souls in these seven weeks that will be standing with you in church. And on the first of August, when we are doing our harvest thanksgiving, that they will be standing with you. Minimum two. How many want to believe God for that? That's why we gave you that covenant target soul winning card where you put minimum eight names that you believe in God for for their salvation and establishing their faith. And by all means, minimum two of them, like in the parable of the sower, out of four, one must fall to the ground. Must fall on a good ground. Minimum two, we stand with you. You want to believe God for that? Yes, Reach out to heaven and pray for it. Minimum two standing souls. Minimum two standing souls. Into the kingdom and in this church. Minimum two standing souls. Minimum two standing souls. I'm believing you and I receive that. Minimum two standing souls. In Jesus precious name we have prayed. Operation by all means covenant soul winning target. You see the sheep there? That's how you are leading them to Christ. You know why? Your eight we also be our children. They are children, we also be our children. So, this time you become a spiritual father, grandfather, and great grandfather. You become a spiritual mother, grandmother, and a great grandmother. The ones you bring, we bring others. The ones they bring, we bring others. With my God, there will be no place to gather anybody in this place. Every place shall be flooded with the flock of heaven. In the name of Jesus Christ, so shall it be. Before the 31st of July, this has been established in your life. If I were you, put them on your budget. Make sure they happen on your budget. What does it take for me to take eight people to church? Amen. Many will come to your gate and say, we go with you. You don't, whether your car is only two seats or not, we will go with you. You will go to town and, and hire a bus to get them down. Strategy. Get them to the cells where you belong. Now, get them to the zones where your cell belongs. Let every cell believe go for minimum ten. Ten souls into their zones. The zones must over, over, overflow and the overflow must overflow. In the name of Jesus Christ. And on Sunday, a joyful celebration. In God's presence. Lift up your two hands and thank God for the multitudes that are coming. Thank God for the multitudes that are coming. Let the stewards now please take their positions. Thank God for the multitudes that are coming. Thank God for the multitudes that are coming. They are coming. They are coming. They are coming. And thank you for, thank God for your launch into your high places. It's a moment of divine opportunity. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Amen. Now, the word has gone forth. Its healing power has gone forth. Its surgical power has gone forth. Its creative power has gone forth. Its deliverance power has gone forth. Now, we are setting a seal of the anointing upon your life. Whatever remains as a yoke. Paralysis, stroke, heart disease, cancer, breathing problem, lungs, intestine, effect of accident, whatever remains a yoke on your head, as this oil comes on your forehead, that yoke is destroyed forever. Partial blindness, total blindness. Partial deafness, total deafness, dumbness, stammering, whatever remains as a yoke on your head, 
whatever comes to it is a discomfort in any part of your life. Because you are out to serve God, God is committed to keep you fit. Therefore, every chain of sickness, every chain of disease, every chain of oppression of the devil hanging over anyone's life, I command them broken in the name of Jesus. Therefore, I decree the content of these verses as the holy anointing oil. And as this comes on your head, every yoke on your life is destroyed. Every mark of the wicked is overthrown. Your liberty is established. Your miracle is instant. Your next test this week will show that that plague is gone. In the name of Jesus. By this anointing, I declare you a touch not entity. Evil shall not come near you. Every arrow shot in your direction will go back to the sender. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Somebody said, I look in that direction. I say, every arrow sent in your way goes back to where it's coming from. And the source vanished. Same day. Therefore, as this oil comes on your head, any agent of the other won't let you go. They want to tie you down in barrenness, in impotency, in misfortune, in sickness, in disease. Goes for you today. As soon as this oil comes on your head, just declare to that plague, expired. Expired. That lump, expired. That deadly plague expired. Every appointment with death expired. Every negative medical verdict expired. In the name of Jesus. So shall it be. Please go ahead and quickly. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jesus. Now speak to the Lord violently as violently as you can. This must go today. Expired expire call it by name and name it expire name it expire 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 please get seated and take your tongue just a dip of your finger on your forehead one second you pass it on to the next person one second, pass on to the next person. In the name of Jesus, you are not living here with any sickness, with any disease, with any pain, with any ache today. Leprosy must go. Cancer must die. Heart problem must give way. Lungs problem, intestinal problem, whatever it is, every conception hindering diseases must clear the way for you. Every plague must clear the way for you. Every everlasting mountain must give way to you. Every perpetual heal must give way to you. Everybody begin to call it expired. Begin to call it expired. Heart palpitation expired. Blood disease expired. Diabetes, hypertension, high blood pressure expired. In the name of Jesus, expired, expired, expired. Nightmares expired. Nightmares expired. Nightmares expired. Nightmares expired. Nightmares expired. Every satanic oppression expires. Expires today. Today, right now, right now, right now, expire today, today, right now, today, right now, today, right now. Everybody, 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 go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Call it expire, call it expire, call it expire, call it expire. It's your right to be made whole. He's paid the price for it. He has paid the price for it. It's your right, it's your right, it's your right. Sickness is gone, disease is gone. It's your right to be free. It's your right to be free. It's your right to be free. You shall have whatever you say. Say it. Let the name of the Lord say so. I'm free at last. I'm free forever. I'm free from fibroid. I'm free forever. I'm free at last from the plague of miscarriage. I'm free forever. I'm free at last. I'm free forever. I'm free from blood vision. I'm free for 
from partial deafness. I'm free from total deafness. I'm free from blindness. I'm free. Free at last. I'm free forever. Remember, you shall have whatever you say. Open your mouth wide. Say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. What you don't say, you can't see. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. What you won't say, you can't see. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. What you won't say, you cannot see. What you will not say, you cannot see. What you will not say, you cannot see. What you will not say, you cannot see. Say it all. Say it boldly. Say it confidently. What you say is what you will see. What you say is what you will see. What you say is what you will see. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let them say what they'll be redeemed from. Say so. Say so. Say so. Say so. Untimely death is not your portion. Say so. Say so. Pain and eggs are not your portion. Say so. He took your infirmity. He bore your sicknesses. Say so. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. All those who have been ministered to stand to your feet. And now let the choir begin to sing. It's praise. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. Thank you, Jesus. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. I redeem. I redeem. Praise the Lord.
Lift up your hands and shout Hosanna. The King of Kings is in the house. Jesus is in the midst of his people. Our turnaround package is finally here. Your turnaround package is finally here. Your turnaround package is finally here. Your turnaround package is finally here. Please get seated and pick this information here. What's this? We're going to give this a great start. Just read this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Special operation announcement. Good news. In view of the just declared operation by all means in this prophetic season, there shall be morning and evening prayer raids. <laughs> Times are 8 to 10 a.m. and 5 to 6 p.m. daily at all our area facilities and other selected centers. Remember, this is a platform for our senior citizens, nursing mothers, those on the line for miracle jobs and for all members on their way to and from work etc at the same time there shall be morning and evening gospel raids which is a covenant opportunity for all winners to go all out telling people about jesus and his marvelous acts in this church remember your turnaround testimonies are tied to our productive engagement in this prophetic season we should all expect a supernatural visitation that will culminate in change of story in this prophetic season. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Now, for all our new members, the prayer morning raid is a time that people get together in our various facilities as announced and pray. Amen. To become partakers of this awesome revival season. Pray down salvation of souls, fruitful outreaches, detention of new converts, church growth, pray for membership of the church, for divine visitation and turnaround, and so on and so forth. And pray vengeance against the continuous growth of the church. We have the prayer bulletins. Please take advantage of it. And this is for all of our senior citizens, majority of whom are you know, uh, retirees, and they live in their various homes, in the comfort of their homes, take time out and be part of that prayer raid. In the daytime, nursing mothers, be part of that. And those who have sent children to school, be part of that. It's 8 to 10 in the morning, and 5 to 6 in the evening. And then all of us young people, including myself, we are up and running, leading people to Christ with every opportunity at our disposal. On our way to work, on our way from war, at the bus stop, men at the ATM places, everywhere. And all souls are mine. That's what God said. He wants all men saved. So take advantage of it. Young and old, boys and girls, anybody's welcome into the kingdom of God. Amen. We'll be doing that this week with every sense of mission. And God will keep rewarding each one openly so shall it be in the name of jesus you will not return empty this coming sunday no one returns here empty with the eight names on your list many of them will clear them this week just ask god for the correct strategy to get at them ask god for the correct approach to get at them Correct biblical holy approach, no gimmicks to get across to them. Offer somebody a lift and then use that as an opportunity to minister Christ to him. Talk to anybody you mean. Jesus sent me to you because he did. What I say to one, I say to all. To proclaim a blessing on you, you won't say no. Everybody wants to be blessed. You proclaim the blessing and tell him how to retain the blessing by stepping out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Jesus is the only way to get there. Amen. Well, 
how you start matters to how you finish let everybody determine that this week somebody must get down to the kingdom by my hand somebody must get down to this church through my hand and he will do it for you can i hear your loud and say amen stand to your feet everyone give the lord the biggest hand of praise amen the gospel of blessings will give you amazing harvest of souls no condemnation blessing proclaim the blessing show them how to retain the blessing they will be establishing the faith can i hear your loudest amen we had very strong drug addict saved people someone was just coming from the prison he met with us the gospel of blessing rescued him born again married settled today hallelujah amen you are going to see amazing blessings as you pray for the right approach to every soul that you are targeting for salvation in the name of jesus christ so shall it be how many are sure to return this coming sunday with a living soul coming along with them it shall be so lift up those two hands and give god thanks everybody give god thanks together let's share the goodness of the lord in fellowship surely god's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever amen peace welcome to 2021 your year of supernatural turnaround then expect turn around to become your new identity from henceforth. Amen and amen. You are blessed. Congratulate somebody as you go and be blessed as you do. If you came in after the worship offering was received, there are officials around the altar and various exits carrying late offering tags. Do well to drop your offering as you go and be blessed as you do. If you want to share your testimony in the fourth service, take your bag, take your Bible and rush to the honor entrance. That is the entrance behind where the pastors are seated and share your testimony to the glory of god again if you want to share your testimony rush to the honor entrance and share your testimony to the glory of god choir A miracle God, my God is a miracle God. He has never failed, He will never fail. He will do what He says He will do, He will do what He promised to do. My God is a miracle God, He's a miracle walking God. Miracle God, He's a miracle walking God. He has never failed. He will never fail. He will do what He says He will do. He will do what He promised to do. Say, my God, uh, God is a miracle walking God. I can see him, 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 I can see him,
is a miracle God My God is a miracle walking God He has never, 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 never failed He will do what He says He will do He will do what He promised to do Say my God, yeah My God, my God, oh my God He's a miracle, a miracle walking God Somebody shout the loudest, hallelujah. Give Jesus a big hand and please be seated in God's presence. Welcome to 2021, your year of supernatural turnaround. Let's pay attention to the faith tabernacle announcement for this fourth service. Number one, good news. The Word of Faith Bible Institute will be June edition holds between 14th and 25th June 2021. This is a two-week intensive course and shall hold in Kenan Land and at all our will be training centers in Lagos and Ota. Note that BCC holds in all training centers while LCC holds at Kenan Land and other selected training centers. For registration and other information, visit the link displayed on the screen. Number two, good news. A June edition of our three-day specialized certificate course comes up from Monday the 28th to Wednesday the 30th of June 2021. It's a future breaking marital siege. Everyone on the line for miracle marriage and everyone desiring a hitch free marriage should keep this divine appointment with God. God shall be breaking every marital siege and releasing wisdom for marital bliss. Kindly note that both registration and payment for this course is online. For registration and other information, visit the link displayed on the screen. Number three, Believers Foundation School holds this Monday for all new converts. Please note that you are to attend for two Mondays only. Every new convert concerned will be contacted by SMS on the location close to where they live. The time for this meeting is 6 to 7.30 p.m. Number four, Covenant Hour of Prayer hosts tomorrow, Monday to Saturday, both here in Kenan Land and in all our Covenant Hour of Prayer locations across Lagos and Ota. The time is 5.30 to 6.30 a.m. Number five, praise the Lord. A midweek communion service hosts this Wednesday, 9th of June, 2021 both here in Kenan land and at all zonal fellowship centers in Lagos, Ota, and environs. Remember, we shall be waiting on the Lord in a fast and break with the communion. The time is 6 p.m. Number six, Winner Satellite Fellowship, our house-to-house -house fellowship, holds this Saturday at our WSF centers across Lagos and Ota. The time is 5 to 6 p.m. Remember, 
our cell growth and replication agenda is still on. Ensure you are part of this by bringing people into your cell. If you desire to host a WSF location in your house, please indicate through your cell minister. And as you host the ark of testimony in your home, expect continuous inflow of testimonies into your life. Amen. Number seven, praise the Lord. Next Sunday at Faith Tabernacle, the 13th of June, 2021, shall be a covenant day of restoration. It shall also double as a special monthly communion service. It shall be a service to be much remembered. Therefore, come expecting encounters by the word and the mystery of the communion table. Service schedule is as usual. Jesus is Lord. Give him a big hand of praise. In this service, it is testimony time. Let's make it louder, my breakthrough time. Please, let's listen to the following documented testimonies and be blessed as we do. Number one, healed of epilepsy via the anointing hall. Hallelujah. For 16 years, my son suffered from epilepsy and I have spent a lot of money, but the situation remained the same. However, I have been coming for the miracle service and I've been administering kingdom mysteries. It has been three weeks now and he has been made whole and the symptoms had all disappeared. Let's make it louder for Jesus. I return all the glory to God. The testifier is I know. Show that they one more time. Let's celebrate Jesus for this testimony. Number two. Healed of cancer via soul winning. Let's celebrate Jesus. I was diagnosed with breast cancer in May 2015. I traveled out of the country for treatment. After the full course of the treatment in January, the doctor still saw lesions in my lungs and breast, which had become bigger when compared with the previous scan. This confused all the medical personnel involved and I was told to start another round of chemotherapy. I refused and told them that if the first one did not work, then there is no chance that the second round will work. Meanwhile, about 8 million Naira had already been spent treating me. So I knew that this was now between God and I. I therefore engaged in kingdom advancement prayers and pray all the 60 prayer points every day. I chartered the cab and went for outreach, sharing tracts and telling people to come and meet the God who healed me of cancer. Meanwhile, my breast was burning with pain and I had reduced in weight from 85 kg to 59 kg. Yet, I did not give up. I told myself that this is the last straw needed to break the camel's back. I hadn't been to Canaan this year, but I came to church with two people for that particular service with my full, my faith fully charged. On Tuesday, March 15, 2016, I went for series of scans and blood tests. To the glory of God, all the things which were seen in the previous scan of February 6, 2016 were no more there. Let's celebrate Jesus. <laughs> my health is totally restored. I am healed. God's word never fails. The testifier is Ezioma Mbago. Let's celebrate Jesus for these testimonies. You are next on the line for your own testimonies today. Hallelujah. This afternoon is my privilege to welcome a number of us who are here today worshiping for the first time on Sunday like this at the Faith Tabernacle. If today is your first time at the Faith Tabernacle on Sunday, would you please rise on your feet wherever you are. Give Jesus a big hand as they begin to rise everywhere our god is worthy of praise are you clapping for jesus you can make it louder and bigger please remain standing in god's presence our officials will put into your hand the welcome package along with it you'll be given a slip that you need to fill and as soon as you receive your copy of both the pack and the slip please take your seat and begin filling that slip in the course of this welcome make sure you receive your copy before you are seated and begin filling the slip in the course of this welcome 
I want to welcome you today on behalf of Jesus Christ, the head of the church, and on behalf of his servant, the apostle over this commission, Bishop David Oyedepo. Please note that every believer has an appointed place for the fulfillment of his or her glorious destiny. God's word declares that those that are planted in the house of God will flourish in the court of our God. In the same vein, every believer has a God-ordained shepherd over his or her life. His word declares that your teachers will not be removed to a corner, but your eyes will see your teachers, and your ear will hear, your ear will hear a word saying this is the way, walk in it. It is when you are in your appointed place and under your God-ordained shepherd that your glorious destiny begins to find practical expression. I believe that a number of us are here today because God has brought us here to show us this place as our appointed place and to show us our appointed shepherd. Just as Obedidom in the scriptures tabernacled with the ark of God for three months and had a dramatic change of story, no one settles down with God upon this mountain, engaging with divine instructions as received from this altar without experiencing a change of story. Therefore, my charge to each one of us is get planted here and expect diverse divine visitations that will result in life-changing testimonies as you engage with every word that proceeds from this altar in the name of Jesus Christ. To all of our first-time worshipers, therefore, I say to you, welcome home. Give Jesus a big, big hand. One more time, all our first-time worshipers, rise on your feet for a word of prayer and blessing. Rise on your feet for a word of prayer and blessing. Now bow your head as we pray. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for these precious ones that you have drawn by your mighty hand. You brought them here to bless them. Therefore, by authority, we decree to one of them blessed in the name of Jesus. Whatever they have left behind as a consent to come to your presence, let it be converted to an open testimony. And any one of them that is yet to be saved, let today be the day of their salvation. We thank you, Father, because we know it is done. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Please be seated. Ensure that your forms are completed and submitted to the official closest to you. Again, you're welcome and God bless you. Give Jesus a big, big hand. Right now in this service, it is offering time. So shall it be for each one of us in Jesus' name. Can I hear louder? Amen. Amen. Please properly package your worship seat right now and all of your financial commitments, including your tithe, which is 10% of God's blessings upon your life. Put it together, label it appropriately, and let us get set to worship God with our seed. Remember, if you are writing checks, you are writing in favor of faith, tabernacle, Canaan land, you can give in cash. You can also take advantage of any of the electronic channels that you can see on the screen right now. Praise God. Genesis chapter 8 and verse 22, the Bible is speaking here, says very clearly, Genesis 8, 22, while the earth remained, seed time and harvest and cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. Therefore, as long as you keep giving based on the covenant, you shall keep reaping bountiful harvest. Therefore, as you sow again today into this kingdom earth, your seed shall bring forth bountifully. Amen. Can I hear louder? Amen. Amen. Please rise up on your feet with this understanding. Take your seed in your hand. Lift it up unto God. Thank him, praise him, bless him as you present your seed unto him. Magnify his name. And thank him for giving you the grace to lay down this seed today. Give him praise and glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Please keep your seed lifted. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we have come with seed to sow into your kingdom today because we love you. Let our seed be acceptable. For every giver, this hand shall never lack. This hand shall keep enjoying bountiful harvest. Even in this season, in this midst of the year, God will surprise you financially. No more begging. No more borrowing. 
you shall continue to give in the name of Jesus Christ. So shall it be in Jesus' mighty name. And loud and believing, amen. amen. Please take your seat comfortably as you cast your seed and the faith tabernacle choir shall minister.
Give the Lord a big hand of praise, everyone. This day will mark the end of the scourge of sickness and disease in your own life. It will mark the end of it in your own family. In the name of Jesus Christ. God has his times of visitation. And the midst of the year happens to be such times. Grace not to miss this time of divine visitation that's ordained for a turnaround in your life. Receive that grace now. Oh Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known thy power. In wrath, remember mercy. In the midst of the year, June and July, with five months on either side of the divide. In the midst of the year, so it's annual, annually, annually, in the midst of the years, in the midst of the years. And it comes along with amazing treasures. Among which is the leveling out of every everlasting mountain on your path and clearing off every perpetual hill harassing your life. Therefore, whatever has refused to move and has been staring you in the face as an insurmountable mountain, my God will clear them off your path this time. long standing disease every long standing pain whatever has been holding on to you over the years and won't just let go in the name of Jesus today which is part of the midst of the years my God will level out all those mountains before you You believe that? Let me hear your loudest, amen. amen. And so shall it be. Amen. Ask the Lord to speak to you today, everybody, wherever you are. Ask the Lord speak to me today. I want to hear from you, Jesus. I want to hear from you, Jesus. I want to hear from you, Jesus. I want to experience your touch in my life. I want an encounter with your word that will spark off a new beginning in my life. So let it be. And thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are all gathered today at the feet of Jesus to receive of him. Lord, let no one return without a definite encounter with you. In Jesus' precious name. Welcome again to 2021, your year of supernatural turnaround. And so shall it be. Give him a big hand of praise and get seated, please. Remember, the prophetic focus for the year is I am for signs and wonders. I am for signs and wonders. I and the children whom God has given to me, they are for signs and wonders in Israel, from the Lord of God, God of hosts who dwells in Mount Zion. Not that you have been ambitious. No, it's your makeup in redemption. Every child of God is redeemed a sign. The wind blows where it listens, you can't tell where it's, you can't tell where it's coming from or where it's going. And so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. So every child of God is redeemed a sign to his world. Every child of God.
Just like every child of God is redeemed for heaven. But he has to take responsibility to make it. No, you know that the righteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. He has to take responsibility to make it. That's his destiny. But it never delivers without responsibility. Now, we are very deep from sickness and disease. But we have to take responsibility in the world to realize it. My son, attend to my word. Give ear to my sins. Let them not depart from your heart. From your eyes, keep them in the midst of your heart. They shall be life to them that find it and health to all their flesh. They have to take responsibility to lay hold on the world to sustain their healing right in Christ. Now, he through his poverty has made us rich. But we have to take responsibility through the covenant of giving to actualize our wealthy or prosperity right in Christ. We have to. Otherwise, we'll just be looking at it behind the glass wall without assessing it. We are for signs and wonders. But we have to take responsibility to, to realize it. Thou shalt take this rod in thy hand wherewith thou shalt do signs. You engage my word to command my acts. You engage my words to command my acts. You can't flow in this spiritual without engaging with my word. The rod of God is the word of God in the figure. Jesus is that rod. And it's the living word of God. Now, do what my word says to do to command my signs. You can't operate in the name of supernatural without engaging with what my word commands you to do. Can I hear your amen? amen? That's why many things that Christ has provided for are not a reality in our life. Because you just think because he has said it, then he will do it. Yes, he will, based on his word. Based only on his word. Based only on his word. Now, listen to this. This is a miracle service. Now, the spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a broken spirit who can bear. So, you need a, you know, an empowered spirit to take command of your body. My wife will still remember one day, I said, now, let your spirit take command of your body. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 14. You can't have a weakly spirit and gain command of your body. Let your spirit now take command of your body. Because the spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity. But a broken spirit who can bear. So you build spiritual capacity to command the supernatural. You do what? You build spiritual capacity to command the supernatural. You build spiritual capacity to command the supernatural. You build spiritual capacity to command the supernatural. Our teaching series for this month on Sundays is captioned Commanding Signs and Wonders on the Platform of a Reviver. And I'd like you to listen very well. Commanding signs and wonders from the platform of a revival. A revival can be defined as a celebration of divine visitation. And the Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty, so he manifests his might. He will save, so he saves souls. He will rejoice over you with joy. He will turn you to wonder. He will joy over you with singing. He will turn your life around like a dream of the night. At that time of his visitation. 
Sevaniah chapter 3 verse 17 and now go to verse 19. You see the wonders that follow his divine visitation. Behold, at that time, I will undo all that afflict thee because I'm in your midst. And I will save her that halted and gather her that was living out and I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. He turned around. And at that time, will I bring you again restoration. Even in the time that I gather you, for I will make you a name and a praise among all people of the earth. When I turn back your captivity before your eyes, said the Lord. Now, that's what we define as signs and wonders in a revival. A dramatic turnaround, a dramatic change of story. That's what happened. We are again in the midst of the year. A season of revival. A season of celebration of divine visitation. That's ordained to be, to launch us into a realm of supernatural manifestations. Don't miss your appointment with God in this season. You'll be glad you did. You'll be glad you did. Revive thy work, O God, in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known thy power. And wrath, remember mercy. And by this time, clear off all everlasting mountains on my path. And no perpetual he's tearing me in the face and harassing my destiny. And I will launch you into your high places as you keep engaging. That's God's agenda. A revival is a platform for signs, wonders, and diverse miracles among God's people. Please note that one core manifestation of a revival is massive salvation of souls. Every move of God on the earth is ordained to result in massive salvation of soul, which is his core business on the earth. Every revival is a move of the spirit, and the Holy Ghost came primarily to make believers effective witnesses to the unsaved so they can be brought into the kingdom. And now watch, in the last years of uh, Peter's of Paul, all men, I mean, your sons and daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, upon your heart maidens will I pour my spirit. Amen. So, where you find the spirit of God moving, not only on the altar, but on the pews. When you find men and women, boys and girls, free and bond, everybody manifesting the spirit, then you know where there's a revival. That's what you're having here. That's what you're having here. There are many, many people here by whose hands God has raised the dead. They are not ordained. They are not deacons. They are not elders. They are not pastors. They are not assistant pastors. They are not same ministers. They are just people with their heart for God. People with passion for God. Nothing else. Thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people. Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 13. So it's going for. It's for the salvation of his people. Who are his people? All souls are mine. How many? How many? Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 4. All souls are mine. All souls are mine. All souls are mine. He went forth for the salvation of his people. Every move of God is primarily for the salvation of people. For the salvation. If it's not there, that revival is not genuine. All this revival of falling down to the ground, and that's no revival. Revival, genuine revival, is a massive salvation of souls. They fall to the ground, fall to the ground, and they stop falling. So the revival is finished. My God. 
People like games. They like religion. Amen. Fire! Fire on the open because nobody fell down. Fresh fire. First time on the earth. He thou went test forth for the salvation of thy people. You are not anointed because we are falling down. You are not. It's not. It's on the side. Nobody fell down when Jesus was speaking. Are you more anointed than him? People can fall down. The Holy Ghost manifests anyway, but it's not a sign that you are anointed. Thou went as forth for the salvation of thy people. When the Holy Ghost came, John Pentecost, the fulfillment of Joel chapter two, verse twenty-eight to thirty, three thousand people were sent to the kingdom. Then by the manifestation of signs and wonders, which is not to show how anointed you are, is to reap the harvest of the field. For some will not believe as they see signs and wonders. So signs and wonders are for drafting people into the kingdom. They are not for sure. They are not for sure. By that singular healing, 5,000 were added to the church. That's the purpose. Now, God wrote special miracles by the hands of the apostles and multitudes, they can't count them anymore. Of men and women were added to the church. Acts chapter 5 and verse 14. Multitudes. The word of God came alive. I mean, power. And then the number of disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem. Acts chapter 6, verse 7. So you find out the, the sole purpose of a revival is the drafting of multitudes into the kingdom. Can I hear your amen? amen. Now, in Acts 13, verse 44. And the next Sabbath, almost the whole city, Kreko Kukate Rande, that Sabbath must happen here. Yeah. In this prophetic season. Yeah. <laughs> A Sabbath is here when almost the whole city will gather into this place. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest, amen. Yeah. Now, without <laughs> any gain saying, you now know that the essence of every revival is the massive in garden of souls into the kingdom. Micah chapter 4 verse 1. It shall come to pass in the last days. That the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established upon the mountains. And exalted above the hills. And all nations, all people shall flow into it. Massive influx of souls into the kingdom in the last days. In the days of the move of the Spirit of God on the earth, massive influx of souls into the kingdom. Isaiah chapter 2 and verse 2 and 3. And all nations shall flow into it. A time is coming, we'll make an announcement here. How many nations are here represented this Sunday? And there'll be 50. And there'll be 100. There'll be 200. That's a revival. That's a revival. We have someone here coming in for Sunday service from Germany every Sunday. Every, that Saturday arrives, Sunday evening he goes back to bask under the sun ray of the move of God. That's a revival. Now, watch. In the name of the Lord Jesus, no one here shall be an onlooker in this move. It is by engaging in this soul purpose that you are launched to your high places. How do I mean? They that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament and did that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever so your high places is in turning many to righteousness it's in turning what many it's in it's not in confession i mean my high places no 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 it's in turning many to righteousness it's in turning many not in attempting to turn it's in turning it's in Tony many to righteousness. It's in Tony many to righteousness. It's in Tony many to righteousness. So our places are not free. They are at the cost of turning many to righteousness. They don't come through because you are sitting down in church and very regular and trouble. You don't have, cause any trouble. You are just a normal 
peaceful member, chartered member. Amen. Amen. You don't get promoted in an office when you are not employed because you go there every day. You say, I come here every day. When would they promote you? They don't promote you to come every day. Are you working there? Are you serving there? May you succeed in drafting many to righteousness in this season. And may your star rise as you do. Let me hear your discerning amen. Let me hear your discerning name. Yeah. Somebody's mother was sick and they have the history of untimely death in their family and carried the mother to Zona Fellowship Center and asked her to lay down there that I'm coming and went for so winning. By the time he came back, mother was well. Amen. And they caught the prophetic word in church that that arrow that shot at you returns back to where it's coming from. And same day, someone died. Amen. Signs and wonders there, they accompany this day. It takes your passion for God to be in command of signs and wonders. It takes your passion. It's not a thing you cry for. It's a thing that's put into your command. Amen. He said, go to all the world and preach the gospel. And this sign shall follow them. This sign shall be at the command of those on the go. They are at the command. Somebody's child was dying and the doctor said, we can't do anything more. They put the child there. They had me speak. Early morning on Domain Radio. I'll cover now our prayer. Go out there. Witness to Jesus. Witness about Jesus. He will take care of your issues. They left the child there. Went out under the rain. Came back. The child sat down. And wondering why they left him here. They were discharged the same day. Now, signs and wonders are the command of men and women that are on the go for Jesus. It's your turn. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. It's your turn. Amen. It's your turn. Amen. It's your turn. Amen. You shall not be left behind in this glorious season. Amen. Now, let me give you this good news. It will help you. I'm divine. And here are the branches. Every branch in me that bearer not fruit, he take it away. But every fruit bearing branch, he keeps fit so he can keep bearing more fruit. Listen. Every fruit bearing believer, every believer bringing souls to the kingdom, God is committed to keep them fit. Amen. So from this day, with your undying passion for souls, you shall be kept physically fit till your end of time. You shall be kept emotionally fit till the end of time. You shall remain spiritually fit till the end of time. You know the reason why? The liberals are few. So it is wisdom to keep fit the few liberals that you have. So he wants to keep us fit. We are among the few liberals that he has against every assault of sickness and disease. Yes. Therefore, in the name of the Lord Jesus, your engagement this time will establish your all-round fitness in the name of Jesus. No more breakdowns. Not only for you, for your spouse, for your children, for your grandchildren. Whatever can distract your attention from serving God, my God will take care of it. 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 Everyone concerning the world back to God is called an ambassador of Christ. Second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. And that's where we belong. Every new creature is redeemed an ambassador for Christ with a ministry of reconciliation turning people back to God. And Proverbs 13, 17 said, a faithful ambassador enjoys healthy living healthy living so every faithful ambassador every fruitful ambassador of Christ reconciling the world around them back to God is entitled to healthy living 
Therefore, that siege on your head clears out finally today. No, thou shalt serve the Lord thy God. He shall bless thy bread and thy water. And I will take sickness away from you. It's not permitted to torment those who are serving him. Palako, krekiano, sankano, prekeno, radi. Now, tear that foul spirit. Expired. 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 It's one thing to have a thing. It's another thing to know the worth of what you have. Serving God forbids you to be tormented by sickness and disease. They said to Moses, what's that in your hand? He said, a rod, what's that? Ah, you don't know what is in it. Many don't know what is in serving God. They think they are just sympathizing with God. It secures your life from every assault of sickness and disease among others. Therefore, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, by your understanding of this right, I command an end to every torment of sickness and disease in your life. Somebody believe that. Let me hear your loudest. Amen. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest. Amen. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest. Amen. Yeah. So in a revival, God turns every dry bone to a mighty man of valor. I don't care what your state of health is now. If you plug into this revival wave, my God, we raise you a man and a woman of valor. Yeah. You come out of that situation stronger than you were before you got it. Yeah. Just plug in. All you need is to plug in. All you need is to plug in. And let me tell you this. Anybody and everybody has unlimited opportunity to plug in. Why? You engage on the prayer altar, you are plugging. Praise God. And that should be comforting to all our aged and senior citizens. You can just sit there in the comfort of your room and take the prayer bulletins one by one. Today I pray for everyone on the field for utterance. Utterance, bringing conviction into conversion. In the name of Jesus, let no one on the field today return empty without a soul to show for their labor. In the name of Jesus, I pray that everyone in church this coming Wednesday service will meet with you and every unsaved soul shall be saved. In the name of Jesus, grant our pastor unusual utterance to minister today. In the name, you are engaging. You are en and God who sees your labor in secret, he said he will reward you openly. Just anybody and everybody has a place in the vineyard. Either on the prayer altar or right on the go for Christ. On the street, in your neighborhood, in your workplaces, in your marketplaces. Everybody has a place in a revival. Moses prayed his way to heaven at 120. Hallelujah. Abraham said, let's go and worship at 114. Anna was a prayer warrior at 84. So everybody has a place. Everybody. Everybody has a place in a revival. Everybody. Anybody who can say, give us this deliberate, has the responsibility of praying out, thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy ki Anybody who can speak can pray. So we all have a place in it. Please let no man take your crown. <laughs> Fix it firmly on your head. Don't be a regularized, chartered member of a church. No. Be an active partner with Christ in this strong wave of revival. You'll never regret it. You'll never regret it. You'll never regret it. You'll never regret it. Never regret it. Never regret it. So we are not being ambitious. Talk less of being over ambitious. No. He wants all men to be saved. How many? Oh. And all men to come to the knowledge of the truth in church. I'll give you pastors who shall feed you with wisdom and understanding. You can only come across in church. Light booms in church. Light is ignited in church. So he wants them saved and wants them in church to encounter the light that will give meaning to their life. 
So it's not our ambition. It is the Great Commission. It is the Great Commission. It is the Great Commission. Plug in today. In season, when you look like you are not comfortable, pray. It will make you comfortable. Pray kingdom advancement prayer. It will add comfort to your life. That's what he does. Can I hear your loudest amen? Yeah. Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. You know, when God said, put him in remembrance. Now, after doing what I command you to do, and you can't see what I say, you should see. Remind me. <laughs> Lord, did you not say that when I serve you, you will take sickness away from my body? Yes. Now, Confirm your word in my life. Confirm your word in my life. Thank you for giving me the grace to serve you. But you know I'm serving you by the level of the grace you have given me. Now confirm that word in my life. Take this sickness out of my body. Yep. Confirmed. That's what he does. Put ye me in remembrance. We serve a covenant keeping God. The choir was singing a song. When I remember his covenant, I shout hallelujah. You can be sure that he will keep his part of the deal. Any day, any time, he abides faithful. Can I hear your loudest amen? Yeah. One of us here gave God four reasons why he should not be sick. Why she should not be sick. She was attacked by some sickness. He said, Lord, I'm serving you. Gave him four reasons from scriptures. And God said, okay, make you no vex. Free. Set her free by reminding God. Now, this revival season must mark the end of every harassment of the devil on your life. Yeah. Come on now, let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. And let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. You are free at last. Yeah. And you are free forever. Yeah. Very quickly this morning, on this covenant day of healing and deliverance I'd like you to know that God's principal instrument for administering healing and deliverance to his people is his word he sent his word and it healed them and delivered them out of all their destructions Psalm 107 and verse 20 everybody goes around pray for us pray for us God he is us principally through his word. His word carries healing virtues and releases that to whosoever receives and believes that word for their healing and deliverance. He sent his word and healed them, delivered them out of all their destructions. Now, God's word, he is us through four main channels. One, his word is said to be medicinal. Proverbs 4, 20 to 22. Attend to my words, give ear to my sayings, let them not depart from your eyes, keep them in the midst of your heart, for they shall be life to those that find them, and health to all their flesh. The word health here is translated medicine in other translations medicine to all their flesh so god's word is medicinal they call it the balm in gilead every encounter with the healing word releases healing virtue every encounter with the healing word releases healing virtue a young chap here told the mother to read that little book healing scriptures to her to him read it again read it again he said, read that uh, page again and read it. And got free from SS. SS was turned to AA through the healing virtue of the healing world. Can I hear your loudest amen? That's what he does. Somebody said he read the book, You Shall Not Be Barren. And God who gave Isaac 
to Abraham and Sarah with zero spam count, zero ovulation can do anything. She lives in the Netherlands and there she got pregnant. Every, med every medical verdict was in line with that. That is impossible. No spampa, no blah, 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 everything out of this array. Jesus visited her by the healing virtue in the world. Somebody's free. So as you're here in the world right now, your healing is taking place. What's the healing word? The Bible said, Himself took your infirmity and bore your sicknesses. Himself already took, so he can't be there. By his stripes, you were healed. They cannot unstripe him anymore. So your healing, health, and wholeness is settled at the cross, settled forever. You have been bought with a price. The gruesome price of 39 stripes of wicked Roman whips. Therefore, glorify God in your body. Because my body is redeemed. My body is redeemed to glorify God. My body is redeemed to glorify God. Not to pity my God, but to glorify my God. My body is redeemed to glorify God. So whatever does not glorify God in your body, I cast them from the roots in this service. You don't pay for any good twice. Now who pays for anything you buy off in the shopping mall does not matter. As long as you have the receipt, you pass through the security check. It's the receipt they need. They don't care who paid for you. The receipt. Jesus already paid for you. So carry your package of healing, health, and wholeness and pass through every gate of hell with your receipt. Your receipt, I have been bought with a price for my body to glorify God. You can't perfect me anymore. Show them your receipt. Show the devil your receipt. I've been bought by the precious blood of Jesus, by the 39 wicked Roman stripes. He's bought me of the market of sickness and disease. Yes, you are free. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Now, what that means is this. As a child of God, that sickness on your body is illegal. Come on, help me tell that situation. You are illegal. You have no right to be in my body. I have been bought with a price. The price for my total healing my total health has been fully paid you have no legal right to reside in this body give the Lord a big hand of praise number two the word is surgical is able to repair any damaged part of our body. The word is surgical. Able to repair any part of our body. Genesis 2, 21 and 22. The Lord opened up Adam, took out a rib, closed it up again, and from that rib made a woman. And everything that God made, he made by his word. So God's word is surgical. He's able to pierce through any damaged part of our system and fix them. Today, the power that fixed The beautiful man, the crippled man, the beautiful gate, and strengthened his ankle bones. Carried as a surgery on his ankle and put him on his feet. 
will repair any damaged part of your body. For the word of God is quick and powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. It goes beyond the body. And the, of the joints and marrows. And is a, is a designer of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. God's work can penetrate any part of our body to fix whatever is off there. Therefore, today expect to see the word of God go through your system and fix every damaged part of your body. Yeah. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest. Amen. Yeah. Say with me, God's word is surgical. Say convincingly. Convincingly. We have a woman here, one of our special daughters of Zion, who was afflicted with mouth cancer. And they say, well, it's too late, we can't do anything more anymore. The matter is over. They turned back to Nigeria and began to engage in soul winning with cancerous mouth. In the night, the master surgeon appeared to her put her hand, his hand into his mouth and ripped out the lump. Woke up in the morning, cancer free. Went to protest in the hospital, cancer free. Now, in the name of Jesus, every damaged part of anyone's body today will receive the surgical intervention of the world. We are told of someone that had an accident 10 years back with a neck condition that will always require a support to sit down. Now, as the world was going on, yes. the surgical power of the world penetrated. And then, for the first time, did not need any support anymore. The 10 years plague ended there. Jesus, the great physician, is also the master surgeon. Is the master surgeon. He, he, he can penetrate any part of your being and my being without anesthesia, without a theater. He has the right, right there where you are sitting down, to carry out his operation on you. And you'll be free forever. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest, amen. Yeah. We had a case sometimes in London of this woman that had a challenge on her waist and had been there for years. And I spoke on the surgical part of the world and went to bed. And in the night, saw these three men appeared in white as in a theater and then began to pull out strands from our waist, yellowish things like uh, spaghetti. My God. And then they said, what time is it? 5.30. Then she woke up. The time was 5.30 exactly. My God. My God. My God. The plague of many years was over. There is surgical power in the world. It will fix any damaged part of anyone's body. Amen. Today, I see him fix your body. Amen. Can I hear your loudest amen? Yeah. That man was born blind. He set him free. He can fix any damaged part of your body. Batman's cry, he got his side back. He can fix any damaged part of anybody's body. And all by the word, all by the word, all by the word that you receive and believe, you are empowered to experience and manifest. All by the word. The word chaos is medicinal. The word repairs is surgical. There was this lady that was brought to me years ago in the old church. She was a victim of um, sickle cell anemia and one leg was shorter than the other. And they met me in the, what is it, in the reception. They said, in the name of Jesus, be made whole. Thank you, Lord. 
the shorter leg grew to meet the other one. The surgical part of the world went in to strengthen the bones. You see, at a certain stage, age of your life, your bones cannot be strengthened, lengthened anymore. But not with God. It can carry out any surgery at any time. The good news is, that thing that has been disturbing you over the years, that has gone beyond the cure, he will repair it today. Also, the word replaces whatever part appears irreparable or non-existent. It replaces them. Parts that are non-existent in your body. It replaces them. That means it creates them. We know that God's word is creative. We saw it in Genesis chapter 1. And God said, and God saw, and God said, and God saw, and God said, and God saw. And God saw everything that God said. Verse 31. And behold, it was very good. So God's word is creative. God's word is creative. Every time you see the dead raised back to life, is God's creative power at work. That's not healing. It is life being recreated. You say, what do you mean? Now, somebody was dead for four days and in the tomb for four days. And life was re-injected. Every living creature is created. So life is a creation of the creator. So when you hear the dead raised back to life, it is life being recreated. Life being recreated. God's word creates. I was in Durumi Church 2000 or 2001 and then there was this dead child that was kept in the third floor of the children's department. I had no idea. I went there for that all night because I had something doing in Abuja. And then I came up on the platform. It was a healing time in the church. And I took the stage and I said, It's there! No bomb in Gilead! Fire! It answered in the third floor. And life shot back in the child that died around 1 p.m. in the afternoon. That was past 12 in the night. Awesome God! God's word is creative. Satan has no power over you. And a man that was impotent, life sucked back on the spot. Now, God's word is creative. God's word replaces every non-existent or over-damaged part of your body. Amen. 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 Someone had no two ovaries, yet had two sons. Two ovaries were physically removed in a, in, in a, in a, in a procedure before she was married. They discouraged the husband from getting married to her. But they went ahead anyway. The two sons are graduates of Covenant University today. No ovaries. I met a woman in 1983 that had no uterus. At Nips. No uterus. They have gone around the countries of the world. No uterus. And I said, hey. The thief comes to steal and to kill. But I've come to replace what the thief has stolen in his perfect form. You believe that I say yes. Now, be fruitful. She became pregnant. Uterus was created. She carried a bassy baby boy. Mysteriously, I was at a full gospel meeting when they brought the child out for a testimony. I was the one speaking that day. Amen. I said, ah. They were overjoyed. God has the power to replace whatever the enemy has stolen. Whatever the enemy has stolen from your health, from your life, from your family, whatever the enemy has stolen shall be supernaturally restored today. And God's word delivers. That woman was bound by the spirit of infirmity, whom Satan has bound for 18 years. Woman, thou art loosed. And she was made straight. God's word delivers from the clutches of the path of darkness. How? 
the word of God is light. The oppression of the wicked is darkness. So when light breaks forth, oppression clears the way. And that light shines in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. And darkness comprehended it not. And darkness comprehended it not. John chapter 1 verse 5. So God's word delivers from the oppressions of the devil through the light that it conveys. When you turn on light in your room, darkness disappears on their own. No noise. No noise. No noise. So encounter with the truth will always make you an overcomer over the past of darkness. A woman in DRC was reading the book When the Invisible Forces. Amen. Invisible Battle. And in the middle of that book, it was in French, French language, she just saw a picture like a human being walked out of her body and the oppression of her life ceased. By the word. By the word, by the word, by the word, by the word. And that light shines in darkness, and darkness cannot handle it. That's how the word delivers from all oppressions of the devil. Lift up your right hand to heaven and give God thanks because it's your day. Today is your day. Today is your day. The battle over your head is over today. Now stand to your feet and begin to. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Whatever you have caught in the world today, begin to say so. Begin to say so. Begin to say so. Begin to say so. I am not permitted to suffer the plague and the scourge of sickness and disease anymore. The price for my total health has been fully paid. I have an answer to the healing virtue by the word, to the surgical virtue of the word by the word. I have access to the creative power of the world. So Lord, today must mark the end of every scourge of sickness and disease in my life. In Jesus, precious name we are praying. Now listen, because we are in a church of people that God has blessed and God is still blessing and we are increasing in number per day per day. There are many sicknesses that there is no medical expertise under heaven that can handle it. There are raw oppressions of the devil. There are no specialists in any medical field of life that can handle oppressions of the devil. So I'm sorry for your money. It has its horrible limit. Horrible limit. My God. It's like I I'm going to Canada. I'm going to. Oh, what? 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 So, is there no Bamigilian? There are many things I would never have medical. There is nothing wrong in seeking medical attention, but there are many things in the in life that would never succumb to medical expertise. They call them oppressions of the devil. Somebody was said to have brain cancer, or what is it? Brain tumor. And only to find out that four things came out of underneath our, our tongue. There is no medical equipment under heaven that can locate that. So if they carry the brain solidity, it won't make a difference. The force behind the same cannot be seen by any medical equipment. That's why you need a great physician to be your personal physician. He will take care of nature physiological and demonic attacks yes, all for free yes. 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 there are people standing here today that the next 40 years 50 years of your life you won't know the meaning of sickness there are those here today if Jesus studies at 120 your eyes will not grow dim your natural force will not be abated only your God can make that happen and now will he do it thou shalt serve I will take sickness away.
He concerned the word to me. I will make you enjoy healthy living. It's simple. Satan has lost the battle over your life. Yeah. Satan has just lost the battle over your life. Yeah. Satan has just lost the battle over your life. Yeah. Satan has just lost the battle over your life. Yeah. Satan has lost the battle over your heart. Yeah. Satan has lost the battle over your family. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Give the Lord the big hand of praise. And please go sit out for a moment. Before we administer this fire from the altar. You are here in this service and you are not born again yet. Healing is ordained the children's bread. And anybody can become a child of God any day because the price has been fully paid for our redemption in Christ. If you are here this afternoon, you want to turn your life over to Christ, please stand to your feet and I will pray with you right there where you are. Stand to your feet and I will pray over you right there where you are. God bless you. God bless you. God say, Jesus, save my soul. Jesus, forgive me my sin. Make me a member of your family. Stand to your feet wherever you are. And I'll be praying for you right now. God bless you. God bless you. Somebody else is standing up wherever you are. Stand to your feet. This is your chance for a change of story. Stand to your feet. It's your chance for a change of story. And God bless you as you do. Now, at the same time, there are people here that need to rededicate their lives to Jesus. Reconnect back to their Heavenly Father. And not dry up as a branch. Wherever you are, you want to rededicate your life to Jesus, please stand to your feet. And I'll be praying for you. Stand to your feet. God bless you. God bless you. You want to rededicate your life to Christ, please stand to your feet. I'm praying for you right there where you are. It will be a brand new day for you. It will be a new day for you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Now, everybody standing up, please bow your heads for prayers. Lift up your right hand to heaven. And pray this simple prayer of faith after me. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Say it loud, Lord Jesus. I surrender my life to you today. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day you rose again. That I may be justified. Right now. I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. And I believe. My sins are now forgiven. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Thank you, Jesus, for restoring me back to the faith. By your grace, I will serve you all through the days of my life unto eternity. Amen. Keep your hands up as I pray. Father, Lord, I pray over these precious souls. Your grace has brought them in. Let the same grace preserve them. I cover each one of you with the blood of Jesus. Remain covered against all satanic assaults. You will make this journey to the end in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Congratulations. Congratulations. Please complete your forms and pass them over to those church officials who handed them over to you in the first instant. And we shall be in touch with you. But be reminded that we have Believers Foundation class every Monday. And you go for only two Mondays. It's spread across the city of Lagos and Nota. Uh, about 740 locations. We will let you know which one is nearest to where you live. You can be part of that. 6 to 7.30 p.m. as you had in the announcement. And you go for only two Mondays. And you have a strong foundation in Christ to live a young fan Christian life. Don't miss it for anything. Amen. Remember, it shall come to pass in that day that the burden of the wicked shall be taken from your shoulder. Isaiah 10, 27, and his yoke from your neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. And that day, it's not a process, that day, the day you are ready for it, the day you are privileged to be under that administration, it shall come to pass in that day. Diabetes, hypertension, high blood pressure, blood cancer, heart problem, kidney problem, I mean, any challenge on your head, it shall come to pass in that day that the burden of the wicked shall be taken away from your shoulder and his yoke from your neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. He has anointed me to let the oppressed go free. 
to bind the broken hearted by God to give sight to the blind hearing to the blind I mean to the deaf I mean go show John what you have heard and seen the blind see the deaf hear the lame walk the dead that raised back to life man go and show John that's what he does As this oil comes on your head, every yoke of sickness and disease, no matter the source, no matter whether by accident, my God, whether an oppression of the devil, whether a physiological problem, whatever problem there may be in your body, as this oil touches your forehead, they clear off like a dream of the night. Yeah. You will testify. You will testify. You will testify. You saw God clear leprosy in that, I mean, epilepsy in that testimony. A woman came up here today about four different things asthma, seizure, uh, autism, epilepsy. In one sweep, sir. In one sweep. I said, Look at me. Say, Genesis to Revelation. Can you find where they say Jesus carried any of such things? No! It's not your portion. It went off Hallelujah. at that instance. Whatever I've called by name in your direction today, and that includes all manner of sickness and disease that will be affecting, afflicting anyone, they are declared gone. Hey. You just dip your finger and with faith on your forehead and declare with your mind, say, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. What you can't say, you won't see. Let them say so. You say expired. Expired. You call it by name fibroid expired. Heart disease expired. My God. Blood cancer expired. Bone marrow cancer expired. Call it by name. Call it by name. The plague of miscarriage expired. The torture of barrenness expired. My God. Whatever you say, your eyes will see. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You have to say so to see so. If you won't say so, you can't see so. What you don't say, God cannot confirm. You shall have whatever you say. So as the oil comes on your head, begin to violently declare your victory. Your victory. Call it by name. I overcome you finally today. I'm set free from you finally today. You have expired finally today. You expire finally today. I'm free from your scotch finally today. There shall be waves of instant testimonies of all kinds, of all kinds, of all kinds, of all kinds. In the name of Jesus. Stand to your feet, everybody. Thank you, Jesus. Let the ministers come over, please. And let's administer this mystery of life. This mystery of life. You have heard the word. Now you are having a seed of the Holy Ghost upon your head. To confirm every word you have received and believed. It shall be confirmed instantly in your life. Lift up your two hands everyone. Begin to call that unwanted plague. That scourge on your life by name. Begin to call them by name. Begin to call them by name. And begin to declare expired. 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 Expired, expired, expired. Paralysis, stroke, expired. Blindness, expired. Deafness, expired. Dumbness, expired. Begin to declare them expired. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You shall have whatever you say. Open your mouth wide. I will feel it. You are entitled to healthy living as an ambassador for Christ. You are entitled to healthy living. As one pushing the kingdom of God forward, we are entitled to healthy living. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed Amen. the content of these verses is hereby declared
the holy anointing oil. Amen. As this oil comes on your forehead, every yoke of sickness and disease, every affliction of the wicked one, every oppression of the devil, they are declared destroyed. Amen. Whatever team my Heavenly Father has not planned that is going in your life, they dry up from the roots. Every pain and ache that came with you to this service today clears off your body. Every growth in every part of your body disappears right now. Every incurable disease is declared cured in the name of Jesus. And so shall it be. Remember, the kingdom of God saw us violent and the violent take it by force. Don't play around this place. Please, grab it. There is so, so much presence of God in this house today. So much presence. So much. The presence of God is very strong. You are the Batman of today. So grab your own. You must grab your own. You must grab your own. You must grab your own. And expect instant turn around. And as Jesus turns you, touches you, just jump down in front. We celebrate God with you. Hallelujah. Please go ahead. Glory to God. Get seated and begin to call those things by name. Call them by name. Call them by name. And begin to declare, expired. 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 I'm free at last. I'm free forever. I'm free at last. I'm free forever. God is dissolving every growth in your body. He's terminating every pain in your system. He's setting back to order everything that's out of order. The surgical part of the word of God is working in your system right now. The creative part of the word is working in your system right now. It's replacing every missing part in your body. Now begin to declare. The violent takes it by force. Begin to declare. Enough is enough. You have wasted enough time, enough energy, enough resources over those issues. They are not permitted to be there. In a revival, every everlasting mountain clears up. Every perpetual is clear up. So you are intent to be free. You are in the midst of the year. You can't carry that burden anymore. You are not supposed to carry that burden anymore. You are not permitted to carry that burden anymore. It's your moment. It's your hour. Begin to take it. The violent take it by force. Take your own by force. Don't sleep away. Don't slumber away. Don't watch around. Just take it. Take it by force. Take it by force. You are free. Ah, you have had so many testimonies. They must hear your own. They must hear your testimony today. They must hear your testimonies today. People must hear your testimonies today. You have had the testimonies of others. They must hear your testimonies today. You have had the testimonies of others. They must hear your testimonies today. You have had the testimonies of others. They must hear your testimonies today. You have had the testimonies of others. They must hear your testimonies today. Everybody begin to declare with violence of faith. Violence of faith. I'm free at last. I'm free forever. I'm free at last. I'm free forever. I'm free at last. I'm free forever. Everybody. Everybody. Declare your freedom. Declare your liberty. Declare your freedom. Declare your liberty. Declare your freedom. Declare your liberty. That oil on your head makes you don't go in there for the devil from henceforth. Any attack launched at you, return back to sender. Return back to sender. Your home is free. Your family is free. Your spouse is free. Your children are free. Your grandchildren are free. An end has come to every touch of the wicked in your life. Now, all those have been ministered to stand to your feet while the choir leads us in praise in the name of the Lord at this time. Hallelujah. I am free from condemnation. Jesus is the rock of my salvation. I can walk to and through and live over the world. Hallelujah.
Jesus has touched you by the power of his word and by the mystery of the anointing and you have seen that change in your system. Jump and join the others in front as we sing this song for two, three more minutes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Of praise, everybody. Shout Hosanna! God has come down into the midst of his people. Your turnaround season is finally here. Things are turning around in your favor this season. God is launching to your high places this time in the name of Jesus. One more time, give the Lord a big hand of praise and let's take some of this testimony. For 
for this amazing array of instant testimonies, give the Lord a big hand of praise. dislocated his right arm two months ago and could not lift it up but after i was anointed the dislocation was completely healed he can now lift his hands to the glory Hallelujah. of god the master saw john is in the house olu oludei adeshola for one year had a lump in the breast but after the anointing instantly the lump disappeared and now set free to the glory Hallelujah. of God. Hallelujah. Ebo Raphael, for one year, three months, had a heart problem with very severe symptoms. But as soon as the anointing came upon him, all of the symptoms disappeared, and Jesus has made him whole. Every heart disease that came into this service is returned healed. Badamosi Fatai for three years had had palpitations, but also as the anointing came upon him, the palpitation stopped. He set free to the glory of God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Fabi Adenike for three years has suffered from ulcers and as a result of it, intense stomach pain. But as the anointing came, all of the pains disappeared, and right now she set free to the glory of God. Give the Lord praise, he's the one in charge. Ajib, Ajibola Monilola Mon, for three months has had pain in the shoulder. But as the anointing came upon her, the pain instantly vanished and she set free to the glory of God. Hallelujah. Mrs. Peter has been suffering for several years from a, from a particular discharge and a growth in the os esophagus. But as the anointing came upon her, the discharge stopped and also the growth has been permanently healed. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. It's removing everlasting mountains of our path. He always confirms his word. Kayode Oluwole for three months has been suffering from strange movement all over the body, but as the anointing came upon him, that movement disappeared. Now he set free to the glory of God. Hallelujah. Lena Mov has been suffering from an affliction in the leg. She stepped on something 11 years ago. And as a result of that affliction, she has been in intense pain. But as the, she anointing came upon her, the pain disappeared. Hallelujah. And now she set free to the glory of God. Never again. Amen. That poison returns to where it came from. Amen. Free forever. In the name of Jesus. Okpadei Gabriel, a little boy. He came here with intense stomach pain of over one week. But as the anointing came upon him, the pain disappeared and he set free to the glory of God. Amen. God is healing children too. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. David Welt Kaniku for six months has had pains in the leg. But as the anointing came upon him, the pain disappeared. He's walking freely now to the glory of God. Hallelujah. Shall we all rise to our feet? Our time is out. For every testimony out here in front, there shall be no reversal. Every testimony is significant. Red or red, Jesus did them all. And whatever he does is forever. There shall be no reversal. You are testifying today, it will only be perfected tomorrow. Yeah. Everyone out there that Jesus has touched in one way or another, that touch is declared permanent. Yeah. Every word you have received and believed today 
will be turned to testimony in your life. This week, as you go for the next text, you'll be told that plague is no longer there. So shall it be. Nightmares is over in your life. No more sweating out of your sleep. No more being chased around in your sleep. The plague of spirit, husband, spirit, wife is over forever. And so shall it be. Jesus was casting out evil spirits with his word. Now, you can't be harboring Jesus and harboring the devil at the same time. Christ in you is the hope of glory. When you are saved, Christ comes to make his residence in you. The devil can occupy the same place. Light and darkness cannot be in the same place. Therefore, every torture of demons on your life is declared expired today. You can't be the temple of the Holy Ghost and be the, devil, the temple of devils at the same time. Therefore, every torture of devils on your life comes finally to an end. Yeah. All testimonies shared will only be perfected. Yeah. There shall be no reversal. Yeah. All testimonies documented, they will only be perfected. Yeah. There shall be no reversals. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Lift up your hands, everybody, and give God thanks while the precious people out here from front goes back to their seat. Give God thanks. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him glory. Give him honor. He has touched you already. Your touch is permanent. He heals by his word. He has healed you. He repairs by his word. He has repaired you. He replaces irreparable parts in your body. They are replaced. He delivers from all oppression of the devil. You are delivered. You are rescued. You are free forever and ever. In Jesus' precious name. One more time, give the Lord a big hand of praise. Amen. Based on the midst of the year agenda of heaven and by the signal of the Holy Ghost, I hereby declare operation by all means taking place from tomorrow the 7th of June to Saturday 31st of July. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. And we are kick starting it because a great start is vital in any field of sports. We are kick starting this with a week long engagement with what we call money prayer raid 8 to 10 in all of our area offices and all area centers and all of our selected centers across Lagos and Nota. It is specially packaged for our senior citizens and aged members of the church to stand in the place of prayer as is their function in scriptures. Praise God. All nursing mothers, all people that are there um, on vacation to stand in the place of prayer for an outpouring of the Spirit upon this church this season. For effectiveness on the field, for a number of us that are going to be on the field reaping the harvest for Jesus. Amen. Amen. And also we have the evening prayer raid, 5 to 6 p.m. in all of those centers. At the same time, we're having the gospel raid, morning and evening. Everyone seeking for a job, that's your opportunity. When you allow Jesus to engage you, no employer in it, under the earth, on this earth, will reject you. So give Jesus the best of you you will assess the best of him. And that's what you are doing. On your way to work, you are witnessing. On your way back from work, you are witnessing. At the bus stop, you are witnessing. In, in your, to your neighbors, you are witnessing. You are just all out for Jesus. And he will be all out for you. Amen. This thing works. This thing works. This thing works. From 76 to date, I have never had to beg. I have never lacked. This is the only thing I do. Share Jesus with a smile. With everybody I can see. You insult me, you strengthen me. You abuse me, you strengthen me. I'm on a mission. Glory to God. Amen. And until I allow you to mock me, God cannot make me. 
So I keep going. I keep going. The mockers of yesterday can't mock anymore. The time is over. That's how God will make you. So keep pressing. Keep pressing. You know, after every rainfall, the cloud clears. The next rain will not fall until another cloud is formed. The reason why many people are in drought today in the body of Christ is that they feed the cloud once. They enjoy the rainfall. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Suddenly, No more rain. What's happening? They have stopped filling the cloud and the rain cannot fall until the cloud is formed. Check in the sky. He said there's nothing. Keep checking. Oh no! Oh no! Oh, I see now a cloud yes. in the form of a human hand. Until yes. the cloud is formed, the rainfall is not in view. You have to keep forming the cloud to keep the rain falling. You have to keep forming. That's what the secret behind this church is. We are constantly filling the cloud. So no dry season. As the rain is falling, we are filling the cloud. The rain is falling, we are keeping the cloud. So we have been under rainfall for 40 years. 40 years, sir. Of no, hey, men and brethren, we are in a very straight jacket. We need help right now from anywhere we can get it. Anywhere, anywhere. We are under stress. We are under not once in 40 years the rain has kept falling. The rain has kept falling because we have not stopped forming the cloud. As we keep forming the cloud, the rain will keep falling. Now, that is your church in 40 years, but look at me, 76, 76 the day. I've never suffered a drought. The rain has ever been falling. The rain has ever been falling because the cloud has ever been filled. Every time the rain falls, I feel the cloud. I feel the cloud. I feel the cloud. I feel the cloud. My team has surpassed 65,000 souls into the kingdom this year. 65,000 souls into the kingdom this year. Amen. We invest in millions in calling all of our new converts. Calling them over and over again. No, Jesus has taught you. Don't turn back. Keep moving. Let's go. Amen. Joyfully. I told my personal accountant, when it's for souls, don't ask for my approval. Yes, sir. It's approved. It's approved. Amen. I will joyfully sell my body to do it. It's approved. Don't ask for it. Glory to God. Amen. Awesome God. I'm amazed. The same way rain has not stopped falling over your church. Your dry season is finally over now. Now, it doesn't matter who you are. You can keep forming the rain through the prayer altar, through reaching out to the lost, through servicing the needs of the poor according to your level of grace. Every, every service rendered to advance the kingdom is filling the cloud. You are filling the cloud. So whether you are an, an, an old uh, uh, saint, you know, senior citizens, aged members of the church, father, in the name of Jesus, let everybody on the field today be granted divine utterance. Let the utterance lead to conviction. Let the conviction lead to conversion. Let them find their way to church in the name of Jesus. Lord, meet the need of every member of this church today. Father, is anybody going through some harrowing experience? Children are out of school. Lord, intervene on their behalf. What are you doing? You are feeling the cloud. You are feeling the cloud. Oh, Jesus loves you. You are feeling the cloud. Come over to church. You are feeling the cloud. It involves children. You can invite anybody to church. Hello, come to church. This coming Sunday. Children do it. A nine-year-old person brought his father, brought the grandmother, brought the four siblings. They are all members of this church today. Because I sent a message to her, to her family. And the message went to the mother's phone. The mother, so he now told them, Papa said we should, I should come with my family. You are going with me. The mother said you can't be directing me. So the father came, the grandmother came, the four siblings came. And you can tell the mother came later. One boy. One boy. So it affects everybody. Every move of the spirit impacts on all class of people. All class of people. Whether you are pregnant or over pregnant, it doesn't matter. You can pray. Anybody who can eat can pray. Is that correct? You know, I'm a chief executive. Or, but you eat. In spite of your executive. You still eat. You say, where's my food? But you're executive. 
Amen. Anybody who can eat can pray. Anybody. Age notwithstanding. Anybody can invite anybody. You don't need experience. You don't need experience to invite anybody. Boys in the primary school invite their friends. Come to my birthday. Come to my birthday. They are not experienced. But they invite people and they follow. Everybody is affected. You say a small bird now healed. Amen. In the testimony, God heals everybody. He touches everybody. Next Sunday, nobody should come here empty. Yeah. My God will give you a soul by surprise. Yeah. But by the 1st of October, when we are having our harvest thanksgiving service, minimum two souls must stand with you. Yeah. How many will say a loud amen to that? Yeah. Before we close in this service, get them into the cells. They don't need to travel. It's near where they live. Get them to the zones. They don't need any transportation. It's in their area. Reach out to people in your territory. They are very many. They are, they are roaming about the street. Walk into a family and love them. God just sent me to you to proclaim a blessing upon this family. Nobody rejects a blessing. It's when you carry a stony face that they reject you. But when you go with a blessing, you are always welcomed. Amen. That's what I've said over the years. The gospel of blessing. The gospel of blessing. Bringing people to the kingdom and then washing them clean. Can I hear your amen? amen. Lift up your two hands and receive grace to deliver your minimum two standing souls in this prophetic season. Salvation. Massive salvation is the core reason, the core purpose of a revival. Call for it. Ask God for wisdom. Wisdom to approach it. Wisdom to go with it. Wisdom for speed. In Jesus' precious name we are prayed. Has everybody gotten a copy of the clearing operation by all means? Have you gotten your copy of operation by all means covenant so many targets? Now you have eight names on here that you believe God for for their salvation and salvation in the faith and pray over them, love them, ask God for the best approach to each one of them, and then work on them as projects. Within seven weeks, each of them will cast their lot for Jesus. Minimum two of them will abide with you in this church. And the name of the Lord shall be glorified. So take time to deal with that in the name of Jesus. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Amen. Amen. You got your copy of and for signs and wonders please connect with it and then you find yourself experiencing the same good news 590 please get seated for one minute 590 people were baptized in water yesterday among them 140 new converts Number of new cells planted this year, 11,980. That's 20 less than 12,000. Give the Lord the biggest clap of praise. Thank you, Jesus. We are in for the best of time. So shall it be. This is declared your season of change of story. Your labor this month will translate to favor forever. Yeah. You'll be flowing in favor the remaining days of your life. Yeah. The ones called jobless will not pass the next two weeks without a job on their hand. Yeah. Every dying business will pick up supernaturally. Yeah. As you engage your heart in praying kingdom advancement prayer, in reaching out to, this, to, to the lost souls with passion, God will keep changing your story from glory to glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, so shall it be. The morning raid, evening raid continues tomorrow. Both prayer or starts tomorrow. Prayer and gospel raid. We shall return with bountiful harvest. Lift up your two hands, stand to your feet, and give God thanks. And speak to the weak. It's your week.
say command of the week the week must answer to your desires this first week must bring you surprise and harvest your labor on the harvest field must answer your labor on the altar of prayer must speak Lift your hands and begin to give thanks to God. Appreciate Him and give Him the glory. Bless. Amen. We are in for the best of time this season. Amen. Amen. We are in for the best of time this season yeah. God is rewriting the story of many in this house yeah. it shall be a mist of the year no one will forget in a hurry yeah. it shall be a mist of the year you never never forget in a hurry It shall be a season of divine visitations indeed. Amen. It will come along with massive dimensions of manifestations. Amen. God will be launching many here into their high places. Amen. God will be launching many here into their high places. Amen. Jesus wept over Jerusalem because they knew not the time of their visitation. Revival is ordained a time of divine visitation among God's people. It's ordained to terminate all forms of frustration, all forms of failures, stagnation, defeat. Open up new chapters to God's people. Now, that shall be your experience in this midst of the year. Yeah. You never experience a setback anymore in your life. Yeah. His word lives and abides forever, and so. If he revives his work in the midst of the year, that's what he does. He did yesterday, we'll do today, we'll do tomorrow. It's the same. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So in this midst of the year, I see your spiritual life revived. Yeah. Your prayer life revived. Yeah. The quality of your work with God enhanced. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, here am I. In another midst of the year, revive me, spirit, soul, and body. Go ahead and pray. Revive me, spirit, soul, and body. Revive my spiritual life. Revive my prayer life. Revive my passion for souls. Revive me, spirit, soul, and body. Redodi bara de sangeo, embra balo tarreto zi arepara, shagelero tenebrialo, zezi kalara dam bekonetonia. Revive me, O God. Restore my redemptive dignity. Deliver him from everything that wants to destroy me. Revive my spiritual life. Revive my prayer life. Revive my passion for soul. Revive my giving life. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' 
precious name we have prayed Amen. lord we are here at your feet jesus we are here at your feet waiting to receive from you let no one return without an encounter with you today Amen. in jesus precious name Amen. welcome again to 2021 your year of supernatural turnaround and so shall it be give the lord a big hand of praise and please you may be comfortably seated thank you jesus the midst of the year is ordained a revival season in God's agenda. Habakkuk chapter 2, chapter 3 and verse 2. Revive thy work, O Lord. In the midst of the years, in the midst of the years, make known, you put on the, thy power. In wrath, remember mercy. In the midst of the year, revive thy work, O God. Make bare your power from his hands. There was horns which are the hiding place of his power. Make bare your power. And by his power, he levels out all everlasting mountains and all perpetual hills. As you keep engaging with the demand of that revival, rejoicing, he becomes your strength and launches you to your high places. Now, that's God's agenda. That's the content of his revival. Is to rewrite the story of his people, just like the valley of the dry bones. The bones were very dry. All hope gone. Then came the spirit of God, began to move in that valley, and then they arose from that valley of worthlessness, a mighty host unto God. Ezekiel thirty-seven, one to fourteen. A revival is the move of the spirit. That caused the giants and God's people to rise. My prayer is that no one will miss out of this awesome season in God's agenda. Amen. The midst of the year is simple. June and July, five months on either side of the divide. Five year, five year, midst of the year. Simple. June and July, the midst of the year. Praise God. Something unusual will break forth Amen. in your own life Amen. that will keep your life shining from glory to glory all the days of your life. Amen. Let me hear your loudest Amen. Amen. Our teaching series for the month is captioned Sunday services commanding signs and wonders from the platform of a revival. We are empowered to be witnesses, not empowered for decoration. And we saw this empowerment demonstrated. Matthew chapter 10 verse 1 He called the two disciples and gave them power Against unclean spirits And to heal all manner of sickness And all manner of disease And said to them go and preach Heal the sick as you go Cleanse the lepers Raise the dead Freely you are given Freely give Verse 8 so empowerment for science is the exclusive preserve 
of men and women on the go for Christ. It's not for sit down, tie to, carrying, <laughs> applaud, receiving. We are empowered to command signs as we get on the go for Jesus. So only those on the go for Jesus are empowered to command the supernatural. Now, Mark chapter 16, verse 15, go to all the world and preach the gospel. Whosoever believes and is baptized shall be saved. Whosoever believes not shall be damned. And this sign shall be at the command of those on the go. <laughs> so, we are in command as we remain on the go. Either on the prayer altar or in passionately reaching out for the lost. We are empowered to command signs being on the go for the expansion, the advancement of the kingdom of God. Now, you don't need no title. You don't need no calling. It's every believer's calling. I only had a calling to be in 1981. I've been on the crusade ground since 1976. Since 76. You are in command of the supernatural, young or old, being on the go for Christ. You are in command of the supernatural, being on the go for Christ. Young or old, middle-aged, schooled or unschooled. If you take any deadly person, it shall not hurt you. You're on the go. You turn upon service and scorpion and over all the past or the enemy, you're on the go. Now, so it holds personal security, personal defense, personal color, personal beauty for you. You move on that wavelength to a point where you just become a sign. You are not looking for sign. You are, your presence is a sign. Your presence in any circumstance is a sign. You step into a place. Things happen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Remember, I and the children whom the Lord has given me, they are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts who dwells in Mount Zion. Commanding signs and wonders from the platform of a revival. Getting committed to the demands of a revival puts you in command of signs and wonders. Luke chapter 9 verse 1. He called his 12 disciples and gave them power and authority over all devils and to kill diseases and verse 6 and so they went and they departed and went through the towns preaching the gospel and healing everywhere sin sin just get passionately on the go for Jesus and you flow in signs and wonders naturally. Naturally, sir. Naturally. Now watch. I have never begged for one thing since 76. And I've not lived without food one day. I've never borrowed a cloth to wear. That's been a sign. And that's where you belong. That's where every child of God belongs. 
and the children whom the Lord has given me they are for signs and wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts who dwells in Zion you know signs and wonders are not new there is no sign in the New Testament that there was not there in the Old Testament including raising of the dead including the dry bones of Elijah Hallelujah. quickly the dead back to life yes. my friend what was it their passion for God puts them in command of the supernatural their passion for God sir there is more to it than the Holy Ghost sir. the Holy Ghost only provides the help to sustain your passion for God but you need a passion for God to qualify to be in command of the supernatural all this give me, give me bread, give me water, give me that's not the way there. Oh Lord, I need a house. Be shouting. I'd never pray for one. But what is a house to me now? For God's sake. What is a house to me? Something will break loose in your life. Amen. Now just watch. This church has been pursuing kingdom affairs yes, in 40 years. Yes, Our prayer format has not changed. Yes, you, Yet, we have not stopped advancing. Yes, you, Understand it. That's true. That's true. Passion for God. Yes, Passion for the affairs of his kingdom. Abraham, oh Lord, don't destroy Zoro and Gomorrah. Don't destroy. If you see 50, we will destroy. Passion for God. Joseph, how can I do this? I have sinned against God. God, God, God. God, I'm a slave today, but my God is still there. Yes. Nehemiah could not sleep. He was in the fast. For people who are suffering, he wasn't suffering, he was in the palace. That's the way it works. Give your son and say, Oh God, where are you? Would they be tormenting us like this forever? Passion for God's people. That's the way to it. Elijah said, Elijah said, I've been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. I've been very jealous. They have thrown down thy altar. Man, that man went by a spacecraft to heaven. Hallelujah. Raised the dead, Elijah raised the dead. There was nothing that mattered to them more than God. Think of Daniel. Then of Lion, he opened his window. Oh Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's only you I will serve. I can't serve any king. Only you. He went to the den of lion. He came out unscratched. Passion for God. We put any believer in command of the supernatural. Passion, genuine passion for God. God hates this. I hate it. God loves this. I love it. Whatever God loves, I love. Whatever I hate, I hate with perfect hatred. God, I love you. No wonder the word says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. That's the entire heart of any man. What God has prepared for them that love him. They are just signs and wonders on the earth. Every genuine lover of God is ordained a sign and wonder to his world. Amen. Every. You know what they said about Paul? The gods have come down to us in the likeness of men. Just like Jesus, he died and came back by himself. Nobody prayed for him to come back. We need to the position in this midst of the year so we can get command of the things we have been crying for. To get things from God is great. To gain command over things is greater. You have it at will. You gain command, you have it at will. You gain command, you have it at will. You gain command, you have it at will. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Don't miss this awesome time for any reason. Ensure to keep a genuine appointment with God in this midst of the year. 
and watch sweatless advancement and expansion and favor that become your way. Yeah. It works. Praise God. <laughs> Let me also say this. We need to get a great start. Now, every revival is a spiritually demanding season. Spiritually demanding season. Now, let me tell you this. <laughs> when you sow your seed, one sack of grains will plant several acres of land. But when it's time for harvest, you have sacks upon sacks to carry. You are contending with the boss of the air who wants to eat off your harvest. So it's a laborious time. Revival time is harvest time. Harvest time is a laborious time. My God. You can put a bag in your hand, get into your car, and you plant five acres with a seed in your bag. But that's not what you carry the only harvest. Amen. You don't carry the boss of the air will eat it all for you. That means you are farm for them. It's laborious time. It's work time. Now, man, I can't work for you. No, you have to work for yourself. I'll be paid for my work. You'll be paid for your work. They don't pay salaries in groups. They pay one by one. He that reapeth, receiveth wages as he gathers fruits unto life eternal. Second Chronicles chapter 15 and verse 3 to 7. There was devastation. There was no peace during the winter. Great vexation upon all people. Then a word came. A prophetic word came. And then he said, strengthen your hands for this work. Verse 7. And he took courage and dived into it. And then verse 12 to 15, enter into a covenant, the whole nation, and God gave them rest round about. Now look at that, verse 7 precisely. Verse 7 talks about work. He said, be ye strong therefore. Let not your hands be weak for your work. So revival time is work time. Shall be rewarded. Haggai chapter 2 and verse 3. Who among you saw the glory of this house in his first estate? How do you see it now? It's like nothing. <laughs> Amen. But he said in verse 4. Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, said the Lord. And be strong, O Joshua, the son of Joseph, the high priest. And be strong, all ye people of the land, said the Lord. And walk. For I'm with you, said the Lord. You walk. Revival time is work. For yet it was, I will shake the heavens and the earth. Revival time is work time. It's work time. So get ready. It's work time. Get ready. It's work time. You work it today, it will show tomorrow. You look at it and despise it today, it will also show tomorrow. Then shall we know, if we follow on, to know the Lord. It's no respect of persons. Then shall you return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between those who serve God and those who are not serving him. Then shall you return. It's not now. Then you know. May this mist of the year never leave you behind. Yeah. May you invest your time, your energy, and your soul in taking your own position in it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Many, many global citizens will rise from this church. Jesus said, I've come to set fire on the earth. Luke 12, 49 and 50. And what you like, we already came to. I've come to set fire on the earth. And what you like, if it be already came to. But I have a baptism. Baptism of labor. And am I straighten until it be accomplished. <laughs> it takes that to impart on your world. It takes that. Laboring fervently on the prayer order, which applies to everybody.
everybody, everyone of all ages, everybody of all ages. My God. The man Abraham could say, let's go up to the mountain and worship at 114. At 114. Anna was praying hard at 84. Anybody who can eat can pray. Epaphras was labeling traveling limb prayers. And my God, we reward everyone going to his labor. So the prayer altar is an open ended altar for all classes of believers, old and young, sir. So no one is left out. Give us this day our daily bread. Anyone can pray that, sir. Must pray, thy kingdom come. <laughs> it's all in one package. Thy kingdom come first. Then give us this our daily bread. Anyone can pray, deliver me from evil. Can pray thy kingdom come. So it is all in one package. So nobody is a doubt without excuse, oh man, whosoever you be. Nobody has an excuse to let this ever time pass without your investment of labor. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Investment of labor. You see, our office is quite so busy, but you're quite so it. You see it. Your office is very busy, but you saw it. You see, as a chairman and the executive chairman, you see, but you see I executively it. <laughs> you stay asleep. My God. And when there is any issue, like a risk, a danger, my God. But you are very busy, you are executive. Where is your God? People don't have a heart for God. They are spilling that away. Without a heart for God, you can't make a mark on the earth. You need a heart for God to make your fullness of mark on the earth. You need a heart for God. Stop explaining away your, your complacency. You know, by my present position um, in the organization, is a global one. You know, we have interest in Japan. Okay, you can have interest anywhere. When you need God, you will shout. All those that call themselves it is is a lie. When they are in the face of accident, oh God! You say, Where is God? You say there's no God. You say, oh, there is God. <laughs> you don't have to get to the point of risk to recognize God as God. Amen. 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 Everybody has equal opportunity for a change of story in a revival. You are either engaging on the prayer altar or engaging in going out after souls. Through various diverse technologies available to us today, you can reach anybody at any time. You can pray down strategies for better approach, for better results at any time. You can create appointment at very odd times. I'd like to share something with you, but it's better outside of business time. So I'll be calling you at 11. Very important. I just felt an unusual passion to share this with you. He's waiting. You have prayed. Well, something. Jesus touched my life and gave me rest. I used to be restless and clouded with anxieties apprehensions uncertainties but one day i met jesus Hallelujah. and you are telling the truth from the depth of your heart i won't bluff you okay i think about it then you call him tomorrow thank you for the audience last night amen so it's just a pleasure but let i want to let you know i'm praying for you he will call you on sunday and say i'm going to church with you it's all strategy strategy godly strategy no gimmicks Lord, I'm in this village. I don't speak their language. Now, I must have your name planted here. He gave me insight on what to do, sir. If I'm speaking to them about Jesus, they will be arguing. So close your eyes. I want to pray for you. So I led them to Christ through prayers. One by one. Church was built in 40 days. You know, you, you, where your heart is there, sir, eh? you, you will find a way forward. You will find a way forward. Praise God. Amen. You can pray anybody to the kingdoms. Just identify him and begin to take him to God in prayer. My God.
That's how to do it. I can tell you this with all my heart. I've been in it in 76. Consciously. I've been doing it before, but consciously as a business. A kingdom business. The only business that God has on the earth. And it's working. Today, by grace, by grace, I say by grace, not by effort, not by strength, by grace. There is no place on the planet Earth where this short man's name does not ring a bell. There is no place. Just click the name. It will come out. <laughs> Hallelujah. Anyway, by the grace of God, if you write my name on an envelope without address, it will get here. Yes. Without any address, don't put Kenan Land, don't put uh, Ota, don't put Lagos. Just say, David, Nigeria, it will get here. Hallelujah. Nobody can give himself a name. Mm. Nobody. He said to Abraham, I will make thy name great. Nobody can. There is no child who named himself. Then the eighth day came and then the pastor got there. The child said, my name. The pastor will run. The parents will run. My name is Joshua Daniel Zechariah. The Gentiles that see their glory. Hmm. That shall be called by a new name. With the mouth of the Lord shall name. God will name a name on you this time. Yeah. Demons will hear your name and scream. Yeah. Which is to see you and bow. Somebody's told is changing. Yeah. His work. Now, remember Jesus was anointed without measure. John 3.34 Remember Jesus is the living word of God. Not that he has revelation. It's the revelation we are looking at. Amen. Amen. John chapter 1 and verse 1 to 5. Now, yet, he said, My father walketh either two, and I walk. Work is a principal component of every revival. Work, 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 work. If it's not happening, you are not in a revival. It's work. Now, I must walk the walk of the that you know that sent me where it is day. The night coming when no man can walk. John 9 4. John 5 17. It's work. Now watch. They, he walked and walked. Mark chapter 3, that there was no time to eat bread. <laughs> 21 and 22. His friends came. They thought he was off his mind to take him away for treatment. Walk. Walk. John chapter 4, verse 32 to 34. I have a food to eat that you don't know about. My mate is to do the will of God sent me and to finish his work. To finish his work. Walk. No, revival only thrives on the wheels of work. Walk, walk. If you are not able to walk, you are, can't be in a revival. You can't partake of the blessings of a revival. So it's walk time. Oh my God. And it's open to everybody. Walking on the prayer altar, walking on the streets of your territory to see people saved in your offices, in the marketplaces. To see the need for Jesus in the life of people all around you. That's work. My prayer is that no one will be left behind in this midst of the year. You will not be left behind in this wave of glory. Let me hear your loudest amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. We'll be giving you um, operation by all means. Bulletin to help you get properly positioned in this midst of the year. And then we have a special blessing for you 
operation by all means covenant so winning target now we are told and the tree bears 12 manner of fruit and brings forth its fruits every month this one commits every member of this church to minimum two established souls and then for that reason we gave you a paper here that has eight targets that you will pray into the kingdom Amen. you will love into the kingdom Amen. you passionately pursue for the kingdom and according to matthew chapter 8 the parable of the sower at least 25 percent will bow and surrender to jesus Hallelujah. and watch what happens in your life Amen. this thing is easy it's easy it's easy it's easy so they'll be giving you this at the end of this. Let, let nobody scorn this you know papa again my god operation my own means i'm not going to do anything that's what problem. people thought some of us were mad they thought we were mad now you see how mad we are now that's how to be mad you see how mad we are today? Some of those who thought we are mad come to Copenhagen guest house today to wait on the Lord. <laughs> That's how mad we are. Their children are worse, are now in Covenant University. Some have graduated. We were mad. Very mad. Join this madness tree with me. Is the missing behind your destiny in Christ? Join. Yeah. Join. Amen. And then, and for signs and for wonders, was not available last Sunday. They will make that available to you in the course of this service before we close. Jesus is Lord. Amen. 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 Somebody blessed? Amen. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. something is breaking forth in someone's life yeah. well told the glory of god and i'm here to share with you what will help motivate your life my team has brought 65,119 souls into the kingdom this year that's how greedy of god we are praise god that's how greedy of god we are I don't know what my wife's team is like, but, but uh, this is our own. It's given me yesterday. Praise God. I was checking records and I saw from Mission House number of rural churches that my wife is building. I saw it on their record. We are just on the move. We don't steal. Oh. God does not bless thieves, He causes them. That's right. The cause of the Lord is in the house of the thief. We are not stealing. We are just being blessed. Being blessed pursuing God with everything inside of us. This will help you. <laughs> My second batch of rural church planting or building is 100 number. 100 number. We don't steal. We don't beg. We don't borrow. We don't take government money. And they are hearing me. Mm -hmm. yes. Amen. Life. This thing works. Works. Thank you, Jesus. works every day. Thank you, Jesus. One woman came yesterday and said, he insulted me or cursed me. And they were slapping him. They say, What is Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. They ask him, Why is the one beating? He said, I can't see them. But they just slap him, slap him, slap him, slap him, slap him. Please, Papa, help me. <laughs> Somebody's story is changing. Amen.
Somebody's soul is changing. Yeah. You will not miss your place. Yeah. You will not miss your place. Yeah. When it's time, just tell me I stop. All I'm doing here is to help you connect with the reality of this moment. That's all I'm doing. If you like, you can join it. Is it for church to grow? No. It's for us to be rescued. Somebody was on his way to money-making ritualist and met with our team. This man said, I'm ready to go to hell, but I must get money. I'm ready to sell my soul, but I must get money. And then Jesus touched him on the spot. He said, can I have some of the flyers? He went out on the spot and brought seven souls and brought them to the soul when I said, look, please help me follow up these seven souls. <laughs> Same day. Just on the way to hell. And Jesus caught up with them. We are on a rescue mission, sir. Yes, sir. No, no, it's not fun fair. It's not a uh, let's grow church. It's let's, let's rescue lives. You get to attend, you hear all kinds of humbling testimony. I've never had rest in my life. As soon as I enter this gate, peace just came. My God. How you respond to prophetic instructions. Be careful, be careful, be very careful. There's a mighty move of God in the land. And in the future, this is the least hit nation on the earth on coronavirus. The move of God. It wipes away shame and reproach. My God. It opens the graves of people. Amen. With this massive population, many living in squalor, they have more water to wash hands, yet coronavirus can't touch them. That's how being on God's side can exempt you from all the horrors of the world. Your life, your family shall be totally exempted from every evil on this earth by being on God's side. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Finally, many of us have experienced God in some unique ways in the past, but we don't seem to see that anymore. Let me tell you why. After every rainfall, the cloud comes clear. Until another cloud is formed, the next rainfall is not in view. I mean, understand what I'm talking about? If the cloud be full of rain, they empty themselves on the earth. After they have emptied themselves, the cloud becomes clear. <laughs> and until another cloud is formed, the next rainfall is not in place. You stopped. That's why the amazing wonder stopped. The source of blessing stopped where your obedience stopped. We have been praying this kind of prayer in this church as a church for 40 years. We are not tired. We have been pursuing after souls. I told them, I said, make 500,000 tracts of every tract title that we have. And that you make that every week. Every week. That's more important than building a house for us as a church. That's why our rainy season has never stopped. <laughs> Why the rain is falling, we are filling the cloud again. And the rain is falling, we are filling the cloud again. So as the rain falls, we fill the cloud. Another rain falls, we fill the cloud. Another rain falls. That's why many believers when the season has stopped. The cloud has become empty. 
Elijah prayed and told this servant, check the sky. He said there is nothing. Ah, there must be something. That's after that prophetic word. I can hear the sound of abundance of rain. That's okay. But you must form the cloud before the rain will fall. You must fill up the cloud before you can have the rain. You must fill up the cloud before you can have the rain. So it's another season to fill up your cloud for your next showers of blessings. And may you receive grace to keep filling the cloud as a new lifestyle from this time on. Yeah. So you can pray to form your cloud. You can go after souls to form the cloud. You can run after new converts to form the cloud. Whichever way. You form the cloud with your passionate stewardship. Passionate stewardship. Passionate stewardship. Passionate stewardship. That's what happens. We have been in the revival as a church for long, my friend. We've been there for long. You remember Operation 22, 23, Operation 146, Operation 678. Operation, look, this is a theater. <laughs> we are always in the operating room. And that's why God keeps changing our level from time to time. Now, can you imagine a system of this size never borrowed, never bad, never indebted? God wants to decorate your life. In case you don't believe my testimonies, don't you believe the one for your church? That your church is building that kind of thing without any pressure on anybody, sir. On anybody, any, any. I see your life become totally pressure free. Yeah. Seeking for the kingdom of God and such and all these things that others are dying to get shall be added to you. May this season mark the dawn of a new day in your life. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. Have you ever imagined that none of the twelve was reported sick? Why they were with Jesus? They were Jesus' errand boys. <laughs> Arise and let us go. There's nobody saying, okay, I am feeling something. Always. Always on the go. Thou shalt serve. <laughs> and he shall bless. And I, God, will take secret away from you. This season will mark the end of every torment of sickness and disease in your life. Yeah. You know why it does that? The laborers are few. So it has to keep fit the few that are there. He that beareth fruit, I will prune. So he can bear more fruit. He takes over the care of your system. So you can keep bearing more fruit. So it's your legal right as a fruit bearing Christian to live a super healthy life. My God. My God. So everything that is out of order in anyone's life here today marks the end of it. Today marks the end of it. And as you are anointed from the altar with a heart ready to serve God, the end has come to every torment of sickness and disease. Thank you, Jesus. I will keep fit when God keeps you fit, who can make you unfit? When God makes you whole, who can get you sick? A faithful ambassador is entitled to healthy living. Who is an ambassador? One that says reconciling the world back to God. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 to 20. So, so every child of God has the opportunity to be an ambassador of Christ. He is called to be. And so when he accepts to be and engages in being one, my God, is entitled to healthy living. Proverbs 13 verse 17. Healthy living. Therefore from today, sickness and disease shall not be mentioned in your household anymore. You have any child that is challenged in his or her health, 
that child is declared whole right now. <laughs> Whatever will affect your quality of stewardship and cause you distraction is put back to order right now in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Somebody believe that? Let me hear your loudest amen. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Revival is on. Come and give the Lord a big hand of praise. Revival is on. Thank you, Jesus. 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 If anyone was not in the spiritual week of emphasis time or week, uh, this week we just concluded, try to grab the messages I mean, get on the YouTube if you need to or get your CD wherever and get connected and have a very grand deal take off into this season now from tomorrow we have morning and evening raid at our various area facilities and other facilities it's there for our senior citizens our nursing mothers who are home and then um, uh, everyone that is open can be part of it morning and evening and for our young men praise to you young men because you are strong amen, amen. <laughs> praise god Hallelujah. everyone from my age downward is a young man <laughs> praise god <laughs> so Man, you are all young men. <laughs> Your young men shall see vision. Abraham saw vision at 75. So if you're under 75, you're a young man. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. We'll be embarking on morning and evening raid on our way to work, on our way back from work, with people that come our way, just see Jesus looking for them. Just minister life to them with smiles. You don't need the message. Just test your testimony. As Jesus touched your life in any way, tell somebody else. It's enough to drive them to Christ. Can I hear your amen? amen. You will not miss out of this. Amen. Now, God heals us through four main channels, all by His word. One, God's word kills. He sent them to preach and to kill diseases. That is God's word is medicinal. Speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. And his servant was made whole the self same hour. Matthew 8 8 to 10 and slash 13. Attend to my word, give ear to my sins, let them not depart from your heart. Your eyes keep them in the midst of your heart, they shall be life to them that will find it, and health to all their flesh. Other translations say, and medicine to all their flesh. Proverbs 4 20 to 22. He sent his word and it healed them. Luke 5 17, he was teaching and the power of God was present to heal. God's power always accompanies his word to heal his people. Jesus went through their synagogues preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Matthew 4 23. The word kills, the word heals. Number two, the word repairs any damaged part of our body. That means the word is surgical. The word is surgical. We saw God put Adam to sleep. Genesis 2, 21 to 22, and took a rib out of him 
and without rib, he formed a woman. He closed up the flesh. There was no sign. There was no anesthesia. Jumped back and began to sing. And I am the Lord. I chain not. And the beginning was the word, the word was God, and the word was God. So God is still carrying out surgical operations today by his word. I did this teaching in London, one of our conventions, and a woman there that had a fall many years ago and had this waste challenge, cut the word, went to bed, and then three fellows like doctors appeared in the night and began to draw some strands from our waist yellowish spaghetti kind of stuff and got up in the morning for the first time in many years the chains were over the master physician stepped them the master surgeon stepped them I preached that in Kampala Uganda one of those days and the woman that had a ghastly motor accident and was packaged like an image. You can't move. All the lips were broken, so they fix her. She had that word, and in the night, someone showed up, dressed in white, and took her chest. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Got up in the morning, free for life. The word is surgical. It's sharper than to any two-edged sword. Is able to pierce through wherever anything is wrong and put it right. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. God's word has power to repair any damaged part of our body. Can I hear you, amen? amen. That's why how blood tubes are opened. Opens it up, open my friend, and then you are free. Praise God. God's word replaces any irreparable part. It has been over damaged. So he steps in to replace. He steps in to replace. Over damaged blood, he steps in to replace. So it says, turn A. To replace means to create. God's word is creative. We saw that in Genesis chapter 1. God said, and it was happened. God said, and it happened. God's word is creative. One of our daughters here was, they removed our two ovaries. And so, you can have a child. Biologically closed. But, he stepped in. The two sons graduated from Covenant University. No ovary. The testimony from Japan, you remember? The man that lost 18 kgs in three days because of a damaged heart. And then God stepped in. Everything turned. Everything turned. Why? Well, it's not. This is a brand new heart. How? Replaced. Replaced. Whatever has been over damage in anyone's life, my God will replace it right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now the next level, which is very vital, is that God's word delivers. That is the law, the word liberates from all oppressions of the devil. There are quite many health conditions that are not physiological. They are just demonic oppression. Doctors search and search can't find it. They can find it. They don't know the name of it. It's just something from the glues. <laughs> that is where Jesus steps in. There is no other source under heaven 
where anybody can be free from an oppression of the devil. There is no other source under heaven where anybody can be free from the oppression of the devil. Oh, Jesus. At his name, every name bows. Jesus. You give me the mouth above every other name. Every other name. All principles and powers, rulers of darkness of this world, they bow to that name. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Even death, the most stubborn demon bows to that name. Go, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead. Freely you are given, freely give. Okay, all they saw was brain tumor. And then there was this mystery that was planted into that innocent person. You know, some bones, some bullet kind, and uh, and then the brain tumor disappeared. That's not brain tumor. That's satanic oppression. There is no kind of surgery that can remove it. Only the power of God. In the name of Jesus, child, leave. And then we went to the airport. Before we got to the airport, a shout. The child had come back to life. Hallelujah. Amen. That's what happens. Every testimony of the dead being raised back to life is a rescue from the grave. Sir. What do I call it? A rescue from the grave. I will open up your graves and bring you out of your graves. Mm. It's part of the package in the Bible. Yes, sir. Therefore, everyone appointed to that. Did you hear the testimony of that woman? They gave her three months to live. How many? Three months to live. Jesus stepped in and rescued her from the grave. Yes. Rescue. Rescue them from the grave. So, if your case is not curable, it must be repairable. If it's not repairable, it must be replaceable. And if it's not replaceable, it must be rescuable. You are coming out today by all means. You are coming out of that condition today by all means. You are coming out of that situation today by all means. Amen. Somebody believes that, let me hear your loudest, amen. amen. You believe that, let me hear your loudest, amen. amen. Now, here is the good news. Every everlasting mountain, every perpetual hill that's been staring you in the face over the years must clear off today. Lift up your right hand, everybody, and give God thanks. Give God thanks. Give God thanks. And give God thanks. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, help me to be a bona fide partaker of this midst of the year wave of glory. Help me to be a bona fide partaker of this midst of the year wave of glory. Help me to be a bona fide partaker of this year's midst of the year waves of glory. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Give the Lord the biggest clap of praise. Hallelujah. Very quickly, you are here in the service this morning and you are not born again yet. I'd like to pray with you. We are in a revival. God is turning multitudes back to himself. Amen. You can take your position in it. The price is fully paid. Just simply accept it. And then ask for him to forgive your sins 
then you become a member of his family. Hallelujah. That is something to look for. Wherever you are this morning, you like me to pray with you to be born again, to have Jesus forgive your sins, give you the free gift of eternal life, secure your place in eternity. Please stand to your feet and I'll pray with you. God bless you. God bless you. Stand to your feet and remain standing, please. Stand to your feet and remain standing. We are in the golden age of the church. Please stand. Amen. While we're praying for these precious souls, please, ushers, would you go around and make available the clearing operation by all means? And then, um, uh, and for signs and for wonders, and then operation by all means, covenant soul winning targets, and then uh, covenant of restoration for next Sunday. Amen. Remain standing, please. There are also people here tonight, I mean, this morning, that need to rededicate their life to Christ. They want to reconnect back to your Heavenly Father. They want to say bye bye to everything that is pulling you away from God. Wherever you are, please stand to your feet. I pray with you at the same time. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus? Stand to your feet. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus? Stand to your feet. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus? Stand to your feet. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus, stand to your feet. Amen. Now, everyone standing, please bow your heads in a moment. And pray this prayer of faith after me. Lift up your right hand to heaven. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Say it loud, Lord Jesus. I surrender my life to you today. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day you rose again. That I may be justified. Right now. I believe. My sins are now forgiven. I'm justified by your blood. I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm now a child of God. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Thank you, Jesus, for restoring me back to the faith. I will serve you by your help all the days of my life. Amen. Be blessed of the Lord in the name of Jesus. I cover each and every one of you today with the blood of Jesus. The grace that brought you in today will preserve you for life. You'll never step backward anymore. You never step back into darkness anymore. You have escaped today and you have escaped for life. In the name of Jesus. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Give the Lord a big hand of praise, everybody. Congratulations. Congratulations. Please complete those forms and ensure you submit them to those church officials around with you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Please stand to your feet, everybody. Let the stewards now come over and let's serve this mystery for the rescue of everyone here. Amen. Is any sick among you? Let them come up and pray this morning. Hallelujah. Please lift up your two hands to heaven, everyone, and give God thanks for bringing you into his presence this morning. Celebrate him for his good hand upon your life all through the past week. Lord, grant me an encounter this morning. Open up a new chapter to my life by your word today.
Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Among the blessings that come our way in a revival is outbreak of revelation. There's a season where we demonstrate our love for God. And when you are in love with God, you gain access to the deep things of God. It's a time we demonstrate our passion for God and for the interest of his kingdom. And with passion for God, you have unusual access to the deep things of the kingdom. If I call you no more friends, no more servants, but friends, because all that I have heard of my father, I have made known unto you. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. What God has in store for them that love him, but God has revealed it to us that love him by spirit. For the spirit of God searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. May each one return with a definite encounter with the world today. Yeah. There are some encounters that stay with you for life. May the encounter with the world today stay with you for life. I've come that you may have life and have life more abundantly. Now, so God has ordained that we enjoy life like a watered garden and like springs of water whose waters fail not. I've come that you may have life and have it at its best all the times. Now, grace to connect with what to make that a reality. In each one's life, receive an encounter with such world today. Yeah. Give the Lord a big hand of praise, and please, you may be comfortably seated. Amen. By the prompting of the Holy Spirit. And by the word of God, we have entered into another season of revival. Amen. Abaku chapter 3 verse 2. Oh Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known thy power. In wrath, remember mercy. The midst of the year is June and July, with five months on one side of the divide, five months on the other side of the divide. The midst of the year. Remember, I said in the midst of the years, so it's on annual basis. He makes it happen on annual basis. God's revival agenda is packaged. For the midst of the years. And the revival is packaged with treasures for every engaging believer. Which includes the clearing off of all everlasting mountains and not perpetual his on our path. The insurmountable mountains built by the devil against our destiny. It's also ordained to launch us to our high places. Habakkuk chapter 3, 17 to 18, as we keep engaging, rejoicing. My God, I shall rejoice in the Lord. I shall joy in the God of my salvation. Then he will come in. I'm not doing it mournfully. I'm doing it rejoicingly. God only responds to cheerful believers in their engagement. So you have to be cheerful 
to be among the people that will belong to their high places. Amen. Ever smiling in season and out of season. Hallelujah. My God. Amen. <laughs> Somebody asked me many years ago, Brother David, do you ever have a problem? I said, maybe it came, I didn't know. <laughs> maybe it came, I didn't know. Thy words were found and I did eat them. And they became the joy and rejoicing of my heart. Every genuine encounter with the words, tears joy. Loaded with amazing treasures. Now, watch. One of the blessings in redemption is God going forth for the salvation of his people. Verse 13. Thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people. So it's a season of harvesting souls into the kingdom. Verse 13 of it. Praise God. Now, um, verse 13 is before verse 17 and 18. Now, how much you engage with this harvest time agenda is what determines how high he will launch you into. My God. The word says, They that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. Daniel 12, 3. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever. That's the connection. He came forth for the salvation of his people. And revival is a move of the Spirit of God among his people. Can I hear your amen? amen. Which pours signs and wonders. Joel chapter 2, verse 28 to 30. In the last days, I poured my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall do dreams. Your young men shall see, shall see visions. And then um, it shall come to pass after, I mean, and upon thy servants and upon thy handmaidens in those days will I pour out my spirit. So it covers all classes of people, of all ages, all ages, all classes. A revival does not stop at the altar, it goes down to the pews, covers everybody. There were 120 in the upper room, including women and perhaps children. The Holy Ghost fell upon each of them. Like cloven tongues of fire on each of them, each of them, not only the eleven apostles that remain, on every one of them. So a revival is a move of the spirit among God's people that covers all classes and all ages of believers. Old, young, boys, girls, adolescents. My God. Now in the house of Cornelius in Acts 10, 24, he gathered all his kinsmen and all his near friends. Now, chapter 44, I mean, verse 44 of the same chapter, and the Holy Ghost fell on all them. All, all them, all them. A revival is the move of God among God's people, covering all ages, all classes, literate and illiterate. It doesn't matter who. Glory to God. Thou wentest forth. For the salvation of thy people. My God. Now that was in the last days. Now in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the Lord shall be established upon above all mountains. <laughs> Amen. And all nations shall flow into it. So a revival is ordained to lead to influx of masses of people into the house of God. Isaiah chapter 2 and verse 2 and 3. Micah chapter 4 and verse 1 and 2. So we must understand the purpose of a revival so as to maximize our place in it. Thank you, Jesus. So it's not a revival if there is no massive salvation of souls. It's not speaking big grammars and great teachings and people applauding and clapping. That, that's not revival. Revival manifests itself in signs and wonders and a massive salvation and in garden of souls into the kingdom. My God. We are in the midst of the year in another wave of a revival, a move of the spirit among God's people that hosts an enviable future for every engaging believer. You will not be left behind. You shall not be left behind. You shall not be left behind. You shall not be left behind. 
you shall not be left behind. You shall not be left behind. You shall not be left behind. Our teaching series for the month is captioned Commanding Signs and Wonders from the platform of a revival. We are on part one of it today. A revival is ordained the platform to put believers in command of signs and wonders. And how? As they engage in the demand of a revival to see souls saved and brought into the kingdom, he empowers us to gain command of the supernatural. Matthew 10, verse 1. He called his two disciples and gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. We are empowered to go forth and be in command of signs and wonders as we go. It gave them power to go. And so they went and preached. It says, go preach and heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead. Freely you are given, freely give. But it's seven and eight. So it, 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 we are empowered to command the supernatural by going. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall be my witnesses. You'll be on the go for me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the uttermost part of the world. We are empowered to be on the go for the salvation of men in a revival. And how much we return with determines our placement in the ultimate. How much we return with. It does not reward effort. It rewards results. You gain 10 more, my God. Now, have the authority over 10 cities. You gain 5 more, have the authority over 5, five, six, five, five cities. No explanation is tenable for promotion. No explanation is tenable for promotion. God does not reward efforts made. He rewards results obtained. Mark 16, verse 15 and 16. I mean, to 17, the Bible said, Go to all the world and preach the gospel. Whosoever believes that the baptized shall be saved, so I believe one shall be damned. And this sign shall follow. This sign shall be at the command of those who are on the go. This sign shall be at the command of those who are on the go. In my name, they shall cast out devils. Amen. They shall lay their hands upon the sick. If they take a deadly person, you shall not hurt them. And they went forth and preached everywhere. God also walked with them, confirming their command with signs and wonders. That's how to be in command. It's not in sitting down and being a regularized, chartered member of a church. Who comes to the church before the pastor comes? I mean, it doesn't matter. You are not on the go. You are not a candidate for command. You are not a candidate to command signs and wonders. Interestingly, we can get on the go on the prayer altar. That applies to our senior citizens, over pregnant women, nursing mothers. You can get on the go. Pray down the salvation of men. Pray for those foot soldiers who are on the field to have effect and impact as they go. God who sees your labor in secret, he will reward you openly. So every class of people in the body of Christ has an opportunity to engage with the demands of a revival for their own dramatic change of story. Everybody. Everybody. No one here shall be left behind. Only those who are in, on the go for Jesus in advancing his kingdom 
and promote in this kingdom are entitled to command the supernatural. It's not for decoration, it's for manifestation. It's not for decoration, it's for contribution. We are empowered to command the supernatural as we, we, we get committed to God and the interests of his kingdom in practical terms. In practical terms. In practical terms. Thank you, Jesus. So we expect massive salvation of souls in this midst of the year. As we get on the prayer altar on daily basis, as we get on the go for Jesus to our neighbors, our colleagues at work, our customers, our clients, our colleagues in business, just anybody, everywhere. And then we see God launching us into our high places. Can I hear your loudest amen? amen? So when Peter referred to that Joel chapter 2 in Acts uh, chapter 2 verse 14 to 17, he was talking about the last days, the appointment of the Spirit. And the first manifestation is 3,000 souls came into the kingdom. So every revival has massive salvation of souls as its primary validation. Primary validation. And then we saw signs and wonders brought 5,000 to Christ. As chapter 4 and verse 4, the healing of the man at the beautiful gate at 5,000 souls to the church. Signs and wonders went on the rampage. And then, multiple of men and women were added to the church. Acts chapter 5, verse 12 to 14. And then, again, the number of disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem by the word of God. Acts chapter 6 and verse 7. And then suddenly, almost the whole city came together. Now that tells you the primary purpose and mission of a revival. It is massive in gathering of souls into the kingdom and into church for their preservation. So we are not being ambitious. We are just connecting with the purpose of God for a revival. Thou wentest forth for the salvation of thy people. <laughs> Thou wentest forth for the salvation of their people. So he goes forth in the revival for the salvation of people. Amen. For the salvation of people. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's our mission for this month of June and July. And we have christened it Operation by all means. For he's gone forth for the salvation of of his people. Go forth for the salvation of his people. To the Jews I became a Jew. That I may win the Jews. To those without the law as without the law. Or do not without the law to Christ. Praise God. That I may win them that are without the law. I became all things to all men. That by all means I may win some. Salvation of souls yes, is God's primary mission in the revival. My God. Restoration of those who have gone away is God's primary purpose. Bring them back to light for a revival. So we are not being ambitious. Talk less of being over ambitious. It's the mission. And God wants to, you know, to move us from growth to flow. And all nations shall flow. Flow, 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 
before this season is over, we are going to be in a flow. We are going to be in a flow. Mark it. Some will come to you and say, I must go to church with you today. I must. Whether you put me in the boot or not, I must go with you to church today. I, go, I slept in the night and I saw me in that church and I know you are going there. So I must go with you today. You wake up one morning and ten men will be waiting at your door. You will go to hire a boss and put them inside. That's it away. So it's not about going there. Look, we have been in a revival in this church. But June and July, special revival time in heaven's agenda. We are going to give it all it takes. Amen. 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 Now, don't misunderstand me. I'm not a church growth crazy pastor. I'm a kingdom advancement addict. I've been in it long before I became a pastor. So it's not about being a pastor and then you know, I wanted to give Jesus a trek of 140 kilometers, 170, once for follow up, 170 kilometers. We were going to go, and there was no resources to go. I said, "Man, it's not a problem. Anybody, normal person, can trek 10 kilometers and rest. Another 10 kilometers and rest. We stop only 17 times. We'll be there. In truth, sir, then somebody came and knocked the door and brought a seed. I wasn't too happy." I wanted a walk with Jesus. I was not a pastor. Look, it is where your heart is that defines where your investment is. I don't have anything to hide from Jesus. My strength, my vigor, the little sense he gave me. I put everything together to buy my way into his heart. Things are working for me. My God, every day, every day. 60 days, I've never been. I've never borrowed. I've never stolen anybody's item. Now, bless. There are many in this church on that wavelength today. Many in this commission at home and abroad that are operating on that wavelength today. May you join this club this time. I've never borrowed. Yet I've never lacked. My God. Since he vaccinated me with Matthew 63, you know what I call it vaccination? Not uh, the fake coronavirus vaccination. <laughs> People that took it are under stress. I mean the vaccination of the truth. Yes, sir. Since he put that thing on my shoulder, I've been rolling. I'm rolling. I'm rolling. Today, may you receive. Your vaccination of revival. Amen. May you receive your vaccination of revival. Amen. It will keep you passing for Jesus all the days of your life. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Therefore, from June 7, which is tomorrow, to July 34, which is Saturday. We shall be all out by all means to see so saved in their multitudes. Can I hear your loudest amen? amen? Our senior citizens will be out there on the prayer altar in their own time, in their own places. And those who are able to gather where we are gathering at the various locations around the city, you pray for one hour and you go back home and enjoy your life. All the young men like me, we hit the streets. We pray in the morning, we hit the streets in the afternoon, we get people into the kingdom, and we return rejoicing. Glory to God. I said, who was Anybody? Under 75 is a young man. Because Abraham saw a vision at 75. And your young men shall see vision. God never lies. So you're a young man. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. You know why I'm still on the go? I'm a young man. Hallelujah. I'm a young man. Praise God. I'm a young man. So get ready. Don't look 80 when you are 30. Don't look 90 when you are 40. I say the Lord bless you. 
<laughs> because you'll be here till 120. Amen. Let God have a reason to keep you here. By being a value adding member of his family. A value adding member of his family. That's what the Lord will make of you. Amen. Give the Lord the biggest hand of praise. Operation by all means begins tomorrow, and that includes you. Can I hear you loudest? Amen. amen. We also have a by all means covenant soul winning target with a list of eight names that you will prayerfully locate that you want to see step into the kingdom because God wants all men to be saved. The most unreachable. The most incommunicado person around you is a candidate for salvation. So put their names on. We'll give you a card of this, each one, and then begin to pray over them and asking God for the wisdom required to have a such souls into the kingdom. This apart from a general go to the field, throw the seed, get people to receive the word. Can I hear your amen? amen. Because by all means every winner is under a covenant obligation for two minimum established souls by the end of this operation two souls who will dance to the front with august 1 2021 we will do harvest thanksgiving what do i call it harvest thanksgiving the, your two minimum will join you your eight will join you your ten will join you no usher can tell you to go back. Amen. You are just coming Amen. with your harvest. Amen. We will line the harvest up on all the eyes. Yes. Can I hear your amen? amen? Your harvest will be there. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Listen to this. There is no one that engages with God without proofs. When your cloud is full, your rain will fall. But to sustain your rainy season, you must keep filling the cloud. After every rainfall, the cloud clears. Another cloud must form before the next rainfall comes. It's a mystery. Ecclesiastes 11 verse 3. When your cloud is full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. Amen. And he's talking of stewardship. Cast your bread upon the waters. Can I hear your amen? After many days to find them again. When your cloud is full, your rain must fall. After every rainfall, the cloud becomes clear. And another cloud must have to be formed before the next rainfall comes. That's why many people who were once in a rainy season have entered into drought. Because they stop filling their cloud. You know why we have been in a rainy season in this church over the years? The same thing. Oh Lord, save the soul. Save souls. Oh Lord, establish them in the faith. Oh Lord, rescue them from perishing. Oh Lord, we've been doing that same 40 years. So there is no dry season. We keep forming the cloud. And the rain has no trouble to, to keep falling. So you need to know, it's not a once and for all engagement. It's a once and again engagement. It's a once and again what? It's a once and again engagement. 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 The rainy season will end where your engagement ends. So keep at it. This illustration may help. There's a man called J.C. Penny. J.C. Penny was an addicted tighter. At a point, God was blessing and blessing and blessing. So he began to rationalize his tight. And then suddenly, the rainfall wow. began to dry up and dry up until he entered into a drought and the business went bankrupt. Oh God, oh God, I bind the devil. Wait, wait, wait. He said, no, remember where you have fallen and get back. And he got back and the rainfall began. The rain season began. Once beaten, twice shy. 
That's what it is with your engagement with God. You keep engaging and engaging to sustain your rainy season. You keep engaging and engaging to sustain your rainy season. Can I tell brethren here, saints of God, we have never had a dry season in our ministry. Same thing. Same thing. Same thing. Same thing. I sent to the press to print 500,000 copies of every title of tracks that we have. A week. A week. Now, you know the millions. It is his money. It's for his purpose. And we are everybody. You say you have got one. Get another one. You will get and get until you get to the kingdom. <laughs> you will get and get until you get to the kingdom. That's it. And we've been doing that since 84. Consciously. Consciously. You don't have to suffer a drought. Take responsibility. Take responsibility. Now, I can tell you this. Your engagement this time will level out all those seemingly insurmountable mountains in your life. Yeah. They will clear off as if they never existed. Yeah. You will sing a new song. Go. Yeah. You will sing a new song. Yeah. And what more, as you get greedy in your pursuit of soul, it will take you from far behind to the far in front. It will launch you to your high places. It will launch you to your high places. It will launch you to your high places. You remember he that winner souls his wife, and the wife shall inherit glory. This season must end the trace of every trace of shame and reproach in everyone's life. Amen. Nobody will dare to reproach you again. Amen. But they that turn into righteousness shall be that shall as the stars forever. God will cause the giant in you to rise this time. So a revival season is ordained for the rise of giants in the body of Christ. By engaging with God's primary agenda for a revival, massive salvation and ingathering of souls. That's God's purpose. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lift up your right hand to heaven and ask God for grace. For maximum commitment to the demands of a revival in this awesome season. Ask God for commitment. Grace to stay committed. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Now, what's a revival? Among others, a revival is a celebration of divine visitation among God's people ordained for our supernatural change of story. A revival is a celebration of divine visitation among God's people ordained for our supernatural change of story. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. What will he do, sir? He will save. He will save. Again, the primary purpose of every divine visitation is the salvation of his people. He will save. Uh, who are his people? All souls are mine. He will save. All the unsaved by his visitation. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his law. He will joy over thee with singing. He will turn you to a celebrity. That's the meaning. But he will say, as you engage with that agenda of salvation, then he turns you to a celebrity. The giant in you comes alive. He will say, he will say. Now watch. Verse 19. Watch what he said. He said in verse 19 of that, he said, Behold, at that time, <laughs> so there's a shadow, at that time, as you engage with me, I will undo all that afflict thee. 
and I will save her that hold her. And God that heard her was driven out. And I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. Amen. That's what a divine visitation offers. Eradicates shame and reproach and turn them to fame and praise. My God, I will undo all that afflict thee, all everlasting mountains, all perpetual hills that won't let you go. I will undo them. And get you fame and praise in every land where you have been put to shame. Now, look at verse 20. Amen. At that time, I will bring you again. So if you have lost anything, I will restore it. Even in the time that I gather you, for I will make you a name. You can't make yourself a name. I will make you a name and a praise among all people of the earth. <laughs> that's an army of global phenomenon that's people rising from behind the background of life coming to the lamb light of life like a dream of the night at that time at that time at that time I will launch you to your high places that's the meaning now it's at the time of a revival that's what it is that's how it works a celebration of divine visitation was a revival. A revival also can be defined as a spiritual awakening that causes the giant in us to rise. That's what we are saying. Ezekiel 37 and verse 1 to 14, the valley of dry bones, and there arose out of that valley a mighty host unto God. Every move of the spirit will always lead to the rise of giants. How do I know? How do we know when we're in a revival? A revival is set to occur when the heart of men begin to pant after God and the interest of his kingdom as a way of life. Panting after God and the interest of his kingdom as a way of life. David said, my heart panted after the O God as the heart panted after the streams of water. Amen. When shall I see you? My heart is longing for you. I want you more than I want anything else. Thank you, Jesus. My soul thirsted for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before thee? The heart of man panting after God and the interest of his kingdom. And they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. That's the blessing of it. So it's not for free. Seeking God is not at a loss. You shall not want any good thing. Thank you, Jesus. Seek you for the kingdom of God and righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Number two, when walking the fear of God becomes our new way of life. You are, you, you are not living anyhow. You have just decided to change your approach. In the fear of God, whatever God hates, you hate with passion. Whatever God loves, you love only savagely. The fear of God. They, Joseph said, but I fear God. See how much his life counted for the fear of God. That's what the revival does. It renews your spiritual life and my spiritual life. May this season fulfill this mission in everyone's life. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. In a revival, in the move of the spirit, I will restore the years that the locust has eaten. The canker worm, the caterpillar, the palm worm, my great, my, which, my great army which I sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord. Your God that has dealt wonderfully with you and my people shall never be ashamed. Now verse 27, and ye shall know that I am in the midst of thee. God in the midst of us. And that I am the Lord your God. And none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. Now, God is saying, I will restore whatever the enemy has stolen. So in this revival season, everything you may have lost, whether in your health, anything you may have lost, in your business, your career, God is saying, I will restore. Yeah. 
to prove that I am in your midst. I will restore. I will restore. I will restore. Get ready. Your reign of restoration is falling this time. Let me hear your loudest amen. And what more we enjoy express answers to prayers. John 15, 16. You have not chosen me, but I've chosen you. That you should go forth and bring forth fruit. That your fruit shall abide. That whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, my God, he will give it to you. You get involved in this agenda. Whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. You are on with me in this move. Whatever you ask of the Father, he will give it to you. Speedy answers to prayers. Can I hear your loudest amen? amen. Can I hear your loudest amen? amen? As mentioned before, you are on the go. You are in command of signs and wonders. You are set on the go. In truth and in deed, he puts you in command of the supernatural. Because he knows many will never believe except they see signs and wonders. So as you go forth with confidence, say, Jesus sent me to you. To proclaim a blessing on you and to show you how to sustain the blessing. And then you lead them to Christ in prayers. Do you want to be blessed? Oh yes, that's the answer. Oh yes, that's the answer. Some two fellows went to a place to witness, I mean to, to share the gospel in Abuja. And they said, go away, go away, go away, go away. They said, you are blessed, you are blessed. Okay, come, come. Nobody in his right mind rejects blessing. Nobody, nobody. We got to a place in our outreach and nobody was gathering. It was a fallow place. And I began to proclaim the blessing. They started jumping out. Wow. Like chicken from the wow. pen. They started jumping out. Amen. They were shouting amen from wherever they were coming. Amen. My God. Amen. The blessing was gathering them. Amen. Yes. We got 62 people saved. Amen. And that's what. God sent Christ to bless us. Not to condemn us, to bless us. That was the secret that led me in our outreaches. And I saw 97,000 people saved within that period. Proclaiming the blessing and showing them how to retain the blessing by stepping out of darkness into the kingdom of light. And they don't want the blessing to be lost, so they want to be saved. Glory to God. One man here has been in drugs for 25 years. How many years? His two sons were with him in that business. Home was hell on earth. And he saw me under the bridge, proclaiming a blessing. He stood there. Amen. 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 He got to him and told his wife, it was a Saturday. We are going to church tomorrow. The wife was surprised. He has never been in church for 25 years. We are going to church tomorrow. Because I met Bishop. He said we should come to church tomorrow. <laughs> he got here himself, the sons, everybody. They are members of this church today. <laughs> By the power of the blessing of the gospel. Now, look at Romans 15, 29. So don't be a hardliner. You go to hell. Many of them are still, they are in hell already. So what's the harassment for? Now, Romans 15, 29. Now, hear what Paul said. I'm very sure that when I come unto you, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. Going in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel is a dragnet of souls into the kingdom. Amen. Amen. The number of my sons and daughters that we got on the feed are here in this church today. I mean, having a nice time with Jesus. By the gospel of blessing. By the gospel of blessing. By the gospel of blessing. But my friend, just, Jesus sent me to you to proclaim a blessing on your life. Amen. Okay, son. Be blessed. Amen. You and all that pertains to you. Amen. I command your head blessed. Amen. The work of your hand blessed. Amen. But listen. To retain the blessing, you need to step out of the kingdom of darkness mm. to the kingdom of light. Mm. And Jesus is the only way there. You want to be saved? Oh yeah. Bow your heads. 
That's a soul for Christ. That's what? A soul for Christ. Somebody's soul is changing. Amen. You don't need to quote Joshua. He doesn't know that. When you say Joshua, I think it's somebody by his house. And if that man is a very bad man, he won't listen to you again. <laughs> He's talking about Joshua. He said, no, Joshua. He's a bad man, my <laughs> He has never seen a Bible. So what is Joshua? He remembers why in his village. Who was a notorious man. Hey, so this man knows Joshua. <laughs> God forbid. I can't listen to him. <laughs> praise God. Praise God. Give the Lord a big clap of praise. Very quickly to our covenant day of healing and deliverance. And I like us to please recognize that Jesus is the ultimate of man's search on any health matters. Doctors will tell you only God can do this. And the father judges no man is committed all judgment to the son. They are simply saying only Jesus can do this. Only Jesus can do this. And how is that so? There are many issues of health that are direct oppressions of the devil. And only Jesus has the answer. He went about doing good and healing all them that were oppressed of the devil. Only him has the capacity to set free anyone oppressed of the devil no medical equipment under heaven can locate an oppression of the devil in a human body no MRI no scan no latest development of technology can locate it only Jesus Who is seated far above all principalities and powers and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but those in that which is to come. And it's made him to be the head of all principalities and powers for the church to secure the dignity of the church. That's why he did it. Ephesians 1 21 to 22. For the church. Only Jesus has the answer to oppressions of the devil that relates to man's health and well-being. Only Jesus. Somebody said to have brain tumor and only to bring out four terrible things from his mouth and the brain tumor ceased. It's an oppression of the devil. You can do that brain surgery, it won't make a difference. Because there is something behind the saying that no medical eye can find. Somebody's under stress and vomited a padlock with three keys. There is no MRI that can catch that. You can do it forever. You won't find it. So you have come to your final bus stop as far as restoration of your health is concerned. Amen. Jesus is the final bus stop. Amen. Amen. Now, Mysteriously, he hears us principally by his word. He sent his word, and what? He healed them. Psalm 102, 107, verse 20. And deliver them from all their destructions. He hears us and delivers us by his word. I said to that woman, you can't find anywhere where Jesus is said to have asthma, you know, uh, seizure, autism. You don't have it. And it stopped. By his word. By his word. By his word. I said, I should take this communion. Is the white blood corpuscle that fights against strangers in your body. And then the Lushwagas in India getting set for bone marrow cancer treat, bone marrow transplant paying 200,000 naira every month 
for treatment. Now, looking for money for bone marrow cancer. And Jesus, from this altar, hid him in India. Checked up on Tuesday morning. Can't find it anymore. He hears by his wall. A young man sat down here from Cameroon, eaten up by HIV AIDS. His body was growing fungi, green, like a tree. As the world was going forth, the spirit was vibrating, vibrating, vibrating. Went for a recheck. HIV free. I met him two years later in Cameroon. Now a minister of the gospel. Rescued from the dead. He heals us by his word. Now, the word heals us in four, through four main channels. One, the word of God is medicinal, so it kills. It's the bomb in Gilead. It's able to handle all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 22. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people restored? The world is God's balm in Gilead that's able to deal with all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Jesus went through their synagogues preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Matthew 5, I mean 4, 23. So, the word heals all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. What's in the world? Himself took from infirmity. So, it's a forgotten matter. It's already paid for. It's your right to live a healthy life. If you are saved, healing is your bread. Amen. Amen. And your heavenly father owes you that bread. If a man does not provide for his house, for the people of his own household, he has denied the faith and he was an infidel. So God is obligated to keep you healthy. Can I hear your amen? amen. Number two, in case any part of anyone's body has been damaged, God's word repairs. I mean, God's word is surgical. It can repair every damaged part of our body. Woman, thou art loosed. And she came out of it and stood upright. Luke chapter 13, verse 12 and 13, and then verse 16 and 17. By the word, God repaired the spinal issue. And she stood upright. Can I hear your amen? amen? By the word, God gave strength to the ankles and the knees of that crippled man at the beautiful gate. That's orthopedic surgery. He did it for free. Remember Genesis 2, 21 and 22? He opened up Adam, removed a rib, closed it back, and without rib from the woman, is the master surgeon. It can repair any damaged part of anyone's body. Therefore, whatever has been damaged around anyone's life, whether through accident, through whatever, whatever is deformed, whatever is not in shape, in the name of the Lord Jesus, that situation of stroke and paralysis, in the name of Jesus, whatever has been damaged, that poor hearing, that partial deafness, that total deafness, that partial blindness that total blindness whatever has been damaged i declare them repaired by the surgical power of the world this morning <laughs> remember in the beginning was the world and that world was the god and that world was god and god opened up adam i'm the lord i tell not is still opening up people today to repair whatever has gone damaged in their body Therefore, every damaged part of your system is declared repaired today. The word of God is quick and powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It's able to pierce 
between the spirit and the soul and it's a designer of the intents of the heart it's able to get through to any part of anyone's body god's word is surgical it's able to refix you today my god by his war is refixing every damaged part of your life we met a woman in kampala in our meeting and i was talking to them about the surgical part of the war and so she went home this woman was a victim of an accident where all the people in the bed could die only herself survived but all her ribs were broken so they put her in a kind of casket to keep the ribs together so that the pain would not be excruciated now in the night the master surgeon showed up because every word you believe you have committed god to confirm it every word you truly receive and believe you have committed god to confirm it the master surgeon showed up and then took her by the chest Woke up in the morning, free forever. That's a specialist orthopedic surgery. Fix the ribs. Life restore. Whatever has been stolen from your body, whatever has been damaged in your system, my God will fix it. I ministered along this line in one of our London conventions and there was a lady there who had had a major problem on her waist. In the night, three fellows showed up like in a theater and began to pull out some strands like spaghetti, yellowish, from her waist. Drawing them out, drawing them out, drawing them out. And they said, what time is it? 5.30. She woke up and the time was exactly 5.30. Gone forever. The master surgeon will visit someone here. Yeah. Now, in case that damaged part is irreparable, amen, amen. because it's not there anymore. Like one of us here had our two ovaries removed. In a surgery to save her life and she wasn't married yet now that was the end of giving birth medically so there's not to repair but it can be replaced so if it's not repairable it must be replaceable if it's not there for repair it will replace it well call long story short she was in one impartation service like this. Got pregnant immediately after. No ovaries. No ovaries. No ovaries. First son. No ovary. Second son. No ovary. Before she had her second son, we were in a meeting. And I said, hey, come on here. When are you expecting your second son? She looked at me and said, now. And she became pregnant. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. God who did the first one is not tired. He will do the second one. The two of them are graduates of Covenant University today. That is ovaryless sons. They are sons that were born without ovaries. You know why? He replaced the ovaries. Whatever has been lost in your life, my God will replace them. All those cases of SS turn A, he replaced their blood. He did what? Thank you, Jesus. Why? Because the word of God is creative. It's able to create what does not exist. It's able to what? Create what does not exist. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and he created them by his word he's still a creator god he's still creating things today 
whatever is not repairable in your life because it does not exist, my God will create it. Yeah. And finally, God's word delivers. You know how? All our oppressions on earth are by the powers of darkness. And the word of God is light. And that light shines in darkness, and darkness cannot handle it. John chapter 1 verse 5. So when the word comes alive, darkness clears the way. That's how God delivers. Did you see how that man was delivered in Job 33 verse 21 to 25? His flesh was consuming away that could not be saved. And his bones that were not saved, they stick out. His soul drawn nigh to the grave. And his soul to the destroyer. But if there be a, an, an interpreter with him, a messenger, one among the thousand, who will show unto man the revelation of the world. My God. God will say, we must unto him and say, deliver him from going down to the pit and find a ransom. So God's word delivers. It delivers because it's light. And the one holding you bound is darkness. So when light comes, darkness gives way. Can I hear your loudest amen? Yeah. So today, in the name of Jesus, I decree your rescue from every oppression of the devil. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Yeah. I decree your rescue from every oppression of the devil. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Shortly, we shall be looking at um, me partaking of the mystery of the anointing from the altar. Fire from the altar. Watch. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. So every yoke of sickness and disease tormenting anyone's life right now, as this oil comes on your head, I declare them all destroyed. For anyone without any sickness in his life, with this mark, no arrow of the wicked will hit at you anymore in your life. The decree of heaven over your life will remain, touch not my anointed. Everyone that planned your evil we go into it themselves. In the name of Jesus Christ. And so shall it be. Thank you, Father. Lift up your right hand and give God thanks and praise. Give God thanks and praise for his word. Give him thanks and praise for his word. In Jesus' precious name we are praying. Amen. Very quickly this morning, there are people here that need to just say, Jesus, save my soul. Jesus, forgive my sins. Jesus, make me a member of your household. Jesus, rescue me from the past of darkness. You want to be free? You want to be saved? You want to be born again? Wherever you are this morning, please stand to your feet. I'd like to pray with you. God bless you. God bless you. Jesus, save my soul. Stand to your feet. Until a man is saved, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Stand to your feet. Wherever you are, you want Jesus to save your soul. Stand to your feet. God bless you. God bless you. Many more are standing up. Wherever you are, get up on your feet right now. It's your chance for a change of story. Don't miss it for anything. God bless you. Some people are standing up to join us. Join us quickly right now. I'm praying for you right there where you are. I pray for you right there where you are. So stand to your feet and step out of darkness into light. Now, at the same time, there are other people that need to rededicate their life to Christ. They are like a broken up branch. I mean, it's, it's dead. It's only a matter of time. You want to reconnect back quickly to your source, to your Father in heaven. Wherever you are, you want to rededicate your life to Christ, please stand to your feet. You want to rededicate your life to Christ, please stand to your feet. You want to rededicate your life to Christ? Please stand to your feet. You want to rededicate your life to Christ? Please stand to your feet. You want to rededicate your life to Christ? Please stand to your feet. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus? Please stand to your feet. And God bless us as you do. Now, everyone standing 
both for the first call and the second please bow your heads for prayers wherever you are and then lift up your right hand to heaven you can stop filling those forms for now and pray this prayer of faith after me say after me lord jesus forgive me all my sins wash me with your blood i believe you died for me on the third day you rose again that i may be justified right now i proclaim you as my lord and my savior and i believe my sins are now forgiven by your help i will serve you all the days of my life thank you jesus for saving my soul thank you jesus for restoring me back to the faith thank you lord i'll never go back by your help keep your hands up father lord your grace has brought these precious people in let the same grace preserve them i cover each of you right now with the blood of jesus remain covered till the day of his appearing you never step back into darkness anymore grace to keep following jesus all the days of your life from triumph to triumph unto eternity receive it right now in jesus precious name amen congratulations 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 please complete those slips and pass them on to those church officials around with you and um, very importantly we have believers foundation class every monday in over 740 locations across lagos and Ottawa. please avail yourself the opportunity and be one of them it holds every monday 6 to 7 30 pm and you go for only two mondays then you're empowered to live a triumphant christian life you'll never miss it forever in jesus name good news 590 people were baptized in water yesterday 590 people went through water baptism yesterday another good news god has planted we got an update right here 11,980 new homes in this church this year come and give the lord a big hand of praise in the same vein you'll be receiving great ovations every step of your life this year you'll be hearing congratulations everywhere you turn this year for all those who have opened their doors to accommodate the ark of god your life will never run dry of testimony for all those precious people who are now serving ministers and assistants and secretaries the oil on your head will never run dry. Amen. And the proof of your stewardship shall no longer be hidden. Amen. God shall be rewarding everyone here openly. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please let the stewards uh, get out to, the old, to their locations of stewardship. And then, please know, revival time is work time. It's an ever-demanding time. So lift up the hands and hang down and the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet. Lest that which is left be turned out of the way or rather let it be healed. It's work time, but the work is worth it. For the demand of the present cannot be compared with the weight of glory that's in store for you. Therefore, we are going to be embarking this week to give it a great start in both morning raid and evening raid give the lord a big hand of praise so behind him having morning prayer raids and time 8 to 10 a.m and that is a forum for all of our senior citizens all nursing mothers and all those on the line for miracle jobs and for all members on their way to work and from work and then we have also morning and evening 
gospel ray for young men like me to get out on the street and share Jesus with others and with confidence in God to command signs and wonders in their behalf. Praise the Lord. Those going to work will be doing that as they go to work and when they're coming back, they'll be doing that when they're coming back. If they have break time in their environment, they reach out to one or two people out there. All souls are mine. We will get them on. And evening raid is 5 to 6 p.m. for the prayer time. And evening raid for all of us in our respective places is all the time. Can I hear your amen? You will laugh. My God will make you to laugh. Shame and reproach will be far from your dwelling. In the name of Jesus Christ. Well, you know the good news? Every fruit bearing branch is ordained to remain fit because the laborers are few. Therefore, by this your engagement, throughout the days of your life, which are very many, if Jesus studies, you will not know the meaning of sickness and disease. <laughs> Thou shalt serve. I shall bless and I shall take sickness away from you because I need more people to serve me and they are very few. I'm committed to keep you fit. Every brand that bears fruit, it purges that it may bring forth more fruit. It keeps fit. It keeps fit. You shall remain physically, emotionally, materially fit for his assignment. Therefore, the content of this vessel is declared the holy anointing oil and is sent forth to destroy every yoke of sickness and disease and every oppression of the devil on any man's life. It's happening today. It says it shall come to pass in that day. In that day. Today is that day for you. Whatever is not curable will be repairable. Whatever is not repairable will be replaceable. <laughs> and whatever defies all those measures will be rescuable. <laughs> My God will bear you out of every oppression of the devil today. <laughs> and so shall it be. <laughs> Lift up your right hand and begin to say enough. It's enough. Tear that challenge. Take it up. Tear that challenge. You aspire today. Today's your expiry date. High blood pressure, hypertension, cancer. Today's your expiry date. Heart problem, liver problem. Today's your expiry date. Today's your expiry date. Migraine, waste pain. The root of barrenness. Impotency. Today is your expiry day. Heart palpitation. Growth in the body. Today is your expiry day. In Jesus. Precious name, we have prayed. Please engage your heart with faith and walk in your liberty. Today marks the end of that plague in your life. Your testimony is established this week. Your next checkup will show that you are free at last. A touch in the bowl and on your forehead and pass it under one second. Quickly, 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 quickly. And do that with fervency of faith. Do that with violent faith. I'm free. It shall come to pass in that day. Today is that day in my life. I'm free at last. I'm free forever. I'm free at last. I'm free forever. Call that thing by name and free yourself from his harassment. Call that thing by name and free yourself from his harassment. Call that thing by name and free yourself from his harassment. 
your miracle is instant. It's taking place now. It's already happening. 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 You are free at last. You are free forever. You are free at last. You are free forever. You are free at last. You are free forever. The violent take it by faith. 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 But if you use God's side by faith. Take it by faith. Take it by faith. The violent take it by force. That political man, God is owned by force. Take it by force. The force of faith. Take it by force. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody take it. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. It's your turn. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. If you are partaking of that ministry, just stand to your feet while the choir leads us in praise. It's done. It's done. It's done. I hear the sound of the hammer of the Lord. I hear the sound. Of the hammer of the Lord, the sound of praise, the sound of war, the hammer of the Lord, the hammer of the Lord, the hammer of the Lord is marching on. I hear the sound of the hammer. I hear the sound of the hammer of the Lord. The sound of praise, the sound of war. Praise the Son of God. 
biggest hand of praise. Where you are on your way to your high places, everything is answering in your favor from now. As you remain committed to favoring the matters of his kingdom, you will never run out of favor in your life. Please, if you got your copies of the material circulator, leave them up right now and ask God to make you a bona fide partaker of this awesome wave of glory that's taking place between June and July. Hallelujah. Ask God to make you an awesome partaker of the wave of glory taking place in this midst of the year. Come on now, take it. Take it. Take it. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. I decree the breath of the Holy Ghost upon these materials Amen. to grant every one of us insight and revelation Amen. to make a full proof of this season. Amen. Operation by all means will deliver in your life. Amen. Now all that believe and care to say it, why not? What you don't declare, God cannot confirm. Lord, I believe you for minimum two established souls into your kingdom and this church in this prophetic season. If you want to, say it. Lord, I believe you for minimum two established souls in this church in this prophetic season of June and July. Minimum two that will stand by me on August 1 Thanksgiving, Harvest Thanksgiving, to celebrate your faithfulness. Lord, I believe you for it. In the name of of Jesus Christ. Now, if you believe him for it, we have this uh, card by all men's covenant so many targets. You have to fill out eight names here that you trust God to, to bring into the kingdom and establish in the faith through you. And according to the parable of the sower, minimum two of them shall stand. Many of you will have eight of them with you. You not only have eight, they will also have their own. They will come to you, their own. They, they will be your children. Those ones they are bringing will be your grandchildren. Amen. Now, your grandchildren in the city will also bring their children. Amen. And so you have great grandchildren. Amen. That's what the Lord will make this season to be in your life. Amen. Many wake up in the morning and say, We will go with you today. Yes. We must go with you today by all means. That shall be your experience. Amen. It's done. Amen. No breakdown. All through this season and all through the days of your life. Let us share the goodness of the Lord in fellowship, everybody. God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Welcome to 2021, your year of supernatural turnaround. Amen. We are in for the best of time this season. Yeah. God is rewriting the story of many in this house. Yeah. It shall be a mist of the year no one will forget in a hurry. Yeah. It shall be a mist of the year you never, never forget in a hurry. Amen. It shall be a season of divine visitations indeed. Amen. It will come along with massive dimensions of manifestations. Amen. God will be launching many here into their high places. God will be launching many here into their high places. Amen. Jesus wept over Jerusalem because they knew not the time of their visitation. Revival is ordained a time of divine visitation among God's people. It's ordained to terminate all forms of frustration all forms of failures, stagnation, 
defeat, open up new chapters to God's people. Now, that shall be your experience in this midst of the year. Yeah. You never experience a setback anymore in your life. His word lives and abides forever, and so, if he revives his work in the midst of the year, that's what he does. He did yesterday, we'll do today, we'll do tomorrow. It's the same. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So in this midst of the year, I see your spiritual life revived. Yeah. Your prayer life revived. Yeah. The quality of your work with God enhanced Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, here am I in another midst of the year. Revive me, spirit, soul, and body. Go ahead and pray. Revive me, spirit, soul, and body. Revive my spiritual life. Revive my prayer life. Revive my passion for souls. Revive me, spirit, soul, and body. Deliver him from everything that wants to destroy me. Revive my spiritual life. Revive my prayer life. Revive my passion for souls. Revive my giving life. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Lord, we are here at your feet. Jesus, we are here at your feet waiting to receive from you. Let no one return without an encounter with you today. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Welcome again to 2021, your year of supernatural turnaround. And so shall it be. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. And please, you may be comfortably seated. Thank you, Jesus. The midst of the year is ordained a revival season in God's agenda. Habakkuk chapter 2, chapter 3 and verse 2. Revive thy work, O Lord. In the midst of the years, in the midst of the years, make known, you put on the, thy power. In wrath, remember mercy. In the midst of the year, revive thy work, O God. Make bare your power from his hands. There was horns which are the hiding place of his power. Make bare your power. And by his power, he levels out all everlasting mountains and all perpetual hills. As you keep engaging with the demand of that revival, rejoicing, he becomes your strength and launches you to your high places. Now, that's God's agenda that's the content of his revival is to rewrite the story of his people just like the valley of the dry bones the bones were very dry all hope gone then came the spirit of god began to move in that valley and then they arose from that valley of worthlessness a mighty host unto god ezekiel 37 1 to 14 
the revival is the move of the spirit that caused the giants and God's people to rise. My prayer is that no one will miss out of this awesome season in God's agenda. Amen. The midst of the year is simple. June and July, five months on either side of the divide. Five year, five year, midst of the year. Simple. June and July, the midst of the year. Praise God. Something unusual will break forth Amen. in your own life Amen. that will keep your life shining from glory to glory all the days of your life. Amen. Let me hear your loudest. Amen. Amen. Our teaching series for the month is captioned Sunday services commanding signs and wonders from the platform of a revival. We are empowered to be witnesses, not empowered for decoration. And we saw this empowerment demonstrated. Matthew chapter 10, verse 1, he called his two disciples and gave them power against unclean spirits and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease and said to them go and preach heal the sick as you go cleanse the lepers raise the dead freely you are given freely give verse 8 so empowerment for science is the exclusive preserve of men and women on the go for Christ it's not for sit down, title, carrying, <laughs> applaud, receiving. We are empowered to command signs as we get on the go for Jesus. Amen. So only those on the go for Jesus are empowered to command the supernatural. Now, Mark chapter 16, verse 15, go to all the world and preach the gospel. Whosoever believes and is baptized shall be saved. Whosoever believes not shall be damned. And this sign shall be at the command of those on the go. <laughs> so, we are in command as we remain on the go. Either on the prayer altar or in passionately reaching out for the lost. We are empowered to command signs being on the go for the expansion, the advancement of the kingdom of God. Now, you don't need no title, you don't need no calling, it's every believer's calling. I only had a calling to be in 1981, I've been on the crusade ground since 1876. Since 76. You are in command of the supernatural, young or old, being on the go for Christ. Amen. You are in command of the supernatural, being on the go for Christ. Young or old, middle-aged, schooled or unschooled. If you take any daily person, shall not hurt you. You're on the go. You turn upon service and scorpion and over all the powers of the enemy, you're on the go. Now, so it holds personal security, personal defense, personal color, personal beauty for you. You move on that wavelength to a point where you just become a sign. You are not looking for sign, you are, your presence is a sign. Your presence in any circumstance is a sign. You step into a place, things happen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Remember, I and the children whom the Lord has given me, they are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts who dwells in Mount Zion.
commanding signs and wonders from the platform of a reviver. Getting committed to the demands of a reviver puts you in command of signs and wonders. Luke chapter 9 verse 1 he called his twelve disciples and gave them power and authority over all devils and to kill diseases. And verse 6 and so they went and they departed and went through the towns preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. Sin, sin. Just get passionately on the go for Jesus and you flow in signs and wonders naturally. Naturally, sir. Naturally. Now watch. I have never begged for one thing since 76. And I've not lived without food one day. I've never borrowed a cloth to wear. That's been a sign. And that's where you belong. That's where every child of God belongs. I and the children whom the Lord has given me, they are for signs and wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts who dwells in Mount Zion. You know, signs and wonders are not new. There is no sign in the New Testament that, that there was not there in the Old Testament. Including raising of the dead, including the dry bones of Elijah, Hallelujah. quickening the dead back to life. Yes. My friend, Hallelujah. what was it? Their passion for God puts them in command of the supernatural. Hmm. Their passion for God, sir. There is more to it than the Holy Ghost, sir. Hmm. Glory. The Holy Ghost only provides the help to sustain your passion for God. But you need a passion for God to qualify to be a command of supernatural. Oh, this guy, 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 give me bread, give me water, give me. That's not the way there. Oh Lord, I need a house. Be shouting. I'd never pray for one. But what is a house to me now, for God's sake? What is a house to me? Something will break loose in your life. Amen. Now, just watch. This church has been pursuing kingdom affairs yes, in 40 years. Yes, Our prayer format has not changed. Yes, you, Yet, we have not stopped advancing. Thank you, Understand it. That's true. That's true. Passion for God. Yes, Passion for the affairs of his kingdom. Abraham, oh Lord, don't destroy Zoro and Gomorrah. Don't destroy. If you see 50, we will destroy. Passion for God. Joseph, how can I do this? I sin against God. God, God, God. God, I'm a slave today, but my God is still there. Yes. Nehemiah could not sleep. Was in the fast. For people who are suffering, he wasn't suffering, he was in the palace. That's the way it works. Give the answer and say, Oh God, where are you? Would they be tormenting us like this forever? Passion for God's people. That's the way to it. Elisha said, Elijah said, I've been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. I've been very jealous. They have thrown down the altar. Man, that man went by a spacecraft to heaven. Hallelujah. Raised the dead, Elijah raised the dead. There was nothing that mattered to him more than God. Think of Daniel. Then of Lion, he opened his window. Oh Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's only you I will serve. I can't serve any king. Only you. 
He went to the den of lion. He came out unscratched. Passion for God. We put any believer in command of the supernatural. Passion, genuine passion for God. God hates this. I hate it. God loves this. I love it. Whatever God loves, I love. Whatever I hate, I hate with perfect hatred. God, I love you. No wonder the word says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, that's the enter the heart of any man. What God has prepared for them that love him. They are just signs and wonders on the earth. Every genuine lover of God is ordained a sign and wonder to his world. Amen. Every. You know what they said about Paul? The gods have come down to us in the likeness of men. Just like Jesus, he died and came back by himself. Nobody prayed for him to come back. We need to the position in this midst of the year so we can get command of the things we have been crying for. To get things from God is great. To gain command over things is greater. You have it at will. You gain command, you have it at will. You gain command, you have it at will. You gain command, you have it at will. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Don't miss this awesome time for any reason. Ensure to keep a genuine appointment with God in this midst of the year. And watch sweatless advancement and expansion and favor that be coming your way. It works. Praise God. Let me also say this. We need to get a great start. Now, every revival is a spiritually demanding season. Spiritually demanding season. Now, let me tell you this. <laughs> when you sow your seed, one sack of grains will plant several acres of land. But when it's time for harvest, you have sacks upon sacks to carry. You are contending with the boss of the air who wants to eat off your harvest. So it's a laborious time. Revival time is harvest time. Harvest time is a laborious time. My God. You can put a bag in your hand, get into your car, and you plant five acres with the seed in your bag. But that's not what you carry, the only harvest. Mm. Amen. You don't carry, the boss of the air will eat it all for you. That means you have farm for them. It's laborious time. It's work time. Now, man, I can't work for you. No, you have to work for yourself. I'll be paid for my work, you be paid for your work. They don't pay salaries in groups. They pay one by one. He that reapeth, receiveth wages, as he gathers fruits unto life eternal. Second Chronicles chapter 15 and verse 3 to 7. There was devastation, there was no peace during the winter, great vexation upon all people. Then a word came, a prophetic word came, and then he said, strengthen your hands for this work. Verse 7. And he took courage and dived into it. And then verse 12 to 15, enter into a covenant, the whole nation, and God gave them rest round about. Now look at that, verse 7 precisely. Verse 7 talks about work. He said, be ye strong therefore let not your hands be weak for your work so revival time is work time shall be rewarded Haggai chapter 2 and verse 3 who among you saw the glory of this house in his first estate how do you see it now it's like nothing <laughs> amen but they said in verse 4 
Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, said the Lord. And be strong, O Joshua, the son of Joseph, the high priest. And be strong, all ye people of the land, said the Lord. And walk. For I'm with you, said the Lord. You walk. Revival time is walk. For yet it was, I will shake the heavens and the earth. Revival time is walk time. It's walk time. So get ready. It's walk time. Get ready. It's walk time. You walk it today, it will show tomorrow. You look at it and despise it today, it will also show tomorrow. Then shall we know, if we follow on, to know the Lord. It's no respect of persons. Then shall you return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between those who serve God and those who are not serving Him. Then shall you return. It's not now. Then you know. May this mist of the year never leave you behind. Yeah. May you invest your time, your energy, and your soul in taking your own position in it in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Many, many global citizens will rise from this church. Jesus said, I've come to set fire on the earth. Luke 12, 49 and 50. And what will I be already came to? I've come to set fire on the earth. And what will I if it be already came to? But I have a baptism. Baptism of labor. And I might straighten until it be accomplished. <laughs> it takes that to impart on your world. It takes that. Laboring fervently on the prayer altar. Which applies to everybody. Everybody, everyone of all ages, everybody of all ages. My God. The man Abraham could say, Let's go up to the mountain and worship at 114. At 114. Anna was praying hard at 84. Anybody who can eat can pray. Epaphras was laboring, traveling prayers. And my God, we reward everyone going to his labor. So the prayer altar is an open ended altar for all classes of believers, old and young, sir. So no one is left out. Give us this day our daily bread. Anyone can pray that, sir. Must pray, thy kingdom come. <laughs> it's all in one package. Thy kingdom come first. Then give us this our daily bread. Anyone who can pray, deliver me from evil, can pray thy kingdom come. Yes, sir. So it's, it's all in one package. So nobody is a doubt without excuse, oh man, whosoever you be. Nobody has an excuse to let this ever time pass without your investment of labor. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Investment of labor. You see, our office is quite so busy, but you're quite so eat. You see it. Your office is very busy, but you saw it. You see, as a chairman and the executive chairman, you see, executive, but you see executively it. <laughs> you stay asleep. My God. And when there is any issue, like a risk, a danger, my God. But you are very busy, you are executive. Where is your God? People don't have a heart for God. They are explaining that away. Without a heart for God, you can't make a mark on the earth. You need a heart for God to make your fullness of mark on the earth. You need a heart for God. Stop explaining away your, your complacency. You know, by my present position um, in the organization, is a global one. You know, we have interest in Japan. Okay, you can have interest anywhere. When you need God, you will shout. All those that call themselves it is is a lie. When they are in the face of accident, oh God! You say, where is God? You say there's no God. You say, oh, there is God. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to get to the point of risk to recognize God as God. Amen. 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 Everybody has equal opportunity for a change of story in a revival. You are either engaging on the prayer altar or engaging in going out after souls. 
through various diverse technologies available to us today, you can reach anybody at any time. You can play down strategies for better approach, for better results at any time. You can create appointment at very odd times. I'd like to share something with you, but it's better outside of business time. So I'll be calling you at 11. Very important. I just felt an unusual passion to share this with you. He's waiting. You have prayed. Well, something. Jesus touched my life and gave me rest. I used to be restless and, and clouded with anxieties, apprehensions, uncertainties. But one day I met Jesus. Hallelujah. And you are telling the truth from the depth of your heart. I won't bluff you. Okay, I think about it. Then you call him tomorrow. Thank you for the audience last night. Amen. It's just, just a pleasure, but let, I want to let you know I'm praying for you. He will call you on Sunday and say, I'm going to church with you. It's all strategy. Strategy. Godly strategy. No gimmicks. Lord, I'm in this village. I don't speak their language. Now, I must have your name planted here. He gave me insight on what to do, sir. If I'm speaking to them about Jesus, they will be arguing. So close your eyes. I want to pray for you. So I led them to Christ through prayers. One by one. Church was built in 40 days. You know, you, you, where your heart is there, sir. Eh? You, you will find a way forward. You will find a way forward. Praise God. Amen. You can pray anybody to the kingdom. Just identify him. And begin to take him to God in prayer. My God. That's how to do it. I can tell you this with all my heart. I've been in it in 76. Consciously. I've been doing it before. Consciously. As a business. A kingdom business. The only business that God has on the earth. And it's working. Today by grace. By grace. I say by grace. Not by effort. Not by strength. By grace. There is no place on the planet earth. Where this short man's name does not ring a bell. There is no place. Just click the name. It will come out. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, by the grace of God, if you write my name on an envelope without address, it will get here. Yeah. Without any address, don't put Kenan, don't put uh, Ota, don't put Lagos. Just say David, Nigeria. It will get here. Hallelujah. Nobody can give himself a name. Mm. Nobody. He said to Abraham, I will make thy name great nobody can there is no child who named himself that the eight day came and then the pastor got there the child said my name the pastor were wrong the parents were wrong my name is joshua daniel zechariah The Gentiles said, see their glory. Hmm. That shall be called by a new name. With the mouth of the Lord shall name. God will name a name on you this time. Amen. Demons will hear your name and scream. Witches will see you and bow. Somebody's story is changing. Yeah. His work. Now, remember Jesus was anointed without measure. John 3.34 Remember Jesus is the living word of God. Not that he has revelation. It's the revelation we are looking at. Amen. Amen. John chapter 1 and verse 1 to 5. Now, yet, he said, My father walketh either too, and I walk. Work is a principal component of every revival. Work, 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 work. If it's not happening, you are not in a revival. It's work. Now, I must walk the work of that you know that sent me where it is day. The night coming when no man can walk. John 9 4. John 5 17. It's work. Now watch. 
they he walked and walked mark chapter 3 that there was no time to eat bread <laughs> 21 and 22 his friends came they thought he was off his mind to take him away for treatment walk walk john chapter 4 verse 32 34 i have a food to eat that you don't know about my mate is to do the will of the me and to finish his work to finish his work work no, revival only thrives on the wheels of work 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 if you are not ready to work you are, can't be in a revival you can't partake of the best of the revival so it's work time oh my god and it's open to everybody working on the prayer altar working on the streets of your territory to see people saved in your offices in the marketplaces to see the need for jesus in the life of people all around you that's work my prayer is that no one will be left behind in this midst of the year you will not be left behind in this wave of glory let me hear your loudest amen. amen let me hear your loudest amen, amen. let me hear your loudest amen. amen we'll be giving you um operation by all means bulletin to help you get properly positioned in this midst of the year and then we have a special blessing for you operation by all means covenant so winning target now we are told and the tree bears 12 manner of fruits and brings forth its fruits every month this one commits every member of this church to minimum two established souls and then for that reason we gave you a paper here that has eight targets that you will pray into the kingdom Amen. you will love into the kingdom Amen. you passionately pursue for the kingdom and according to matthew chapter 8 the parable of the sower at least 25 percent will bow and surrender to jesus Hallelujah. and watch what happens in your life Amen. this thing is easy it's easy it's easy it's easy so they'll be giving you this at the end of this let, let nobody scorn this you know papa again my god operation my own is i'm not going to do anything that's no problem people thought some of us were mad they thought we were mad now you see how mad we are now that's how to be mad you see how mad we are today some of those who thought we are mad come to Copenhagen guest house today to wait on the Lord <laughs> that's how mad we are their children are worse are now in Covenant University some have graduated we were mad very mad join this madness tree with me is the missing behind your destiny in Christ join yeah. John. Amen. And then, and for signs and for wonders, was not available last Sunday. They will make that available to you in the course of this service before we close. Jesus is Lord. Amen. 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 Somebody blessed? Amen. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. something is breaking forth in someone's life Amen. well told the glory of god and i'm here to share with you what will help motivate your life my team has brought 65,119 souls into the kingdom this year Amen. that's how greedy of god we are praise god that's how greedy of god we are 
I don't know what my wife's team is like, but, but uh, this is our own. Giving me yesterday. Praise God. I was checking records and I saw from Mission House number of rural churches that my wife is building. I saw it on their record. We are just on the move. Amen. We don't steal, oh. Yes. <laughs> God does not bless thieves. He causes them. That's right. The cause of the Lord is in the house of the thief. We are not stealing. We are just being blessed. Being blessed pursuing God with everything inside of us. This will help you. <laughs> My second batch of rural church planting or building is 100 number. 100 number. We don't steal. We don't beg. We don't borrow. We don't take government money. And they are hearing me. Mm -hmm. yes. Amen. One woman came yesterday and said, he insulted me or cursed me, and they were slapping him. They said, what is I can't see them. <laughs> so they were slapping him. You could see she was, she was dying. Jesus. How dare you? No. There are people here, sir. Anyone touching you, he's, he's finishing himself. Yes, sir. <laughs> and neither the woman. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. They ask him, Moe is the one between I can't see them. But they just slap him, slap him, slap him, slap him, slap him. Hey, please, Papa, help me. <laughs> Somebody's story is changing. Amen. Somebody's soul is changing. Yeah. You will not miss your place. Yeah. You will not miss your place. Yeah. When it's time, just tell me I stop. All I'm doing here is to help you connect with the reality of this moment. That's all I'm doing. If you like, you can join it. Is it for church to grow? No. It's for us to be rescued. Somebody was on his way to money making ritualist. I met with our team. This man said, I'm ready to go to hell, but I must get money. I'm ready to sell my soul, but I must get money. And then Jesus touched him on the spot. He said, Can I have some of the flyers? He went out on the spot and brought seven souls. And brought them to the soul when I said, Look, please help me follow up this seven fold. Same day. Just on the way to hell. And Jesus caught up with them. We are on a rescue mission, sir. Yeah, no, it's not fun fair. It's not uh, let's grow church. It's let's, let's rescue lives. You get to attend, you hear all kinds of humbling testimony. I've never had rest in my life. As soon as I enter this gate, peace just came. My God. So be careful how you respond to prophetic instructions. Be careful, be careful, be very careful. There's a mighty move of God in the land. Uh, in the future, this is the least hit nation on the earth on coronavirus. The move of God. It wipes away shame and reproach. My God. It opens the graves of people. With this massive population, many living in squalor. Don't even have water to wash hands. Yet, coronavirus can't touch them. That's how being on God's side can exempt you from all the horrors of the world. 
your life, your family shall be totally exempted from every evil on this earth by being on God's side. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Finally, many of us have experienced God in some unique ways in the past, but we don't seem to see that anymore. Let me tell you why. After every rainfall, the cloud comes clear. Until another cloud is formed, the next rainfall is not in view. I mean, you understand what I'm talking about? If the cloud be full of rain, they empty themselves on the earth. After they have emptied themselves, the cloud becomes clear. <laughs> and until another cloud is formed, the next rainfall is not in place. You stopped. That's why the amazing wonder stopped. The source of blessing stopped where your obedience stopped. We have been praying this kind of prayer in this church as a church for 40 years. We are not tired. We have been pursuing after souls. I told them, I said, make 500,000 tracts of every tract title that we have. And that you make that every week. Every week. That's more important than building a house for us as a church. That's why our rainy season has never stopped. <laughs> While the rain is falling, we are filling the cloud again. And the rain is falling, we are filling the cloud again. So as the rain falls, we feel the cloud. Another rain falls, we feel the cloud. Another rain falls. That's why many believers when this season has stopped. The cloud has become empty. Elijah prayed and told this servant, check the sky. He said there is nothing. Ah, there must be something. That's after that prophetic world. I can hear the sound of abundance of rain. That's okay. But you must form the cloud before the rain will fall. You must fill up the cloud before you can have the rain. You must fill up the cloud before you can have the rain. So it's another season to fill up your cloud for your next showers of blessings. And may you receive grace to keep filling the cloud as a new lifestyle from this time on. Amen. So you can pray to form your cloud. You can go after souls to form the cloud. You can run after new converts to form the cloud. 